Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome to another throbbing, ooh, 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 scrummy episode of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the Dusset Tones of Matthew. Joined as always by Ross and special guest, but he's not special or a guest because he's a regular Someone, someone would say otherwise. Family, I would bastard. say Tom's very special. I'm well special, me. Ooh. Oh, is it Tom episode? It is a Tom oh, episode. We, weekend ruined. Cheers, Tom. Lads. Already switched off. Hang on, the voices in Tom's head are talking to him again. I there looked at the second. comments the last time you were on the podcast Likewise. because it was in place of me, and I looked for comments going, "We don't want Ross back." Thankfully, there was only one of those. There was also <laughs> only one comment where it was like, "Oh, Tom, what a shame." The rest of the comments, all seventy of them, maybe eighty in a push. We're all like, oh, fantastic Tom's here. So listen to that. the the the, the, the greater and uh, not the one. But that doesn't how it work Tell when him. you have a, a complex like like this. I know because I'm the are, same. Because because your fight or flight <laughs> is like that that person has said something bad. Therefore, they are they're right. They know the secret. I must hone in on that. Can you undo one more button, please? Because oh oh oh, 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 scrummy, scrum, scrum. Oh, oh, oh. Well, actually, before we get started, lads, <laughs> let's bring this on, yeah. I bought us all scratch cards. Oh! oh fancy so a little flutter. Just in case you're an audio listener, Tom has got three quarters of, of his chest hair out and it's turning me on. And this yeah. might turn you on even further because I've got us all scratch cards. I've got a coin. Oh, Dan, thing. I didn't get you one. I do apologize. Oh, Dan's And now we all look at the oh. Of course, the Macam has the shrapnel. <laughs> Oh, it's a week's wages. Of course, then. of course. <laughs> Bear in mind that if you use a coin that Dan gives you, oh. you have to split it with him. You got a coin? I've got a coin. You got a coin. We're all sorted, Dan. Thank you. Right. Good luck, everybody. Let's start. So, it's uh, so how do you win? Jolly Sevens, in a row, find three symbols in the same order as displayed. Oh. So, down there, you got the prize table. So, you want to find three symbols. So, scratch all of them. But, yeah. okay. This is. This is riveting. This is fantastic a, podcasting. A strong. Well, doing this. Strong How are you, Ross, start. this week? I am scrum. absolutely yeah. fantastic. It's a big day because I'm going to go and make my first Facebook Marketplace purchase. Oh! oh no. Getting an accent chair. Oh! oh. Your chair's got an accent. <laughs> was it, was got I am a <laughs> Well, we'll have to have someone. I'm a chair. Do, <laughs> we'll have to have someone doing the bad accents because Jack's not here. So that'd be nice. <laughs> no, I've never done yeah. it before. It's a. It's, it's from Next. It's RRP, you know, 325, I think it was, and she's selling it for 100 quid. So I was like, I'm all over that like a rash. Here we go. How are you, Tom? I'm doing great. Thank you very much indeed. Didn't win anything on that. I don't think I have one either. Oh. So you need three coins, a coin, coin, star. No, that's nothing. Seb, nah. Never mind. E, better look next time, eh? I think the last time was that you and I, Ross, were on the same podcast. Because normally I substitute in for Jack. Oh, you're a sub, are you? So normally I sub in for oh. you, sorry. Oh. I am a sub. No, no, Big Jack, sub Jack's energy. Jack's a sub. Jack's right. a sub. Of course. Uh, me and Tom are subs this week. I seem to remember that we did one. <laughs> we are, you know well, why? Huh? I mean, I mean, I've won something on the oh. scratch card, but I'm winning in life. Uh, I, I, do, I do know why. But I was just saying, last time I think we did one together was was by, was by during the lockdown era. The Zoom time. By a Zoom, where we, we, we come out with crime... Detective crime solving double acts in wrestling world. How on earth have you remembered that? I just remember us having a nice time singing about Jake and the snake. <laughs> oh, Find man. that episode, you cowards. Uh, we are both indeed subs this week. Tell us, tell people why. Well, I've been taking a little break from Twitter, but Tom was like, Have you seen it then? And I was like, What? Have He's like, have, have you seen it then? And then last night, well, 13 hours before we're sat here right now, so a couple of nights ago, as you're watching this, Rhea Ripley replied to a video <laughs> Tom put on the Twitter machine uh -oh. from a news video me and him did the other day where I am oh, shouting, What, Tom? Body sl uh, scoop slam me, mummy. Rhea Ripley seen that. And she replied, ooh, uh, Mrs. Basically. Like, wow. Yeah. It's Freddy Krueger doing the gif. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I recognize that. That's a positive thing. Is it? Oh, thank God for that. But I can <laughs> yeah. live out me sub energy there, Matthew. There's been a big raving topic in my mind over the past few weeks. Just because of that one comment. <laughs> I love how we've gone from a few weeks ago, Ross, like, oh, you should watch what you say about these uh, Big tall goth women, Matthew, on the podcast. You're not hiding yourself. Fast forward a few weeks. Oh, Matthew, scoop <laughs> slam me, man. The goth lady replied to me on Twitter. <laughs> I've had an awakening. Is that what they call it? Oh yes. Oh yes. For the Churchill dog. Oh yes. <laughs> Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley does uh, subscribe to Cultaholic. So hello again to Rhea Ripley. The scoop slam is uh, there's a list of scoop slammies. We stop saying words and begin with sub. All right, Tom. We get it. <laughs> Fine, fine. How are you, Matthew? Uh, I've that scratch card. Rubbish. But no. Did anybody win, by the way? No. no. Oh. It's a thought that counts. I'm reminded of my friend Wayne Haswell at uh, college, who party time excellent successfully won on the scratch cards. He won twenty quid, and we we're all amazement, going, "Wow!" He's like the who, Tommy, 
the song. Like he, he, he's rubbish at life, but he, he's really good at scratch cards. What did <laughs> I he say he's deaf, dumb, and blind? <laughs> what day? Uh, almost. What did he proceed to do with his his gotten gains of the scratch card? Did he invest it? Did he buy some stuff he needed? No, he bought twenty more scratch cards oh. and won nothing on them. Oh man! Isn't there a movie about a scratch card syndicate? Or a lottery syndicate where they just keep reinvesting the money into more lottery tickets and more jingle lottery all tickets. the way. That's it. Jingle all the way. <laughs> so it's jingle all the I've way. I've read the Wikipedia you. description of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, Jackson Poland, just for people who want to know. Oh. If you're in Poland, go and hunt him oh, down. Good, um, <laughs> yeah, hunt him down. Um, is it Polish where it's uh, obviously got such a lovely international ooh, 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 audience, but uh, is it Czech? That means hi and bye. Does it? I believe so. Hopefully, a Polish person can correct us. <laughs> Hopefully, Jack can tell us. Richard Yannick Tubman is Polish. Oh. But he's not here because he's in Japan. Tubman in Japan. Not yet, not yet. That's not the yet. big news this week that Richard is in Japan. It's we'll finally another. Oh, yeah, bloody old news. So, uh, <laughs> I think that's segue. So, the only real solid news this week, has been a very slow week, to be honest with you, is uh, New Japan. The president is currently, quote, angry over Carl Anderson, double booking himself. Uh, he has cancelled his... Appearance, basically. They're trying to figure out if they can have them both at the same time. Uh, due to the way that's not gonna happen, is it? It's absolutely not happening. Well, Tom uh, Campbell knows everything, but well, I'll did. go through this. Uh, what we've got, sorry, so far, then you can uh, ah, know because sure. obviously people get their news from the, the news section of the podcast and not you know the daily news thing that you guys do. Uh, news of Anderson's cancellation has seemingly not gone down well with New Japan. Uh, they did a quote saying, We are doing all we can to ensure every signed match in Osaka November 5th happens as promised. We expect all wrestlers, especially champions, to honor their advertised commitments. Hashtag NJ Autumn. Not New Japan Autumn. Autumn, Autumn Attack, okay. yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, Battle Autumn. Sorry. Then they, uh, the two of them put out that video. Did you see it? Well, well, the one was just like, oh, we're going to go where the money is. Thank you. This, that, no, that one. That, that, that's obviously a good one, though. But that was uh, the one this week that was them sat down going, well, I didn't receive my booking for, uh, properly. The booking is supposed to go through to, to Gallows. He's my official booking agent. And he gave out his legit email. He said, yeah, that's how you send it to. I didn't receive it, so I'm not going. Obviously, tongue in cheek, because they're the good brothers. They're always a bit, woo, bit of a laugh, but ooh, dangerous. Um, <laughs> clearly, it didn't really work with Japan, who put out a statement. Uh, thank you for supporting New Japan. Only one Japan time on October 20th. Never openweight champion Carl Anderson posted a video on social media indicating he would not be making his advertised commitment. New Japan had announced his match with uh, Hikaleo. 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 The Never Openweight Championship on October 4th. Despite comments from Doc Gallows to the contrary in Anderson's video, the booking was made through the appropriate channels and with Anderson's express pr- approval. However, after the match's announcement, both Gallows and Anderson would appear on WWE and then blah, 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 blah. New Japan has, the past several days, attempted to negotiate with Anderson, but has not been met with a response. Should Anderson decide to renege on his scheduled championship match, he will be required to vacate the title and return it over to us. Uh, New Japan holds the champions the highest standards of professionalism <laughs> <laughs> and sincerely apologizes to fans for any disappointment or inconvenience caused by this matter. I thought it was great that that's their response to a very serious issue called a New Japan. And New Japan were like, no, that's not funny. I like the fact that there's Carl Anderson at this at the center of all this. There'll be people in Japan like on the floor crying because Carl Anderson won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> we regret to inform you, Carl Anderson. Oh, boom! <laughs> it's like when Vader beat Inoki. Oh, it was kept taking the, the chairs off him in the ring. Bunch of crap. <laughs> The great Muda made his return to New Japan because obviously he's on his retirement. Just, just, like, we hate you, Muda. <laughs> <laughs> we want a Carl Anderson instead. Um, so, so to add to that, uh, I had a chat with uh, Rich for Voices of Wrestling. Uh, there's, oh, there's, a news, there's a news podcast which you can listen to right now. Uh, we go into the into the weeds on this. And basically, this is all a bit of a worky work, 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 work. Isn't? Into the weeps? Into the weeds. Oh. Uh, so uh, New Japan, according to Voices of Wrestling, and according to Five Full Select as well, who had similar reports from them, uh, New Japan knew about Crown Jewel weeks ago, <clears throat> and uh, this is this is a uh, something that they're kind of playing up. But the plan is uh, apparently that there is again from sources close to Voices of Wrestling, close to Five Full Select, uh, they are working something out whereby Carl Anderson will return to New Japan. Now we speculate on this podcast. Uh, with Voices of Wrestling, we speculate that that is looking like it's going to be Wrestle Kingdom because that doesn't collapse, that doesn't clash with any dates that WWE has to make good. There's a pretty much what it looks as if like Hikaleo will get the Never Openweight Championship. 
probably Carl Anderson will challenge for it in January because they're very much like, if the champion's not going to be there, then we want your belt yeah. back. And we've seen that before, haven't we? Like, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's like travel issues, don't care if you're sick, what your head fell off, that's a shame. <laughs> Give us the belt back. They're very <laughs> forthright about that. I'm looking forward to Anderson showing up like Hogan at Bash of the Beach 2000 and like, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers, pal. And done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, okay, well, that makes some, some uh, that's fair enough then. I thought, uh, I'd take it at face value that New Japan, because it's well, a we big, all had, because it's so, because out it, of the, so out of the ordinary. Right, because it's such a big deal over there. Like, if you're on the poster, then you have to, like, give them it. That's If it's on the poster, you show up. Mm. Like, come rain or shine. Noah's Ark just happened, and you can't, no, you're on the show. So naturally, okay. after this bit of this, this slice of news, Wrestle Kingdom Mania will be happening next year. We can exclusively reveal New Japan and WWE working relationship. Yes. Joint, joint pay-per-view, the forbidden... Fire escape has been broken down. <laughs> Quote that, print that. that. David Meltzer, that's for you. That's right. Because he, he loves to take stuff that's a joke and report it in his newsletter, doesn't he? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Why would you say such a thing, Ross? Uh, rumors of the Game Changer Wrestling WWE partnership. Are they working together or did a bunch of people get overexcited? A bunch of tweets that GC Dub President Brett Lauderdale put out, including the one picture of him taking a photo of Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> uh, Lauderdale was the guest that Stephanie. Uh, was the guest of Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania 38? I didn't know that. And alongside the positive Woo! WWE tweet, many assumed that there was some semblance of a deal between the two companies. And uh, I love it when people just get caught up in a muddle because it can happen very easy on Twitter. All it takes is like three or four big name Twitter people to say something. Suddenly, like, oh, it's legit. Like, my favorite one is Pete Rosenberg because a few people jokingly, and I knew them on Twitter, saying, oh, it's, he, he does good for a show that he's paid lots of money to be on. Ooh. That it became fact for a bunch of people. I thought that was so then fact. He, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he had a tweet out, you know, I'm not paying to be on the show. Right? They're paying me. That's usually how it, employment works, right? Or oh, was it paying to be the champion? Because he was 24 7 champion, wasn't he? Okay. <laughs> we'll start that rumor now, shall we? Yeah, I'll yeah. give you a slow. No, no, 50. Pete didn't pay to be on here, but he did pay to win the belt. <laughs> like Mike Rapado paying to win the NWA title in 2000. There was a few messages. That, that, <laughs> that is, that was that so is really niche. niche. Sorry, Paul. What was you I like say, that. I did see a few messages where, where this GCW thing was going back and forth. And people were going, well, of course, of course the deal was struck. They all, the roster lost to Omos on Monday night. And I was, no, that's me. That's me. <laughs> okay, that was it. That. That's it. That's me. But it is nice that once in a while that Melter does get caught up in this because my I wasn't gonna mention it again. My favorite one was when Kenny went to a live event in Glasgow. Uh, Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Ropes, a great friend of the channel. Uh, and he was like, uh, oh, there's a new pay-per-view coming. Oh, there's a new pay-per-view coming. It's called WWE Intermission. I love this. Oh, Meltzer reported it was <laughs> fact. <laughs> Literally, the intermission was happening. Oh. And they put up intermission on the Tron <laughs> to show it was the intermission. You know, Anchorman, the film. Yes. You know, a bit where it's like, look, please watch what you type out. Ron Burgundy will read anything I've typed <laughs> out. If you're a wrestler in the business, Dave Meltzer will print anything you say. Isn't that right, X Pac? Look, I heard Mabel might be showing up around at some event night soon. That's all I got told. Uh, also, reason Billy Gunn missed the WWE DX reunion revealed. It's a, uh, Road Dogg has since claimed that Gunn was originally booked for the reunion, with the ass man even telling him the day before Raw that he was in. Plans only fell through. Uh, what apparently happened was Tony Khan agreed to let Gunn work the show, but WWE would have to mention that Gunn currently works for AEW. Ooh. Similar <laughs> to WWE's mention of Impact Wrestling for Mickey James or Rumble appearance you know, this year. Fair is fair. WWE initially stalled on Khan's demand before they decided not to agree with it at the last minute. <laughs> Meltzer also speculated that WWE did not want a risk allowed to daddy ass chant breaking out in the arena. <laughs> um, it wasn't... Uh, Mentioned or noticed though, as uh, Corey Graves mentioned, that Daddy Ass was doing something with office equipment these days, which I'll go admit, like, threw me off because I'm like, office equipment. Staple me, Daddy. <laughs> I, I love, I'm like, what office Hole is punch you? me, Daddy. Hewlett Packard in inkjet me, Daddy. <laughs> Photocopy me, baby. Is what Scan I'm me, baby. <laughs> I, Spit me round in a chair, Daddy. Oh, I've gone too far now. Cisco telephone system. All right, enough, 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 enough. Um, Dana Brooke, not happy getting insults <laughs> from the commentary. No, Corey Graves, sit down. It's not you for a change. Uh, yeah, Seth Rollins decided to provide commentary in his match between, uh, the match, I should say, between Austin Theory and Mustafa Ali. During the bout, the current three United States champion talked about Theory possibly cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase on a title other than the Undisputed 
WWE Ugu title, remarking that he had a better chance of cashing in on Dana Brooke. Apparently, he's the butt of everyone's jokes and commentary. He, he mentioned someone else, didn't he? <laughs> he did, yeah. He, he said he's got a better chance of cashing in, in against Roman Reigns or Dana Brooke. So, like, that they're as likely as each other. Yeah, yeah. And if, but it's, it's, if anything, weirdly, that, depending on how you interpret it, that might double down the insult because just Dana Brooke on her own is one, but then go from the top of the tree to the bottom of the tree. Like, if anything, that's a, the bottom, the yeah. worst wrestler in the <laughs> company. The best champion to the worst champion. The, yeah. Talk is cheap. <laughs> Dana Brooke said, I work my ass off every single day, will not tolerate this poo anymore. She did not say poo. Uh, I can promise you I am the hardest working woman in couple of around. Never have I taken off work. Always worked through injuries. Proved multiple times I can fit in any position given. And couple of others, do it without a smile. Without oh, with, a smile? Oh, you know how you do shorthand? <laughs> I so do I it without that. a smile! <laughs> w with hash A. The A was so close, I thought she had, a, I'd do it well. So that would be funnier. That would be way better. Yeah. What a weird post. I do it, but I do it begrudgingly. <laughs> I'll have you know. Jay Hunt had <laughs> tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Dana Brooke looking unhappy. Jenna Erntman's there. Dana Brooke replies, thank you, Jay. You realise. Thank you. <laughs> That's a reference to Thunder Rosa there. Yeah. <laughs> no, much better than Jack's tweet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Tosso Champa out injured, which we hadn't heard anything from for several weeks until Gargano came out and goes, oh, there you lie and say Gargano's out just, you know, getting his third tan of the week. <laughs> uh, he's actually out injured. And that's how we've all found out about that. Now, there was a picture he put on social media this week. I think it was Champer himself where he's getting with the surgeon and his daughter, I think, and they're all going, like, five? Is that five hip surgeries, maybe? I, don't, I think it was a hip I surgery. I was waving. Was it? <laughs> the five-time, five-time <laughs> hip just, replacement. It was just Champer. a wave to the camera. He's got his loyalty card, all the crosses on it. <laughs> but bear in mind as well, Champer's thing for a while was to do that little wave by yeah, 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 yeah. thing, so it could be that. Uh, Wait, the, 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 the separation of the fingers, Tom, oh, is quite crucial. I think we're missing the, the, the woods of the trees here. You said his daughter was doing the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> no. no wonder he's always in and out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Willow can do anything. Is it Willow? Widow. Willow. Wid Widow. Wid no, Willow's been Widow. Why would he call his daughter Widow? Named <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't know who he's no. named after. Um, <laughs> yeah, Willow, because Willow's Bell. Yes. The move. Yeah. And the bell. I hope he's okay. Yes. 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 After all that, yes, we do hope you're like right. A hip labrum like shredded cheese, I think he said <laughs> in this thing. Oh. Oh. Just knackered. Bless him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh shredded ooh. cheese. <laughs> Put you all over me muffins and it's <laughs> digging in my grave for 10 <laughs> seconds. So it's just Ow. perfect. <laughs> Eddie Kingston reveals what the AEW HR told him at the Sammy Guevara incident. He was speaking to the <laughs> Eat Sleep podcast repeat. They told him, take a ticket, It'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you are number 56 <laughs> in the queue. <laughs> oh, there's always a line. <laughs> Quote, I had an answer. <laughs> I had an HR meeting a couple of days ago telling me I can't beat up people in the ring when I want to. <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to be good. We're all trying to be professional. Their words, not mine. It's real simple, Kingston explained. You've got a lot of people back there with egos. Some people believe other people don't deserve to be an A-dub. Other people do believe they deserve to be an A-dub. So when you've got a bunch of guys, men and women, who don't know how to use their words, chuckles. Things are going to happen in the back. Why, why have they put chuckles? I love when you have to like, <laughs> Eddie Kingston smiling said this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, Eddie Kingston having a good one then. Yeah, fair enough. I guess you can't do that, can you? Yeah, he, he is right. That, that's him told. <laughs> he seems to reveal that, yeah, you can't just beat up people in AEW. Uh, well, I'm not sure that one guy who there's uh, no real update as of yet what the hell's happening with Punk or Elite. I know it's like been seven weeks or so. No, oh, they, no there has been a small little update. Finally, we were informed that following Hangman Adam Page's comments in a May episode of AW Dynamite alluding to backstage concerns about Punk, this is from Melton, there was distrust on Punk's end going into his AW World Championship match with Page at the Blood Nothing, and that Punk was concerned that the predetermined match would break down into a real physical fight. Um, Again, it's another thing that doesn't paint him in the best light. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that oh. does potentially, even though Dave Meltzer, I think, outright called it a lie today, is that what 
got everything going, lighting the fuse, bringing the boom, as the Dynamite theme says, is when the door was kicked open, allegedly, which Sean Rossap doesn't know if it and happened that, or not. That's the thing that people are disagreeing on. Yeah. Right now. That's a very important matter. But there was a report from somebody who... It's told Nick Hausman. Is it Nick Hausman? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, Nick Hausman. Nick's in it again. Nick, you're at it again, mate. You think you're a journalist, Anybody in here then, a journalist? Nick? You think you're a journalist, then, Nick? Um, he's reported that when the door was kicked open, it hit poor little Larry in the face, and he had to have a tooth removed. Two. Oh. Yeah, two teeth. two teeth removed. Two teeth were loosened and he had to have an operation to have them out. So if in which, if, you're right, yeah, sorry, in which case, yeah, if, if Punk leapt up and smacked someone because of that, fair enough, I'd have yeah. done the same. Boom. Hey, it was going quietly, me dog! Yeah, <laughs> Turned to John Wick. It's like, absolutely not. How dare you take me dog's tooth out? Anyone would do this. That's it. for me and the vet to be dealing. I would do it for a random dog. <laughs> Yeah. Never mind me own. It's like, it's like a bad enemy. Aha, uh -huh, without your dog, who could possibly bite us? <laughs> <laughs> <He's still. laughs> Don't worry, Larry. <laughs> I got this. Larry. I can see two teeth on the floor, but I've got you. Um, cleaner, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> what if Ace put Larry's teeth in before he did it? <laughs> For Larry! <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean I did it? That's Larry's teeth yeah. imprints, not mine. How could they be mine? The perfect crime. <laughs> There's been escorted out by j, j Security, whatever. HDL gives the dog the <laughs> his teeth back and just goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Meltzer says that's a big lie. Um, Wh so which bit? The, the, the kicking of the door open and hit Larry in the head. Um, so This is the, the glove fitting episode of this entire <laughs> saga, really, isn't it? What, what, hap what happened? If the dog sits, you must have quit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if Sean Oliver's watching the podcast, but if he is, get a shoot interview with Larry Salt at ASAP. We need to find out the, the real truth. He can truth. make that work. Exactly, yeah. Larry the dog reveals who's a good boy. <laughs> so, Larry, how do you beat off in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference. You know what? Uh... Hmm. If you don't watch the show every week, that might sound a little weird. But just in case you don't watch every week, Kevin Nash in his youth... <laughs> Being a very long boy, would sit on the toilet to have a tummy tuck <laughs> and have to take off the back of the toilet because that's where his back would go. <laughs> and that would be the big dog. <laughs> do the same. <laughs> that was the news. That is all the news. Technically should, speaking. Should sit thoughts are with Kevin Nash and his family at the minute, by the oh, way. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to transition from that to that. Yeah, we we'll I mean, have to mention it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah you, know, you are. You are right, um, Mel. Yeah, him doing that podcast this week was Oof. incredibly moving. Bloody hell. Yeah. Sorry, it changed the... No, no, it's... No, it, 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 mad respect for, for Kevin for doing one and, and talking about it in the way that he did. Right. Uh, we send our best wishes to the, the entire Nash family. Yeah. Awful news. At such a young age to go through that. Uh, best wishes all round, I do believe. From all of us here at Cultaholic send our best wishes. Absolutely. Anyway, that was the wrestling news this week. It certainly was. Ah, Tobin in Japan. He's dick in Japan. Richard oh. cycled from Sendai to Tokyo using his bike and his legs. <laughs> Google Maps wasn't even able to provide a route to cycle from Sendai to Tokyo. The mad bastard. <laughs> However, the what? However, the drive between the two places would take you four hours and 34 minutes and see you go around about 370 kilometers, which is 229 miles. We had an update from Richard himself, by the way, and he said his cycle was actually more like 450 kilometers, which is even more than 229 miles. <laughs> his ass must be really sore. Oh, it must like an MJF by now, all caked up. <laughs> uh, so here's a lovely photo of his bike, um, trying to escape Richard from riding him to death, I imagine. Only uses and, uh, ripped there, Richard does, just for the pleasure. Did that say rib, rib or rib, ribble? He said rib, ribble. But it oh, says rib. ribble. Oh, I get it. It All could right. say ribbed. Let's just pretend it says ribbed for the humor of the podcast. <laughs> I get it. Just for his pleasure. Rib. Speaking of ribs, uh, this must be one. Uh, the other photo he sent us. <laughs> Our favorite Sonic the Hedgehog level, Tom. Uh, robot zone. <laughs> Beware of robot pickpockets in this area. So just for... Oh, that's absolutely what it looks like. <laughs> yes. Audio <laughs> listeners, if you're using a Segway in the robot zone, beware of little robots approaching you from your rear. Or from the rear, and um, yeah, pickpocketing you. <laughs> There's a diagram on there. Your yen, you get. It's yeah. worth having a look at Richard's Instagram at Dick Tubbs, maybe. Yes, potentially. I don't know. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's because the Japanese isn't that fluent yet, because he's only just got there, the, the, the Japanese robot is trying to get his, his dollary dues out of him, and he's just there. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, hi. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> Are they, I like our little robots that just sort of chase you on your segue. 
Keep you motivated, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a personal trainer. We've got people okay. who chase you over here, but uh, we'll call them chavs. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, the Hall of Fame. In condescending order from last week, Lewis Capaldi's cover of Britney Spears' Every Time, 6%. I can't believe that, man. Oh, it's beautiful. Man. I can't believe that. And he did a really nice, like, rendition of it. Not yeah. rendition, build up to it, I should say. But, that's uh, that's Lewis Capaldi, have... fan of Cultaholic Wrestling, by the way, since 2K18, right? Right. He follows some of us on Twitter, right? Some of us. I'm one of the lucky ones. Right. <laughs> They're all jealous. I think that's why people... Can you DM, DM him for me and ask about Desert Island Grass? Because <laughs> I have been tweeting him. I tried for straight to hell for many years, Tom. Oh, and the, the most I got was, I don't know enough about wrestling to have a conversation. And I was like, well, I've made a career out of it. Tell him I know Logan Paul. Like <laughs> uh, Matthew's guide dog for the blind, Kevin. 25%, you bunch of dog eating gets. Uh, <laughs> I was shocked. I thought it was going to win easy. You bunch of young bucks, you kicking dolls yeah, in yeah, Kevin's yeah, face. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I never liked the elite. AW fans, fans clearly. Dogs. Yeah, that's like all of you. <laughs> right. uh, and then it's actually me again. Uh, Matthew, in brackets, for potentially a drunk Jack Saving. Interview. I've missed out the word saving. Save. Saving a drunk interview. Oh, from saving. Jack. Yeah, there we go. That's a <laughs> crucial word there. <laughs> saving a potentially drunk Jack interview. Seeing the light of day, 69%. Nice. Oh, nice. We're legally obliged to do that. Yes. Uh, wow, I technically I'm in the Hall of Fame. I didn't vote for it, so uh, I'll take it. Uh, that was Jack's little drunken escapade. So he says, drunk Jack is exactly the same like tone and style. It's, whereas I'm like, yes, hello, <laughs> I'm like, that's me. Jack is like, I don't have a drink, me. Uh, so uh, I'm sure it'll be funny if we ever get to see that video. Uh, we are working on it. Oh, Bowers, we can have it, can't we? Yeah, cool. We'll try to see what yes, gets sorted out. Yes, you can, Tom. Thank you, Bowers. No problem. Oh, wait. Oh, Puppet Bowers is here. <laughs> yeah, right. I... Can I have a pay rise, Bowers? <laughs> yes, Tom. Oh, thank you very you much. You can have two hot dogs. Oh, get in. <laughs> oh, you've been a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> like a good ace deal. So, thank you that very much. That was a joke. I'm sure that Mr. Bowers pays everyone wonderfully. Yes, one and a half Bloody hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Mom, we're in Tyne and Weir. Love you, Bowers. Some Greg's. It's true, actually. So, as the winner of last week... I like how I call him Mr. Bowers there, like <laughs> Mr. McMahon. Yes, he, is, he is a bit Mr. McMahon. <laughs> no, 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 he's not. No, he's not. No, he is. I've seen the no, no, that's I've not seen, a man to compare him to right now. I've seen the pictures. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> North the, Wrestling, the picture, now on the pictures of him. The picture of him from the Halloween show where he was dressed as Mr. McMahon. Right. What do you think I meant? Vincent Man Senior, the, the dead one. Yes. Uh, what do you think I meant? You're the winner of last week, uh, Tom, I guess, because Jack... <laughs> his pictures of his affairs. <laughs> North Wrestling on IWTV, uh, the grand de debut. Listener Tom put his mouth out again. Something you're not used to doing. Put your mouth in. <laughs> Tom, what have you got for us for this week's Hall of Fame? Okay, this week's Hall of Fame nominee is the only politician in the UK that I trust. The only politician in the UK that I think during this difficult time we can lean on. The only politician in the UK that I genuinely think is giving us the truth and the passion and the energy that we need to take the UK back to a stronger place. And that is Larry, the Downing Street cat. Uh, I believe that we have video evidence of Larry in action. Uh, now this, I think, is a week oh, or so I old. This. Yeah, yeah. But I, I haven't been on the podcast to discuss it. So this is outside number 10 Downing Street where a fox has turned up. And there is Larry, the Downing Street cat. I think he's seven or eight years old. And uh, he's seen this fox and he's going, yeah, you keep moving. Oh, fox you keep walking. Know, you right? nasty little fox. Yeah, that's right. Like you a coat hanger. This is, this, is my, this is my home. This is Downing Street. And then the fox turns around to go, okay, I've left. I'm going to come back. And he's like, no, you're not coming back. You ain't coming back. And then he tries one more time to make an appearance. He says, you better get gone. You get yourself gone. You foxy little bastard. Get yourself away. And there's Larry. Yeah, okay, job done. Perimeter secure. And that is Larry, the Downing Street cat, showing more grace, more passion, more action, more energy, more fury uh, the, than any politician uh, within the UK scene right now by getting a fox gone from Downing Street. Hang on. I've, I've, I've left me. Yeah, look, he's trying one more time. Like, oh, I just want I'll give him scary you. eyes. Yeah, you, you just I keep David moving. Bowie the fox. Yeah. One red <laughs> yeah. eye, one blue eye. Gonna, yeah, look at that. You better get gone. Oh, that gone. didn't work. You well, I'm get often. gone. I didn't even want to come in anyway. So if <laughs> you don't... Wants to be in the street anyway. <laughs> so if you live in the... If you don't, if you don't know the score, so uh, 10 Downing Street, where the Prime Minister resides, 
uh, has a in, has, has a house cat as a, as a cat to to deal with mice and to sort of deal with like in like bugs and strays and stuff. It's that's it's a it's a legitimate role that a cat has held at Ten Downing Street for decades. Like you can go onto Wikipedia. I'm going to do a tier list of all the oh, Downing Street cats ranked from worst to best. Uh, and and there's and they have different ones. I think Larry is one of the more long standing Downing Street cats at this point. So like he's 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 a, he's an older boy. So the fact that he stood up to that fox and was like, "You get yourself." Foxes are dangerous as well. Yeah, That's Larry don't care. Like, Larry's defending it number ten better than most people are defending the country. Right. My understanding after years of watching Animals of Father Wood as a kid was that there is an animal hierarchy, and that foxes are way above the scary animal ometer than cats. Mm. So that fox's mates better not have Twitter or, <laughs> or the Sky News app because that fox could come back and go like, "You get in a fight with a cat?" No, no. who told you that? <laughs> oh, I was filmed. Mm. Like Gordon Brown after the insult, that that woman's like, "Oh, <laughs> head in his hand like that." Like, <laughs> Just a big getting roasted cat. in the group chat by the other foxes. Going, <laughs> <laughs> Look at, this, of a cat. look at this video from Fox News. <laughs> oh, oh. I see what you did there. So yeah, I think that Larry deserves a place in the Coltholic Hall of Fame for being during a very weird time politically in the UK, a real bright shining light. <laughs> That's my nomination for the oh, Hall right, of Fame. It's a very brave pick to pick anything political. I know, but I think I picked the only political thing that I think we can all agree with. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be be Go on, you can do it. It'd be Larry the dog replacement there. <laughs> if they're animals of 10 Downing Street and then like the people that are supposed to be occupying it. Oh, I see what you did there. That's mm. not true. We're going to future proof this by saying, of course, all best wishes to the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, Liz Truss. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even Liz anymore. It's, it's even funnier. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this, this will never be out of date then. We'll just replace that. <laughs> if Rishi does go, who replaces Rishi? Larry the Cat. Larry the Cat. We're running out of options here. Because yeah. I've seen a lot of bad things about Rishi. Well, he I don't like him because he was responsible for, as he was the Chancellor, the, hey, you know what? Electric and gas companies, you can charge whatever you bleed well like. Mm. And then you go and say, well, happened, what happened when this same thing happened in France? France went, non. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but we went we. All right, okay, cool. But that's one reason I don't like you. I don't like him because he has a podium that is smaller than Liz Truss's because he's a very small now, man. I know, I, I, now, I was a big fan of Shorty G in the World Wrestling Federation, and I believe you should embrace who you are. And be proud. So what you say, you have a larger podium. So yeah. You just have to, to lean over. Accentuate his smallness. For, con for comedy value. Just like that. Hello. <laughs> Try to read my thing on there. This gets me. There's many reasons to dislike to get him being a small man. <laughs> Five seven crew representing. No, no, no. He's he's had a million other reasons, but I've, I've seen a lot of people go, ha, ha, small person. I think I think whenever he's in the pictures, like he's, I think he's, I think he's average height. Maybe 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 average height for a guy. Tiny bit above average height for a lady, maybe, and I think that's why it's so, so jarring. Because I think he's got from nipple up. I think he's got the features of a very tall man. Because through lockdown, yeah. I thought he was a tall. I thought he was good <laughs> six two, six three. The large ears, the nice strong jawline. I might fancy Rishi Sunak. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but then two nice qualities. Then that yeah. picture came out when he's there with the school kids, and he's, he's smaller than some of the, the reception lads and lasses. Yeah, reception. <laughs> 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 it's Bill and Ben up here. <laughs> <laughs> Larry the cat. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that, that cat from Basil the Green Master. He's he zooming on that video. He's riding Larry the cat. Yeah, you get away. It was like get away from my house. Who was that? Uh, oh God, the little Britney sketch of the Dennis thingy. Dennis Waterman. Dennis Waterman. Hello. He is like Dennis Waterman. Like the theme tune. Sing the theme tune. I was thinking like Harry Enfield when they're doing the baby bits in the giant chair. Oh, oh hello. Lulu Lolly. Lulu, Lulu Lolly. <laughs> Go oh, back and on. All right, okay. So, yeah, lots of reasons to like the guy. Oh, anyway, the cat. The cat's nice. Larry the Downing Street cat. Vote for who you want to vote for. It's you. You do you. That's you do right. you. But Larry the Downing Street yeah. cat is the only political vote that I think we can all agree on for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, vote for the Tory cat. <laughs> no, he's, he's non party. Cause, cause we oh, went, yeah. Yeah, because when, <laughs> when Labour oh, was in there. Oh, he's offensive. That's even worse. <laughs> well, I think he's part ah, of the. Pick a side cat. He's part of the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> oh, he's done it. Whatever, he's whatever, not, he's whatever not, on this week is what I was on last week. He's, he's not conspervative. <laughs> that just sounded wrong. That did, just, didn't it? Oh, oh, party for the pervs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That well, be, well, hey, there is a Tory. I'm excited for that being a headline. <laughs> Cons, <laughs> con, con, per, conspervative. If something comes out that's quite controversial. There's your picture of the cat and they've sent in his eyes. Do you know which one it is? <laughs> Me and my brothers always thought it'd be funny 
if if Nicholas Lindhurst became the manager of the England team, right? Uh-huh. Just so when they're <laughs> when they're playing and they're losing, you can have a headline that just says Rodney you plonker <laughs> <laughs> or Rodney come home. <laughs> No, no, that's no, the only R- reason we wouldn't Rooney Nicholas Lindhurst. Come home. Rooney. <laughs> Bloody Rooney. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Larry the Downing Street cat. What's your pick, Matthew? I don't even know what planet. What are we doing? <laughs> whole thing. You don't went too deep. You have to bring yourself up. All right, yeah. My pick is a video I've sent. To Dan, oh, Dan had to wake up then. Uh, <laughs> his head he nodded off like, oh, during God, the Nicholas <laughs> Lindhurst. The podcast after an hour and a half of cat nonsense. So there's many, I like the, the new media you're in nowadays, where we're getting uh, old media explained and introduced by new media. So this is a YouTube, so not even a YouTube sensation, I beg your pardon, early 2000s video uh, thing. Uh, a woman called Jenny from Mahalo.com. She's supposed to be a bar instructor person to show you how to make some cocktails. According to an interview I found out with Jenny, uh, she was basically a bartender who looked nice and stuff. It's like, all right, can you do like hundreds of cocktails with all these things? These videos could pump out over a two-day period. And like, yeah, sure. She gets there and she discovers that not all the equipment you need to be a bartender to make proper drinks. And so she's telling them you need this, these, this, things. We don't have that. And we're shooting in like three seconds. She's like, oh, okay. Well, if you guys aren't trying, I'm not going to try. So people have discovered over the years these videos that have perhaps it's long gone, but they're all on YouTube now of these videos. Some of them seem to be okay, and some of them are like, oh, okay. She's like, if you guys don't care, this is how I'm gonna make this drink. And this is this one man's reaction. This is uh get louder now on TikTok. Hello, nice head man. Um <laughs> reacting to this. This is well worth watching. Okay. Janae from hey, Janae. Com, and All I'm right. going to teach you how to make an old fashioned. Love an old, an old fashioned. Let's go. You need bourbon. Yes. Maraschino cherries. Not correct. Orange just, slices. Orange. No. Bitters. All right, back on. And then you We're can either have track. regular sugar cubes or you can use simple syrup, whichever okay. you'd like, depending on good, how good. sweet or if you want it a little bit more liquidy, liquidy or your preferences. Not a word, but so all we're right. going to start out with our glass and we're going to take our you. orange slice with. Yes. Slice her away. And a cherry or two. I it's, like to use two cherries no. just to give it a little bit more cherry. Flavor. Fingers right in that we're jar. We're going to go ahead and huh? also grab a sugar cube. Same hand. So you'll see you have your orange, your cherries, and your sugar cube on the glass. Yeah, and your you're going to mash all of that finger up. Finger oil. Just make sure you get all the sugar. Janae, and Janae and is that a wooden spoon? Everything good in that. the rough end of a wooden spoon, that, isn't it? Pretty cold wood. Okay. Okay. Resourceful. Resourceful. If you don't have a muddler, as you can see that I don't. You do Basically not. Basically, anything works. A wooden spoon end or whatever it is that you'd want to use to mash it up. Sure. Once everything's <laughs> mashed up, go ahead and put like two, maybe three dashes of your bitters. Oh, Janae, nothing came out of that bottle. Oh, no. Ice cup. It came out, so. What's an ice cup? Also, big glass for an old fashioned. Mm-hmm. Just Fill it all the way throwing that ice. out there. And then you're yeah. going to put three ounces of three bourbon ounces. in. Sure. It's a- so this is a pretty strong drink. <laughs> and not that many people order it anymore, Whoa! actually. It's kind Janae. of like the old of something that was kind of from prior generations. But it actually is really good. And it's similar Janae to like a Manhattan. Problem. But, you know, the I orange in it makes it even better, yeah, I think. Janae, so of course you want to make class? sure all those flavors get mixed up. So you're going to go ahead and <laughs> kind of... <laughs> That's how you mix cocktails. Are you okay? <laughs> Just, just make messes okay, all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. So got food. Yeah, yeah. Get it all mixed up, and you have the orange brine Twice and the cherry all mixed help. up with the bourbon and the sugar, so that all the flavors <laughs> can blend together. It's it blended with half a bottle of whiskey. whiskey. Thanks for watching. Janae. If you have a new drink request, go ahead Are and send us a request at mahala.com. Are you or okay? Or if you want to learn yeah. some yeah. other drinks, Claire requests an ambulance for after a drink. And there's a few others that people react to, but like that, that like I react and going, Janae. Yeah. Janae. But yeah, she's doing all these stuff. So she put those up. She, no, nothing came out of that bottle because there's nothing left after hundreds of different cocktails have been doing. And say, like, three ounces, whatever. <laughs> no one stopped and saying, yeah, that, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like an old fashioned. I don't know anything about beer. That was like uh, alcohol. It looks, doesn't look like an old fashioned to me, Renee. It's like, yeah, carry on, love. It looks great. <laughs> there's loads of them. And they're all fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. God love her. So. Absolutely amazing. So what is your Hall of Fame pick? Is it that particular video or is it Janae? I want to, you know what? I'll be positive. Just put Janae. Janae cocktail maker. Janae the cocktail lady. <laughs> the the cocktail fame. lady. Janae the cocktail lady for Hall of Fame. 
Because yeah. James Bond films say, so, ooh, a lady making a cocktail. She invited right. the Christmas party to make us all drinks. No, we should no. Oh, <laughs> Drink singular. It's, it's, it's already bad, bad enough oh, without Janae being there. Pint, <laughs> pint of Jim Beam, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Janae was in that caravan. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Carnage. Hi, Janae. Yeah, we're at the Christmas party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't make a mess. We're we'll playing board games. Uh, so, yeah, that's my pick for Hall of Fame. What have you got, Ross? Amazing. Well, one of the lesser known things about me, I guess, for the people who watch our channel is that I'm a massive neat freak. I'm a clean mm. boy. So clean that I, after we came back from lockdown last year, back into the office, I initiated the cleaning schedule that is still alive today. Once mm. every two weeks, you have a partner, you clean up your office, one does the carpets, one does the kitchen. Fine, lovely, a lovely working environment upstairs. Not down here, Dan. Is it, Dan? It's dirty down here, isn't it, Dan? Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan. <laughs> Hashtag Dirty Dan. All right. right then. So imagine a few years ago when I saw Exhibit A, Please Dan, on the, on the screen there, the office of one <laughs> David <laughs> Meltzer. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit B, Please Dan, for another angle of the office wow. of David Meltzer. <laughs> oh, God. Did you? Yeah. Oh, bollocks. Well, I've got the, the other one. I've the, the, uh, so there's Melter's office for the people watching on YouTube. Carnage. Basically, you can't see the floor for paper. He's just got oh. paper everywhere. It's an, it's my nightmare, basically. I want to grab hold of Melter and slap him silly and then clean yeah. his room when he can give me a fee for It's like he that. plays Minecraft. It's it's awful. But and I, don't, I don't even know what the story is behind this. It's just the fact that now, if we go to the Exhibit B, please, Dan, it's now clean. Whoa! Dave Meltzer's office for some unknown reason that Matthew might know. Do you know? No. no. There's a few of the things that are happening with him. That's <laughs> one of them. They've got the video link so they can uh, have Meltzer on the camera, which is great. Because he's now pre he's got a sofa in his office, which obviously couldn't have been in there before because yep. there was paper in the way. <laughs> yeah, he's, got a, he's got a sofa in there, which he now sits on and does the live feeds for yep. um, uh, Wrestling Observer. So this week, they've called well, last week it would have been, they cleaned his office. It needs a bit of a hoover from that picture there, yep. admittedly so, but you know. It, one step at a time. Are you happier now? Oh my so God. Know. It just, you know, you don't know, get a massive bogey and you're, you're yeah. picking away you're, and then you find it and then the release. That oh. feeling of a massive bogey leaving your nose is what I felt when I saw Dave Meltzer's roughly clean office. I like that. It's like, history. It is. It is history. But I like that he's sort of kept the little bit of that spirit alive because in that, in that right hand corner, you can still see like a big pile of papers. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of those like, all right, I've, I've done enough for today. I just said, uh, what Melter's wife? What's Melter's wife doing? Y you would think. I like, know. I was, I'd be getting slapped round. Because another, another thing that has uh, <laughs> been pointed out is he's added more stuff for the Observer Archive that people have been requesting for years. So something's happened with him. Oh, he's just found novels of stories from like 1987 on the floor. <laughs> yeah, wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, Montrose good job at work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. oh, sorry about that. But, uh, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, that, I think maybe someone got to him and went, you know what? Like, we, we saw you when you were on CNN, I think it was, when you had your uh, magnificent appearance on that Nintendo DSi camera you got to work. And that was amazing. <laughs> uh, can I help? And, you know, it's just the fact that everything in there appeared to have been in there since the 80s. His computer. Do you remember his computer noise from lockdown? I Beep, boop, 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 boop. I when he turned it off. I got oh, flashbacks yeah. to that, that, that noise that a computer makes. And, I'm, and people like, like thinking the same as me and goes, wait, modern PCs don't make that noise. <laughs> it was straight from the 90s. Like, latest possible decade I reckon it could have come from. But it might explain, is, sorry, might explain the syntax uh, and stuff in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. It's when we did Straight to Hell. I remember one of the things that I put in was the formatting of the Observer <laughs> newsletter, which is essentially just like stream of conscious slash chicken scratch of Dave just I just pouring words out. And I wonder whether because he's got an old boop, 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 <laughs> his notepad doesn't have a spell check. And I imagine just, I noticed just, that, yes. Uh, and then yeah. that happened and that happened, but then that happened and that and happened. Then and then Ken Sasaki kept up the entire roster and career <laughs> up with his loud sex. He didn't, did <laughs> Dave, you are writing the uh, obituary. <laughs> I know. Okay, just checking. <laughs> so I, whoever initiated this, thank you very much. But 30 years, it looks like, of mess has finally been cleaned up, and I feel great for Dave. Wow. So that's you know the thing about, like, what people told, you know, there's certain tribes in the world that have been untouched by modern civilization. <laughs> they told not to go there, not just because they'll kill you with spears, but because, like, they haven't been to do so. There's all these germs. Oh. The common cold would just kill them. What has Dave unleashed on that poor cleaner or Roomba? Uh, what 30-year-old like thing that we thought was gone? 
<laughs> Somebody leaving his office is Ricky. The original Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> yeah, <you're> just found <laughs> under. The, it really was were a, two warriors. <laughs> oh. Oh. Dave, Dave lost three cleaners this week with due to consumption. Yeah. <laughs> my my rumba has typhoid. <laughs> So yeah, wow, uh, that's a good pick though. Yeah, history. Oh, I left man. it off the news because I, I was going to leave it as the big thing, but it like, is a big bit of news. Because nothing be bigger than yeah. that. Yeah, so well done, Dave, and everyone well involved. Well done, Dave. Well, keep it, keep it up though, Dave. Don't let it slack now. You know, you've, you've got to. <laughs> well, clean. We've all heard that. It's a what once a week job, and you know, every little bit now and again just saves a big cleanup later down the line. Just keep chipping away, Dave. You can do it, little yeah. and often. <laughs> I just thought, like, you know, some people when they get like a good person in their lives to reinvigorate them, they get better and improve themselves. Dave's already a brick poo house, so is this Dave going to be fat now? <laughs> I used to lift the paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> oh. Oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, so those three picks for the Hall of Fame, we'll try and remember, because it was a long time ago since we started talking about them. <laughs> uh, the cat. Larry, oh, the Larry Downing the Street cat, cats. Um, in brackets at the, all. Um, Janae, the cocktail lady. Janae, the cocktail lady. And are you putting in Dave Meltzer's clean office? Yes. There you go. Yes, wow. I am. Those are three good picks Strong this week. Strong picks this week. Can't wait till Ross's wins. <laughs> can't wait to kick <laughs> out. Can't <laughs> wait to kick out of that later. I no, never no, win no, anymore. I can see possibly yours. Yours is the best pick, but people don't like Meltzer. So like, I don't care if it's clean rooms. Like, <laughs> the significance of that's not going to be like... Oh, it's going to be Janae then. How are you spelling no, Janae, by the way? Hey, hey. Janae! Like that. Uh... J A capital N E E. J A capital N E E. That's what it says here. Jani. <laughs> yeah. Oh, J- yeah. We're Jane. Horribly butchering a name, which is part of the course myself. So uh, thank you very much for listening to those. You can vote for those by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ah. Ah. This week in oh, wrestling. Oh, baby. <laughs> Got to be a big one. <laughs> he means the wrestling news. Oh, not his penis. Oh, that's not big. <laughs> Massive, mate. <laughs> Anything that's just below average. But, but it is clever. Smackdown. <laughs> Bray, you, you will. Bray, could you, you keep won't. our private lives quietly? <laughs> that was good. That was good. Say your truth. Say to me. It's the Let me in. Oh. Sheamus faces Solo Sokoa in the opening match. The Usos and the Brawling Brutes get into a big brawl on the outside, while Sami Zayn interferes to help Solo get the win. Afterwards, the Bloodline viciously attack Sheamus' arm with the chair, until Sami finally forces Jay to stop. Oh, my oh. arm. He said. He did. Multiple times. I don't know this because I'm a hack on the internet who likes to look for things that aren't there, you but do, this felt do. like to me, for Solo Sokoa, one of those tester matches from back in the day, like the APA versus the Dudleys, or the mm. APA versus those lads with the tables from ECW, I've forgotten the name of. Probably going to be. Yes. One passed the, the test, one failed the test. Say, yeah, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> Solo passed this test. Just though. something to like put him through his paces a little bit. Yeah. Gets a big, you know, brawling, brute-like Seamus. <laughs> that's a good shout, actually. Yeah. Von Wagner is the real street champ. There was a sign in the crowd that read that. <laughs> and that's line for me, it slapped, as the kids would say. It did, yes. And this was, uh, I'm glad you pointed out that one, not the other one that said Come Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you for whoever brought that. Come. Was they misspell c- come, though. I know they put actual, like, c- come here. C-O-M-E? Yeah. C-U-M? What the hell is that? <laughs> really, of- I hate it when Dewey changes their names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's part of MMM now. It's come A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Please. Oh, it's got Come A Tuesday. <laughs> Back to the match, though. All I right, like the Because Seamus was selling his arm all the way through the match. And there's a spot where he goes off the top rope and falls on his arm on purpose. And I was like, whoa, that's a big risk to be taking, isn't it, Seamus, at your old age? No, this Re- is... Relatively speaking. <laughs> Again, the, the Seamus of 2019, that'd be, it must have uh, turned into a big pile of ash, like mm. the mummy, if that happened. <laughs> but no, this is the new modern day fixed Seamus. Yeah. yeah. He has the technology to rebuild him. as a banger every week. You say that, though. A, a different Probably. kind of banger, really, I More like the car version. Um, oh, uh, what oh. a good bit of wordplay. Lovely wordplay. But watching Celtic Warrior Workouts, which has made a return, it is uh. still clear that Seamus, the, the, the years of wrestling, have taken their toll. So what we see on the shows every week is mind-boggling. Because I watched... Right. right, brace yourselves, lads. There's a video which he did with Alexa Bliss. Well, uh, not Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Liv Morgan. 
And it was Liv yeah. Morgan. How dare you mix the two when they're doing very similar <laughs> gimmicks? Liv Morgan's butt stuff is the workout. It also shows that he's also very good at understanding YouTube algorithms. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's Liv Morgan's ass workout, how she gets that dump truck in line. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I can hang with the kids, man. <laughs> and you were a regular watcher of this show? Or was there something about this one episode, the, Ross? No, to show you how or dedicated things, I am I to the Celtic Warrior workouts, I watched the Bobby Lashley episode at the same time as well. So it's arse for you then, is it? I take <laughs> <Yeah>. it. It's <laughs> a sort of shocker of the oh, week. Oh, yeah, Bobby Lashley's pose from the yeah. Leo Rush days. It must be an arse thing. Yeah. Those dump oh, trucks. Are you ready for the dump truck workout? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Back to SmackDown, though. Back to SmackDown. I like the little tease for Bray Wyatt at the top of the show to stop the people wondering. No, like, he is going to be here. Stop wondering. Don't worry. I like that. Nice bit of reassurance from yeah. Papa H. I see. Yeah. Don't worry. He's on this week's episode. Yes. And he wasn't on Raw. <laughs> uh, Sammy and Jimmy having a secret handshake I did approve of. Mm -hmm. And also, Jay is so mad at Sammy, he's willing to disobey Roman. <sighs> it's going to unfold oh. tonight, isn't it, Matthew? Oh. And the tribal chief gets back in there with Jay after he's disobeyed. And my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a backstage promo uh, Bray Wyatt claims he didn't want to come back but thanks to fans for cons uh, convincing him to do so he says he's going to do horrible things but was that a fart? That a no fart? it was the table <laughs> we, we felt that one didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, you'd know if it was a fart he says he's going to second. <laughs> he's going to do horrible <laughs> things like fart during a podcast <laughs> <laughs> but won't feel sorry for them you know, just wait the smell kicks in <laughs> I am just a servant now I go where the circle takes me. He says, you would be forgiven for hearing this promo, but only realizing what he said the first time because the volume was too loud, uh, oh, to say the least. For his you, theme, yeah. Uh, slightly, you know, just it's like listening to an, an action film at the cinema now where they've got all the stuff going on at once and you're like, what? Yeah. What does Spider-Man just say? It's a good job it's not a catchy tune. Because <laughs> I was yeah. thinking the same thing. But I thought it was a very clever promo. Because when he's on about, you know, confessing he has problems, he always had problems. Few of them act like uh, they aren't getting taken to places he shouldn't be in. Talks about getting chances and whatnot. It feels like he's speaking to and about the fans. But then he brings in the, I know who you are. I know what you want. I know what you're trying to do and it won't work. Um, along this journey, I'll do horrible things. I will never feel sorry for them. I'm just a servant now. Then he starts speaking about this masked thing, which I assume is going to con control him. So he's not yes. talking about the fans. He felt like he was talking about somebody else. Yeah. And then he brought the fans in. It was like, the fans oh. there at the start, and then he flip reversed it to the mask thing. It was a very clever promo. Nice bit of wordplay. Mm. <laughs> we do approve of that. Yeah. Amongst the farting. Mm. So it's, yeah, I, I'm eager to see where it's going. Uh, I am, even though it's only been like, what, two weeks or a week and a half, I'm like, yeah, hurry up, Ray. No, I'm, I'm all right with this. I'm all right. Hey, do something. Pace it, pace it. Why rush it? I'm all right for the long game. It's a fine because that's what they want. I know. Like, I, I, you get a little bit, which means you want to, you want it a little bit more each time. Oh, I like it to tease that his music's going to play all match like New Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing we need now. Code Orange and Spotify, whoever's available, whoever deals with that sort of stuff, get it released. You minge teasing bastards. Yeah, <laughs> but also if you're gonna and if you're gonna have him talk over the song, <laughs> you minge teasing bastards. <laughs> Can you do an instrumental version? Yeah, because I don't know whether I, because it drives me <laughs> wild when you've got someone talking and you've got the lyrics of the song underneath it. Because I might, I don't know whether it's whether it's me thing, but my head struggles to lock onto one or the other. You're a radio guy, so you've got to put the volume back up when the lyrics come back on. Yeah, then that, talk when it goes, that's what it is. It goes against my instincts. You, you, you talk up to the vocal, not over the vocal. <laughs> Nothing Ooh. compares. No, that's right. BBC Radio One. <laughs> no, the news. stop it. Wait till the song finishes. I love that with radio presenters, well, they fit in a bit of, yeah. and it always fits perfectly. How do you do it, you people? It's got a little tiny. Okay, I'm going to let you behind the curtain on the play on the on the playout system. It'll say the song, the length of the song, and it'll give you the time for the intro. Ah, so it's coded in to it. But uh, but it, the more you, to be fair, the more often you do it, you kind of get a rhythm for certain songs that you kind of know without looking how long you've got. Is the expression for that uh, hitting the mark? Hitting the mark or talking up to the vocals. Yes. As about to say, like, <laughs> like got Von Wagner with that ladder. <laughs> anyway, well, oh. The bloodline said, right, solos win the locker room, but Jay wants to take out Logan Paul as well. I just said about this, sorry, I skipped yeah. ahead. Sam reminds him that Roman told him not to fall for Logan's mind games, and Jay goes, no, but I want to, because I want to impress Roman over you. <laughs> it's still doing, yeah, they're line. doing it. It's not Mr. Step so far, and it's another yeah. week gone by, and it stars a Mr. Step. Yep. Well done. 
Liv Morgan faces Sonya Deville, but won't stop attacking her on the outside, which leads to a double count out. Afterwards, Liv superplexes Sonya onto a big pile of chairs. It's like the genesis of uh, Joker Liv, like Joker Sting. It's like that sort of thing we're going for now. She likes all the pain and whatnot. She's a bit of a kinky so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I thought it was a nice bit of character mm. development after losing the title. Because I think we need to do something quite drastic with Liv to get everyone back on side. So uh, the way they booked her while she was champion was really bad, I thought. Yeah. Right now, Liv has lost nearly all the heat she had prior to SummerSlam. Uh, it doesn't help that she had the thing with Ronda. Yeah. It also doesn't help that she changed her character loads and she's doing this. And I don't know if this is a long-term thing or they're doing it because she's on bloody Chucky. Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's like, wait, if you could derail this person who was very over for a brief period of time because of a fictional Well, we'll see doll, tonight because that Chucky episode... Because of a stupid <laughs> puppet. <laughs> it's awful. We'll see tonight because that Chucky episode sorry. aired on Wednesday. I'm sorry. So uh, we'll see tonight on SmackDown whether or not it's going to maintain. I hope I hope they keep going because I think after losing the title, her losing the plot's quite a natural thing to happen. Yeah. I think she she plays the role quite well, the way she was laughing and whatnot. What you say is true. The crowd's reaction to it, they're not fully on board yet, but they do like the hardcore spots, but yeah. that's not necessarily I, good for the character. That's the thing that I can't, I can't see lasting too much longer. One of those a week can't be good for you. Right. Jumping off something really high onto something really hard. Yeah. Jeff Hardy did it for ages. He's fine. <laughs> Uh, mm. We both suck there at the same time, Tom. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Braun Strowman calls out Omos, but MVP arrives instead. That's the same guy. Strowman wants Omos at Crown Jewel, and MVP accepts on his behalf. Omos arrives and easily shoves Strowman out the ring. Braun laughs, ha, 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 as MVP convinces Omos to head backstage. Um, mm. I'll be all right with these bits if it wasn't for the commentators on SmackDown and on Raw going... The Richter scale, Godzilla King Kong. <laughs> like, will you calm down? This is going to be rubbish. <laughs> it's going to be all, yeah, but that's where you've got to overhype it, haven't you? The big. I quite liked, I know what, there was something for me. I quite like the fact that Omos did make Braun look like a child because Braun's not a small guy and they look like together. What was, is that, is that, um, Mitch the Web thing, isn't it? The giant of Braun Strowman <laughs> takes on the Colossus of Omos, making them both seem normal sized. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if both men are giants, then neither of them are that big, are they? So, but, Jim, but I think the visual of him pushing Braun out of the ring was quite That's cool. the thing that's turned the tide with me with this feud. Because I was, I was saying last week, why is Triple H doing this? Of course, Crown Jewel is the reason that's where this match should be, if anywhere in the wrestling world. But the little pause that Omos did before he pushed Braun Strowman like he was a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And now I'm I'm fully on board with like this. He's powering up. Like, yeah. Like, ah! he's, he's, a, he's a size of a megazord, so that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. it's an interesting tale about Braun. It's, it, the entire thing's Braun trying to prove he's not normal. That's the entire thing. That's the interesting story here. How is he going to do it? Throw him? I think he's going to throw him as a power Push him bomb. back with an equally silly pose? They're going to the world's <laughs> biggest dumpster <laughs> truck to pull him in. Liv Morgan's up. No. <laughs> I hope they become a. <laughs> I hope they become a tag team like uh, like Lucha Soros and Jungle Boy, and Braun Strowman comes out on Omos's shoulders. Oh God! Every single every single every single time he's just draping like vomiting those trousers. Wallace in the trousers. Yeah. <laughs> he's been knocked out by the Tron on the way out. <laughs> Next week, will you put it a bit higher? <laughs> of course we will. Next week comes around. No. <laughs> Arms flailing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks the camera. Told you I could carry him. <laughs> Can we be right back with the wrestling. <laughs> uh. <laughs> QR code flashes up on the screen, takes it to a little thing of a penguin. <laughs> Feathers McGraw debuts in six months. <laughs> Takes off his head. Oh! <laughs> Tim! <laughs> Tim! 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 It's my favourite bit in all the Solos and Gromits. Good Lord, it's you! <laughs> Phenomenal. Tim McIntyre is interviewed about his attack on Carrie Cross last week. On Feathers McGraw. He reveals that he was called the W headquarters as a result of the assault and has been told to stay away from Cross. That sounds Until like the, the AEW meet. HR, does it not? <laughs> oh. You can't beat up anyone anywhere. Yeah. Eddie Kingston slash Drew McIntyre. Well Until they meet in a steel cage match at Crown Jewel. Well, they're known for the good ways of dealing with punishment over there. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that feud continuing. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of major jokes. It's going to be interesting to see how the clairvoyant Scarlet gets involved in this cage match. 
Ah. Yeah, because yeah. she's clairvoyant and can predict things or something. Yeah. But not car I crashes. A, a plane not leaving on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Where was she when the bloody car crashed? She was in the car. Didn't get hurt. Oh, great. In the ring with pepper spray. She doesn't get affected, even though she used the whole can. She's an alien, I'm telling That's you. Oh, she's still got <laughs> seas like, ah. <laughs> Are we okay driving? Yeah, sure, <laughs> Drive me to hospital. Uh, to go to Kain, EO Sky successfully retained the tag titles against Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi Blacker. Yeah, uh, Raquel and I, EO were doing some impressive things early on. There was a spot which Raquel did on EO, like she does that thing where she picks her up by the knee and just rallies around her shoulders, which I find absolutely terrifying. Mm. We've done it a few times how now. How do you control with that? Like, I don't even you know. Go. I don't, it's okay. got muscular back. That's how. Yeah. I'll get. But it looks, like, it looks like riding Alton Towers Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I it was good for Bailey to get involved. I thought classic heel behavior. Yep. The match served its purpose. Well said. Yep. Uh, backstage, Ronda Rousey. Oh wait, right. Okay. We watch this every week, right? You Are may... you going to mention Brian Alvarez? <laughs> He's a Dalek now, apparently. <laughs> so, oh, when you talk to who? <laughs> I love your impression of it. <laughs> it's not the best. I can't lie. <laughs> I am Brian Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> Three figure four weekly. <laughs> Whatever, no one cares. Um, ruminate, ruminate. That's saying all the, the shine of this, because I would say we watch this every week, we make notes, we actually pay attention to what's happening on the show, believe it or not. Backstage, Ronda Rousey says she doesn't care what the fans think because they all hate her anyway, but she's still the best and she's going to have an open challenge next week as opposed to this week when she advertised it because these fans stink. Um, what? Last week, she was the number one baby face. With his wrestler on SmackDown, and they've done a great job of making her that the past few weeks. Have I really missed something? Ronda, here? yeah, oh, no. she's been on the slow heel turn for a while she's now. She's been wrong and for ages. Yeah. She's, right. had the, she's had the disdain for the fans for a long old while, and this extra edge, this badass edge. I think the heel turn's been in the works for a while now. That uh, badass thing where she's beating everybody every week, and the fans cheering her. Nah, but they've the been slowly turning. She's been slowly giving them sass in, in return and whatnot. I think this has been a slow turn. Uh, it was a slow this week. I mentioned, like... I mentioned Alvarez the Dalek because he was on Twitter. He was like, "This is, they just turned her heel automatically. Oh, if the one, I was like, this has been happening for a while, Brian. Uh, look, well, that be said, I am with the Daleks. Really? Abs absolutely. Let us know in the comments below. Are you with the Daleks? Are you with the, the human Ross? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are like, human Ross. So. <laughs> I like how it's quite musical. The human yes. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> the one good bit of the Dalek, Dalek promo I do like, because obviously not going for the great mic work, when they talk like this, is um, when they talk, they're talking, chatting poo. I almost swore then, but then the Cybermen. And he goes, the Cybermen are better at the Daleks at one thing. What is that? Dying! <laughs> I was hoping they were going to go climbing stairs. <laughs> it has been established on this season of Doctor Who. Well, we have jetpacks. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Ronda Rousey has been turning heel for a while. You're an idiot. <laughs> um, we see a video package where Santos Escobar talks about his stable's expansion, which means bringing in Zelina Vega. Wasn't there a little bit between these? Between these bits? With, yeah. With Uncle Howdy? No, oh, about afterwards, Bray Wyatt's Mac. Mask, dude. Mask hacks, not Mac. Max the feed and says, What? Howdy. <laughs> say that again. He <laughs> puts the fresh there. batteries in Matthew. <laughs> I tried to save that and I made it worse. Uh, Bray Wyatt's mask hacks the feed yes. and says, uh, Why would you lie to me? You should never lie to the ones you love. All oh, no, that was the voiceover. I've butchered it, lads. Tom can do the bit. Do you want to redo that again? Just the keep it the entire it's podcast. Fun. The voiceover goes, Why would you lie to me? You should never lie to the ones you love. And then we get, Howdy. Howdy. That was it. That was yeah, awesome. Howdy. Before. Sorry, I thought it was a one-word thing. But howdy, right, he's, got a set, he's got a hat, he's a little cow. I wasn't expecting you to be a Western man. Howdy? I know, Uncle, yeah, I just thought, <laughs> no, but no, but the Uncle American. Howdy. American. <laughs> America. <laughs> We've got this idiot story again, America. I, I was expecting a Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I was expecting. Oh, please. <laughs> he's just going on. <laughs> Al Snow's European champion. <laughs> My new persona. Oh, bonjour. Because I know we I know we said Uncle Howdy, I know the name Uncle Howdy had been copyright. And uh, uh, people kind of assumed that the mask would be Uncle Howdy. But I don't know why, I, when I saw, like, oh, he's a Western man. <laughs> I go, okay, howdy. howdy. Oh, yeah, howdy. <laughs> now that makes sense. I just kind of thought it might be like a cute little cartoon character. It appears because at the same time, they trademarked Uncle Harper. Yeah. Uh, Harper. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Harper? <laughs> it's a clownman. Harper. Harper. <laughs> Obviously, you can say the Luke Harper, but for comedy purposes, Harper. 
Oh, that was high. <laughs> right. Oh, that was good. That so just gone. in case you didn't see Howdy, this Howdy fella, he looks like he's got a mask on his head, but he's also wearing a Stetson with barbed wire wrapped around it. He's got facial hair that makes him look like a koi fish. Like with mm. the, the, the tentacles coming out of his face. The thing from Pirates of the Caribbean, the... Uh... Davy Jones. Thank you. Yes. I'll take your word for it. And apparently I've the voice... And, uh, well, I've seen the first one oh, years okay. ago. Um, but apparently the voice that went howdy sounds like Vinny uh, Marce- Marceglia from Impact, the guy who Bray Wyatt is friends with in real life, With who just looks like a Bray Wyatt friend. Vincent from The Righteous. Yes, I, Vinny. Yeah. See, that, that, <laughs> it's interesting because they, The Righteous have been have signed to do an indie show for Beyond Wrestling in November. Uh, which many may, which may many think that they're not going to be part of the the Bray Wyatt storyline now, as expected. But Carl Anderson, Carl Anderson is Uncle Howdy, <laughs> <laughs> as well as not instead of. Um, yeah. So anything's anything's up for grabs at this point. I think I, I'm in, very intrigued by the Uncle Howdy bit. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting him to be a cowboy. I'm excited now. He's a cowboy. If it is going to be Vinny. Oh, Vincent. He just, I saw the picture of, I think it was like Bray Wyatt's birthday party or something this year, and he was there, and he just looked, he looks like he could be Bray Wyatt's brother. Oh. He's already got one of them. Yes, he has. Yeah. He was the fiend. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> I watched those Jimmy YouTube. But I do hope it's someone new. I hope it's not someone repackaged that we already know mm. as wrestling fans. It, There's other things about Grayson Waller maybe being involved and all those sorts of people. Ah, someone new, someone scary. Well, if only Vinny. somebody had done a temperature check of all the people that could potentially be part of Bray Wyatt's faction. Tom will stick a thermometer up your bottom. I will if you're a good boy or girl <laughs> or non-binary. And I'll pop a thermometer right up there and determine who should be in Bray Wyatt's gang. Uh, sorry, William Regal appears to have... We'll get him the leave. Polite, uh, ask scrubby, him scrubby, scrubby, it's scrubby. a video on the YouTube channel that went live a few days ago. Yes. <laughs> That's what we were yeah, doing. Please watch it. Uh, <laughs> We see a video package where Santa Escobar talks about his table's expansion, which means bring in Zelina Vega so we can rule her out as being Captain Howdy, I guess. Uh, (laughs) The group all have a toast to their future success, which begins by taking out Hit Row. Hit Row are watching backstage and aren't too happy about this, but B-Fab has an idea. So who are they going to recruit? Who are they going to recruit to even up the odds? That's just proper stable wars now, isn't it? It's turned into AW, but... Well, Wait, well do you know who wasn't on NXT this week? Who? Carmelo Hayes. Ooh. Who is main roster ready? Let's not mess oh, up. He's he better is. than Hit Row. Oh, you, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a way it's a to bring him in. Yeah. Mm. And you can just go, hey, you used to drive an Uber. <laughs> I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> or what yeah. if, hey, you can join my stable by that. You can drive me to the arena. Thank you. <laughs> you can yeah. drive me to the Intercontinental Championship. Ah. What if Trick Williams joins them and then Carmelo goes solo on Raw? Oh, ding dong. I, mean, I like Trick Willie, me. I yeah, like, no. Trick Willie's good. But he'd, he'd, he'd fit quite well with the hit row vibe, the energy of that. And Carmelo Hayes is strong enough to stand, I believe, on his own. Yeah. As a talker, as a they wrestler. They both are. Yeah. Yeah. Hit row and desperate need here. Who could they call? Ghostbuster. Yeah, exactly. I did like uh, uh, Top Dollar, the Uber driver. Just his line. He's like, how are people saying their head and shoulders above us when their heads don't even reach my shoulders? Nice. Good that, isn't it? Good wordsmith is old Francis. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's getting paid the big bucks. <laughs> Ray that beats... was legitimately good. Oh, you actually did? Oh, they were wrong. Oh, I right, liked yeah. it. He's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, really that, we, big know. Boy. <laughs> we know. We know. Ray beats Ludwig Kaiser after getting the rest of Imperium ejected with Eddie Guerrero trickery. That's right. I like that. Yeah. I like it. Ray Mysterio using Eddie Guerrero tactics. After leaving his bastard son on the other brand, I yeah. like it. Ultimate poo housery well, from Ray there. He doesn't need the. Ha- he's got the uh, poo housing. Now he doesn't need to keep the kid. <laughs> so, yeah, again, Ludwig Kaiser looks at million, billion euros. So does Ray. Mm. The way Ray was moving in this match, it's, it defies the laws of physics. <laughs> yeah, you see some of the luchadors who are the same age as him or slightly older, like, you know, the Villanos for. El Kanek, well, okay, El Kanek's about 20, 30 years older than him, but still, that's like, that's what Luchador should be at, like, that age. Mm. Uh, Ray is still gone. And seamlessly he, so as well. He mm. should be as put together like Ikea furniture, <laughs> and he's still doing stuff. I don't get it. I think they said 32 years on commentary, I'm sure, since he A debuted, wrestling. which, yeah, <sighs> makes a sense. And, oh. Highlight that match for me was actually Ludwig getting out of the way of the low pay and then just hiding yeah. and going, <laughs> getting up and just smacking him. I like that sort of stuff. But it was a really good match, I thought. Yeah, and it's getting us hyped for the big match. It's tonight, isn't it? 
Gunter. <laughs> I hit that way harder than I thought I did. did. I've had one too many coffees today. <laughs> what yeah. road, Tom? Do you think Gunter will throw Ronald into? It's the hit row. <laughs> That'd be a great thing to land on you, right? <laughs> oh, oh, he's he's hoying him like way beyond the 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 the, the ladder danger territory in NXT. <laughs> Probably into the fifth or sixth row. <laughs> no, he's gonna. No, I think Ray is gonna get thrown around like a piece of paper. It's gonna be. I think they're gonna have a fun time. And we had a Ray Gunter slash Volta match. In the world, anywhere, no, ever. I don't think we have. No, I think I could. Not even five year. star book. No, <laughs> they wouldn't. Dare. Wowzers! <laughs> I'm, I'm all the more intrigued for it then, because yeah. Ray has proved that like some of his best work comes from guys who are much larger. And Gunter is on his absolute A game at the moment. Is there it's a, is so there a, good to see. Is there a chance? No, I hope not either. No, no. but I but I but I want to I want to mm. suspend my disbelief and have Ray nearly do it. Only. If, 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 because Seamus is out, apparently, no, it wouldn't make any sense. Well, I'm just trying to think of somehow getting Imperium taken on uh, the bloodline. That's going to make any bloody sense. Why are you supposed to cheer mm. Gunther? No. <laughs> Hang on. I'm just, yeah, I'm talking complete crap. I'm, I'm, no. Bail out, bail, 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 bail. <laughs> no. A Logan Paul cuts a promo on the bloodline, but Jey Uso attacks from behind and beats him down. Logan Paul does get a terrifying thing about, yeah, but what if I beat Roman? What if I do win? What if I do get that title of Roman? And it's like, don't say that. What Logan needs is a few. He needs to have a stable like Chase U in the crowd. Another stable. Just a, a load right, of Tony Khan. A load of supporters of his in the crowd in a designated area. Because when he's going like, what if? What if I land that one shot? And the crowd's going, boom. Yeah. It's not. It's not quite working for me. Mm. Sorry, Dan. I think I just made Dan have a sort of a, a crisis back there. He's a big Paul fan. <laughs> but no, yeah, that's what we said every single week. It's like, yeah, okay, he's done a good job of everything. Of not involved in the Roman Reigns stuff. He's done a good job considering not a lot of people like him just because of who he is and whatever he is, regardless of anything else. Um, it's a hard sell for people. Have him take on the world Uwu champion. He's like, oh no, 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 no. You're okay being up the Miz every week. Mm, this is a different ball game and then you go yeah. wait it's Saudi Arabia okay let's get this over with but <laughs> you're that confident are you <laughs> oh, I wasn't but I there was a lingering doubt like it would be the reason improved so much for the last few months post Vince money talks this would be one of those howlers that would go oh okay it's like that is it's like the DQ in Hell in a Cell this I is one, it'd be one of these, these big 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 mistakes Imagine for the you know the non-wrestling fans who are fans of Logan Paul who will tune in just to see what's going to happen if he beats Roman Reigns. That's the end of wrestling. It's the end. We'll have nah. to shut call the holic down. No, we'll just have to pretend that like you know, wow, it's great seeing all these YouTubers come in and uh, get Where the tag the low titles. Gang now? <laughs> oh, it's great. Uh, oh, oh, all the stars are here. Um, Roll for Sandwich is the <laughs> NXT champion. Oh, great. <laughs> Big shout to Daz Black, who's now the NXT North <laughs> yeah. American champion. Who would you see as a champ? Rate my takeaway. Rate my takeaway. There you go. Actually, you know, you know what? Well, for, you know, yeah. You know what, Logan Paul, I'm if you win. If this is you're going to open up for us. I'm up, I'm up for Markiplier's push to the main, to the <laughs> main uh, roster. On the red brand, so you can dye his hair red. Oh, uh, Dream Unmasking? It's me, Austin. It was me all along. <laughs> oh, it yeah, was me whatever. all along, as was the style at the time. Matt no muscles. muscles! What are you doing here? <laughs> Jokes that only Matthew and Tom get. Yay! <laughs> I'm Matt McMuscles. Hello. OSW winning the trios titles. What a dream! <laughs> the racist Irishman <laughs> <the> champions. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Go watch oh. the video on AW All Out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go watch that in a minute. Yeah, Not now. Yeah. No. yeah. Oh, Not now. Who else? Who else is joining the YouTube I, WWE? Oh, oh, I gone, think the we? bit's exhausted now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Guru Larry. <laughs> yeah. And this segment is old, so I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> did... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, Ross. I'm sorry, Ross. Did he compare himself to the Bret Hart of YouTube, Logan Paul? I've had his written that down. Logan Paul, this is not. Oh, oh it's not Guru. Like punch Guru. Did he say it was the Bret Hart of YouTube? He may or was that have. just me comment, me commentating? I've, I've, I don't I've think he did. I would, I, I would have written something about and the that fact that you know, cursed death on him. Wrestling fans hate him, like you know, like people in America. But then he goes to Canada, which is YouTube land, and he's he's a hero. He's a hero. Oh, I see. Yes, right. That's, oh, that's interesting. He didn't say that, but that's an interesting take. Yeah, because that's what we're trying to point out. Right. How it's kind of advantageous as a side thing. As a side man, huh? But, uh, <laughs> having him as the main attraction is like, oh, no, 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 no. 
Like, mm. I don't know, Hogan 02. You're great winning the tag belt, belts with uh, Edge, but you can keep away from the main event scene, pal. That was Triple H's idea. Well, he's full of them, isn't he? <laughs> oh, no. And look where we are now. I heard that. Who, ideas. who was I listening to? It might have been Brucey e. P making his return recently. Said it was Triple H's idea oh, to drop the title. I've tapped out with him, man. Yeah. Oh. Rubbish podcast. Triple- <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half of talking rubbish. <laughs> As opposed to this, which is three hours. Hello. Yeah, but we're, we're not like, all right, I've got to hurry up and do my other job. Actually, I'll say this, though. One of the I have more recent fair. ones, he said, uh, shut up, you. Um, he said he drinks like a Pepsi in a can, and then later on he'll have like a Coke afterwards. I've never known anyone to mix them like that. Nah. That's bizarre. That, that says everything you know about Brucey e. P. It's a different kind of Coke chase than I've ever heard. <laughs> Jay Uso disobeyed the orders though once again he, he got on the ring and smacked up Logan Paul yeah. and I love the conflict of Sammy on the apron yeah. should he get involved and stop Jay or should he just leave him be and leave the tribal chief to deal with it next yeah. week because Jay was knocked out by a single shot because that's all it takes what if even though they keep on saying what if that one hit that one hit even though they also brag about the fact that he went to he went six or whatever rounds with Floyd Mayweather and he didn't get that one shot because he's probably whoever's the greatest boxer of all time. <laughs> and this is uh, Logan Paul. So uh, I don't know why they kept him bigging that up. But anyway, it's yeah, that one shot is all you need because uh, one di- no, one direction, JLS. <laughs> you only get <sighs> one shot, so make it count. You might never get this Forever moment again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I like Logan Paul at least being used as a chess piece in the big game of chess that is. The Bloodline Saga. Mm. I would like it, though, if they just said that Roman's got a glass chin just to add to the story. I think that's... Right. Like Miro of his glass neck. Footage of Roman training in the MMA, I don't know, something like that. That, that. would make sense, actually, getting yeah. sparked out. Lovely. Secret footage of him shining it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, stop looking! Oh, my secret! <laughs> Literal glass chin. That's why I've grown a beard. Oh, no. <laughs> my secret has been... It's just uh, a stick-on beard. <laughs> Uh, We're on a rampage, which is all f- oh, kinds of fun. Let's uh, be quick. I've worked something out there, Matthew. Go on. Rampage is bloody awful, <laughs> but Dynamite is still really good. Dynamite's but Rampage, good, but, but Rampage yeah. blight is your perspective of Dynamite. So basically, just cancel Rampage. Yeah. Last week, <laughs> last week, yeah, last week, Jack did a really good thing. He went. Uh, he called the title. Everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> now, that's great. If you've seen a film, that's modern and good. No, said Jack pathetically. And uh, I was like, that's actually really good, though. That's a very good criticism summed up in one film title mm. uh, of the issues with Rampage. Lots of stuff happening and none of it mattering. AW Rampage, legitimately not as good as NXT. That's not wacky, but it is true. It so is I'll true. It. It's a great film. Number one, the acclaimed, <laughs> be, the acclaimed beat the varsity athletes. I was saying the varsity blondes are still warm. That's right. <laughs> not even fully dispatched. The, t- the, the, the was still open. I found myself watching. It was either Dark or Dark Elevation. I forget which one. But they were, they're, they're still a team, Brian and uh, Griff. But they're now just called, big drum roll, the Varsity. The Blondes. That's oh, they, their name. Yeah, they're called tag the team Blondes. Name. The Blondes. Yeah, thank you. You know what? I'm being, <laughs> yeah, Varsity athletes are not them. They're the, right, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you but, yeah, that's throwing me off as well. <laughs> yes, they're the Blondes. <laughs> they are. That's what they'll be uh, signing. What? No, I was going to say that's what they'll be signing their name as in the Dole office. That's what we could do. <laughs> That's not how that works at all. That's rubbish. Nice. The acclaim beat some lads to win back the Sizzle Me catchphrase that they took for one week. Sizzle Me catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> I love be waiting to use that. <laughs> Mark Sutton complains afterwards, so they beat him down and celebrate with Daddy Ass, who does the proper legal thing in wrestling by tearing up the contract. And that, that makes means it null and void. Legally binding. Do you remember when Goldberg uh, ate Scott All's contract? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's how he was never seen again. That was good times. I like the angle with the trademark, but is it just me? This one should have gone on for at least a month, maybe two or maybe three. Mm-hmm. Not two episodes. You, you know, the, the, the varsity athletes and smart mark should have been out there making their own merchandise, yep. doing the trademarks. Yeah, you could have they, had some fun with it. They claim come out and try and do it, but they get served papers. I think this lasted two weeks. I think it might even it have only been a week. It was Dynamite, so yeah. it was the same week. Was it the same week? That's just... They could have done so much more with this feud. Yeah, Yeah. but Uh, it was too short, yeah. I completely agree. Uh, They play the parts of filler tag lads uh, when the guns are unavailable. (laughs) Put down there for woods and knees. Are they injured or or something, the guns? Because they weren't on... Well, they were on Dynamite, but they weren't in the ring. So I guess Uh, they I think it's just, you know, building up all that hype for them. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought Tony Nese looked good in this match. I thought he did. I thought he did a very good job. Yeah, he's he's got these little roles. Yeah. He's, he's like one of those little actors you see. He's a character actor. Mm. You see, he's like, oh, it's him. 
It's like one of the the secondary characters in like you know the, the little Britain and all these different right, kind of things right. in the mid noughties. Yeah, see him popping everything, TV adverts, That's all him. sorts. That's Tony Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, his friend. Oh, that was a quote I got actually. It was uh, Jim Ross at the end? He goes, "Scissor me timbers, Tony." And then Tony Schiavone replies, "I love it, baby." I'd never <laughs> ever thought I'd hear that exchange between those two men, especially in 2022. <laughs> It's amazing. And meanwhile, man. Jim Ross is on Twitter just liking everything with half naked women on. <laughs> we can see your likes, Jim Ross. I did this last week. Watch what you like on Twitter. <laughs> did you yeah. like your things from last week? Or did you just nah. leave them? Also, Alan, people might have seen them. Alan, come at me. <laughs> no one did. So I thought <laughs> worse than being horny on me, I guess it's been boring. <laughs> uh, instead of hijacking the show, like she said, she would on Dynamite. Jade Cargill has a sit-down interview with Tony Schiavone instead. Uh, she explains that she's put forward Leela Gray for a match against Willow Nightingale tonight in exchange for a confrontation with Nala Rose. Tony Khan needs to sort his absolute life out. <laughs> 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 to be fair, though, it's true. <laughs> what a great note. Because now in kayfabe, in kayfabe, not just in real life, but in kayfabe, we've got the wrestlers walking all over him as well, giving them ultimatums, not which he has to bow that. down to. Yeah, well, it depends yeah, what you're yeah, into, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. giving him ultimatums that he has to give him to, I think it's now bled into kayfabe as well with Jade. But we'll learn later why Jade. It's it, why well, it's really good storytelling this angle. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Though. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Ortiz and Lucha Brothers tell Eddie Kingston he needs to control his anger issues, then pack saunters into frame, <laughs> provokes him before walking off. What does he say? Just like just appears like <laughs> it's like oi, sort your life out. <laughs> Nothing like that. He's still been an arsehole while the other seemed to be nice. <laughs> and then he left. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Pac travels. Uh, before their match, Arai Davari tries to buy the FTW title from Hook, who slaps the money out of his hand and beats him without too much trouble. He also chokes out Jeeves K afterwards. Who, the, who are the bollocks is this? Well, Davari's gimmick is he's, <laughs> he's rich, and so he's bought himself the third most used to stable in AEW. Um, and that's a butler guy. A butler I don't called, know. I couldn't have told you his name. A butler called Jeeves. That's what we're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's what rich people do with money. A butler called so Jeeves. You can lock this person in the uh, the freezer locker. That's the creativity <laughs> we've got going now. Yeah. A butler called Jeeves. Yeah. And again, well, this, <laughs> again, this really long angle that they've blown off, like they just shot their wad over uh, with seconds. Go, I want to buy that title off you. No. Oh, that's the end of that. Yep. Uh, to be fair, $50,000 isn't that much money for Hook, I would reckon. I, yeah. would, I, would, I would barter. It's a slow week for him. Uh, but I would, I would like to see uh, Jeeves' birth certificate because he looked like the split and double to me of Barry Horowitz. So he could be his son, for all I know. Oh. I'd just like to see it. Good old batter. But I, uh, the Hulk looked great. Just still make her over doing very little. That's how it should be, I This guess. was the most offense I think he's ever taken in a match here. He survived mm. the rock bottom. Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, so yeah, we're getting more even matches now with Hook. Right. Lovely. Lovely development. Ooh, Ooh, he's, he's cooking. I... <laughs> Afterwards, no, here we are. Backstage, Sookie Hathaway and Ethan Page tell Matt Hardy that they sent Private Party to wrestling school to work on their fundamentals. I don't know if that was supposed to be deliberate, I mean, the whole thing's been bloody, <laughs> but that's what they used to sell people in the center to like HWA back in 01. That's what they told Chronic when they sold, yeah, you work on your timing and your fundamentals, which meant, God, you're bad. <laughs> So I guess that's that, I'm that sad that we mean. didn't get a scene where they just chuck them in a crate and label it. <laughs> Nightmare <laughs> yeah. Academy. So Proper Party are dead. Uh, Stokely also tells Matt that they booked him in a match on Dark Elevation and then Matt raps at them. It's weird. I died. I, died. I literally died watching this. There'll be people at home, obviously, you know, in the rap game and whatnot. Is that why? I don't know. Uh, who know and love rap music more than I do. Who will all go, I oh, did that rap. But I just didn't have a clue, so it's lost on me. Maybe I shouldn't say anything on it. Well, the stunning crowd reaction to it. Yeah, I uh, know. That's what got it as well. My concern is that Matt Hardy did uh, think he was talking on his uh, podcast this week and he was talking about how it's always important to evolve your character. It's always good to change it up. And I'm worried this is like, maybe he's gone rapping. Rap Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rap Hardy. Oh, no. Uh, I think, I don't you know, know what? We said this about every gimmick change has been. The deleter of Thugonomics. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Ah, <sighs> Willow Nightingale beats Leela Gray, and Giovanni announced afterwards that Willow is all elite. Yeah, Finally. this is lovely. Finally. Yeah. And this is one highlight, I guess. Uh, the match wasn't good by any means. Jim Ross sadly brought out his dreaded bowling shoe ugly line <laughs> Did he? for the match, which is like, uh-oh, that's another kiss of death, like, go with, yeah, worked on your fundamentals. But I like Willow Nightingale. It doesn't matter if she has one bad match. Uh, okay. 
AW's benefit. Now, please actually do something with her. Willow leaves and Jay Cargill arrives immediately, demanding that Nyla Rose brings her belt back. It's absolutely no time giving to Willow whatsoever here. Nyla appears on the throne with Vicky Guerrero and Marina Shafia. Oh, no. They're a stable. <laughs> they're, 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 they're a gang. Yeah. I forgot Marina Shafia. So Nyla's technically face, Vicky's uh, Vicky, and Marina Shafia's a heel, right? I think Nyla's, a, a, I think Nyla's officially a heel. And Jay, no, no, no. She's Jay's a, a tweener. Jay's a tweener. Jay, Nyla, the, the face, <laughs> steal Jade's car. Oh, wait, maybe not then. Jade refuses to leave the ring until she gets her belt back, and she does have a point. She attacks two security guards and leaves the ring. So, the story, <laughs> building up the rampage, which I'm sure was built up for over a week. Jade Cargill threatens Tony Khan by saying, Tony, I'm going to take your entire show hostage. I'm not going to leave the ring until I get my title back. They work out a deal where Jade like gives uh, Tony Layla uh, Gray to replace uh, Penelope in the match against uh, oh, Willow Nightingale injured, yeah. in return for the title. She All doesn't right. get the title back. She waits patiently, this is Jade by the way, until this match is finished. She then comes and sits down for maybe two minutes, taking the show hostage for the entirety, remember? That's what the story is here. Mm-hmm. And then she leaves of her own accord after beating up a couple of security guards. That's the story. That's the story like the we're told. Oh, man. They promised something and then gave us something completely different. That was such a shame. And is it me, or is this Nyla Rose, Jay Cargill thing gone on for about 40 years now? <laughs> where you had like the like the, 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 the rights to the, the word scissor me, a, a potentially really intriguing bit of storytelling. Like, oh, we've got to get that done dead quick. Let's carry on focusing on this... This this hef this hefty hefty bit of business between Jay Cargill and Nyla Rose that continues to rumble on. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be money. See, I'm all right with it because it's different to what Jade's been doing, which is this like Jade kill, which is mm. like fine. But it's like okay, can you, it's been, that's been happening for a while now, and there's no real challenges. So doing something different, I'm all right with. But Nyla being the wacky he he he. Jade. I think well, she's funny. Still, yeah, yeah. Twitter Nihilist, is what she's been. Yeah, yeah, Twitter, awesome. yeah Twitter Nihilist is great. But Vicky and Marina, they're, they're blatant heels. So, yay, boo, yay, yay, boo, yay, boo. Vicky Guerrero yay. is a daredevil. Yay, boo. Did you see how she was perched on that car window and the speed that car took off? She's like a deer that they how, killed. How she held on is beyond me. I was watching a video on Instagram Reels this week where there was something similar happening, but it was in a car park and the car was doing like handbrake turns and the guy who was hanging on the window fell off and the car ran over him. I was expecting something like that to happen to Vicky, but it didn't. Thanks for dropping that in, It was Ross. amazing. Was that person okay? Yeah, it got straight up. It was fine. What? It, it literally runs over their head. I don't understand it. I do not understand it, but they survived. Who, who was this doing this? Was this Duncan Ferguson? You know when you're, like, just, you're sitting on the, the toilet having a poo and you're just scrolling through Instagram reels watching little videos? You've all been there. We've, we've all been there. Yeah. Oh, a bit of death while I'm having a poo. Yeah, I, well, it's all I get now is like dogs and people getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Like I love my algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Knows what I like. But by the way, Don't Willow... people getting hurt. We still talk about AEW backstage drama. Stop it, Matthew. <laughs> Willow Nightingale's offense, I think, is the right side of rough without being like, like bad. If that makes sense. I like the fact that Doctor Bum looked like it legitimately hurt someone. I don't think yeah. it did, but it looks like it did, and I like that. No, I that's like... not how we're supposed to react. They need to go back to training. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So no, I, I like how rough. No, I thought it was a great looking ball. Yeah. Yeah, I like Willow a lot. I hope the Doctor Bomb. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I'm glad that she's on the books now. Yeah. Um, you know, in, insert the insert there's too many wrestlers dot wav here. But I'm glad that Willow Nightingale's got a gig. Yeah, I'm glad and that that person who's been on the show for months now is uh is now team. officially on the books and gets to pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We see that before the show, Orange Cassidy interrupted a confrontation between number 10 and Roosh in the bar. And then Orange Cassidy appeared, like, felt like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you guys want a drink? I only get shades for you. You look great. You guys want a drink? <laughs> and Ten goes, no, this mouse hasn't got a mouth. Think, All right, what about you, Rush? No. Uh, and he goes, hey, you two want to wrestle each other. How about we make it a triple threat by all I like title? Yeah, all right. <laughs> and on one hand, it was weird, like, wait, why is the champion trying yeah, to Yeah, why is he doing that, yeah. But at the same Seems time. Seems to get on telly. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, though, it's like, that's actually like his character. And uh, Tony Khan was there. He's like, hey, can I book this? So he's like, yeah, sure. And went back. He's like, wait, Tony's just there. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> um, so I was all right with this because it's, you know, if someone serious did this, it'd be stupid. But like, yeah, Orange Cassidy might as well do this. The Roosh 10 storyline is dragon. Oh. It's like, we want to we wanna hire 10 or bring him into our fold because he's got a mask. And I guess, I said this last week, Tom, is the implication that because he's wearing a mask, I think he's a luchador. Mm. Like, I, it's, it's not really, okay, fine. But 
a good little match. I'd oh, it was say. really good, yeah. You need this crowd needed something for a main event, so Orange I'll, Cassidy is something. I like Orange Cassidy coming down with his title in the backpack. Yep. It's different, mm-hmm. stands out, it's memorable. Great. Like Roosh. when Harper would drag it across the floor. Yeah. Oh. Roosh, though, nothing, not much that he does makes sense in terms of like trying to win wrestling matches. <laughs> <laughs> the posing, the not hitting people when he could hit the people. The In this match in particular, the kicking of the imaginary football for some reason. Then he got the cable involved, and that was good. Yeah. But all of that stuff before it, and I'm thinking about the stuff in the ladder match at the pay-per-view as well, yeah. where he could have won the match, but he just didn't. That ladder match just stunk. It's like, does he, I know that it's a performance and whatnot, but yeah, you still want to see that little bit of like, oh, we need to win the match, the, 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 the crux of what you're doing. I get you. You know what I mean? No, there's still, he's doing, he's still doing a few little, little bits in there to keep me going. The stomp, stomp, stomp pose, I still like. So, but yeah, I think he may look at this going, what's a triple threat? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we doing? All right, whatever, let's pose. But yeah. yeah. Um, what am I saying here? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just shocked at how little tended because it felt like the way the match was set up, it was going to be him like proving why Roosh and Andrade right. wants him. He got one little flourish with a, a big couple of moves um, and that discus Larry was good. A little tribute yeah. to, to, to Al Brody. Yeah. Um, and the mask, uh, he was sort of like toying with his mask at the end, wasn't it? So he could be on the brink of maybe leaving the Dark Order and just maybe taking the mask off so Roosh leaves him alone. <laughs> yeah. <he takes laughs> <mask off. laughs> Wait. Oh, sorry. Oh, all right. I love that. I love that. They're going, join our, join our gang. Join our gang. Join our gang. Where have you gone? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hi. It was yeah, uh, match, and a table they used in break the first time, Excalibur did not yell, I am the table like he has previously because he realizes it's now properly Logan Paul Industries. Oh. As Ryan Satan did a lovely interview with him and said, you know, that's a bunch of media thing, did it? And Logan's like, no, really? He says, I don't know why uh. I said it. He goes, oh, I think I have seen those. He blamed me, hadn't. He's been breaking he has, hard. he's lying. Yeah, Just that yeah, cool damn. in front of his friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I just thought I'd say it, man. You know, cool, yeah, yeah, Logan Paul. So yeah, respect to Logan he Paul. He watches. The next, he's... The next champion. He's seen KSI, and he's gone, I want, some of, I want some of that, whatever it's called. <laughs> Algorithm. <laughs> anyway, up next, NXT Halloween Havoc. Uh, you were never my friend. Oh, I was always your best friend. I think she said in response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the show opens up with lots of spooky bollocks. Um, That's and- the Scream Queen, Shotzi Blackheart, you're speaking about there. Yeah, I'm okay with that, kind of, but... Again, said this last week, Tom, say it again. I, being a bit older than the core audience of the Coreholic people, uh, was around when WWE was around, and they do wacky stuff like, mm, that one time Chucky would appear on Nitro. Once. No, but no, it's not, it's not about that. Once it's- Chucky appeared, and then having years of WWE making fun of it, either on clip shows, or are you being serious, or Josh Matthews, the road dog, all these other, ho, 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 WCW, so stupid. <laughs> Only to see Chucky become a regular annual character and have tie-ins for the show. But you know, you There's know... There's a bit that's just going to go, you absolute get. It's a promotional. <laughs> it's a co Shower of bastards. It's a co because of the Chucky series. Yes, I they know. They paid for it. Well, it wasn't appearing on Nitro because he was a fan of the product. I'm going to meet Ric Flair. <laughs> no, but I'm he saying that's... He had the shield then. Ooh, no, but it's just, it's I... a dream come true <laughs> to be stood here with Ric Flair. It's, it's, an, easy, it's an easy conversation for them to have. favorite wrestler, Chucky? <laughs> it's oh. an easy win for WWE and USA to go, oh, our wrestling fans, they get Chucky. Get him on here. It's yeah. an easy win. Yeah. And then they have to, like, be silly, stupid stuff and have, like, Chucky beat Grayson Waller in a promo battle. <laughs> and just, hey, Chucky's here again. You're like, nah. <laughs> Not having this. He beat Liv Morgan on Wednesday as well. <laughs> He's racking up the wins over the WWE. <laughs> Did Legend he have- of the day, stabbed it to death on a, on a talk show. Yeah. He stabbed it to death. Stabbed it blood everywhere. He stabbed her in the chest. Ooh. Not in the chest. Is this real? The- yeah, no, on the, on, the, on the Chucky, on the show the other day, Liv Morgan was a guest on a Chucky's talk show, and Chucky stabs her. Uh, was she Liv? She was Liv like, Morgan. Oh, okay. Such a promising career. No, no wonder they were booing. You're like, they didn't react to it. Like, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, then Why we you- have the proper match. Wesley wins the opening ladder match to become the North American champion. Uh, at this point, I'm very numb to ladder matches. Not this oh, one. Oh, no, they oh, don't miss. Hey. Oh, baby. Oh, strap me in. Go on, it all it? kicked off with Trick dressed as Hugh Hefner. Fantastic. <laughs> kicked off with Cum's hair. It looked great. 
Um, Fraser, Nathan, Nathan Fraser. Yeah. He was the standout early he on. He was flying. flying. That's Spanish. I've called it the Spanish lion salt because they did like a lion salt, but it was a Spanish fly at the same time. Mm. Fan dabby dabby. Spanish Doherty. flying salt. Spanish, yeah. Um, Mensa uh, was centimeters away from perishing when he came off yes, the he top. Was. My God, by Trick Willie. Uh, the good and the bad of come, I'll call this next bit. Uh, because why did come yeah. with a free ladder in the ring go under the ring to go and get another ladder and set up a, a ladder bridge? He did a roosh. Basically, because yeah, one of the did. matches are crap. Yeah, how very Rush and Andrade of him. But then the good have come. Because oh. this is, Dan, my move of the week. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh, go oh. on. Which move, which move? We're coming early, everybody, because the spot where come through Where's Lee? across the arena and onto the announce table was ast astonishing. No other man, maybe, I guess a few could have taken it, but no one could have taken it in NXT like Wesley. Yeah. Nobody could have delivered it in NXT like come Tuesday. Because yeah. he did it to Wesley a few months ago, so it was <sighs> interesting to see it. Was that in the crowd? In the front no, row? it was in that same table. Was it the same thing? Yeah. Well, I'd forgotten about that because I I don't know. Um, but I thought it was fantastic. I was hoping the move of the week would be him pulling out the ladder and nearly decapitating that fan. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was what you were <laughs> going That was where for. you were going. That, I love that fan. He was just going to go, leans oh, back. The reaction skills that one fan. Respect. Fantastic. He's just like Ronda Rousey come Tuesday. Just hates the fans. I got Corn Rose as well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I think we've got something here. And of course, uh, Wesley at the end there, for the, I think he set up the final spot, didn't he? He did the, the Shelton Benjamin, but on roids. You know, Shelton ran up the ladder in the ring. Allegedly. He ran up the ladder from the floor into the ring and then jumped on the... Oh, yep. where's Lee? Ding so dong. So good. You know, if, if if come Tuesday couldn't win and earn our respect off last week's podcast, <laughs> it was like, Jack was like, we need to respect uh, Von Wagner a bit more. Me and him just went, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wins the title, but nah, no. But um, yeah, if, if he couldn't win, I thought wise Lee, with the story that's going on with him finding himself and losing his tag team partner and... Losing being a dickhead. Remember when he did, like being a sassy dick for some reason? Really annoying. Yeah, he was on pills that one week. Yeah. Um, that story, I thought it was a nice nice end to that story. I think yeah, it was the right person it. to win, and I'm excited to see what he'll do as, like an, as a sort of underdog style NXT North American champion. Did you, nice. did you see him a few weeks? When he had that one or two weeks of being like, what was, how would you describe it? He just he would act out everything he was saying, like, oh, i got to look around the corner. Yeah, he was very... <laughs> he felt like a CBBC acting. presenter. Yeah, aye. I'm going to look on the table, I'm going to look on the table, and then you get punched in the face. <laughs> and up. I'm yeah, glad so that's gone, nice though, yeah. nice to see him. Yeah, uh, I was wondering why they'd done this to vacate the title and all this, but Wesley, it's like, yeah, at least there's some trajectory there. There's a nice it video afterwards with Wesley and Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels giving him a hug. You could tell what a it, freak. You could tell it meant a lot Hugging to Wesley. Hugging your like Dan Sean Passion. You could tell it meant a lot to oh, Wesley, and it was lovely. You could tell weird. it meant a lot to Shawn Michaels. But all I, I looked at, watched that video, and all I could think was, oh, Sean, man, oh, put a hat on or just shave. <laughs> I feel really bad. But I, or I, couldn't take my I couldn't take my eyes off Shawn Michaels' head. Did you not hear? I, I didn't read it, but I just saw the quote pop up on Twitter a bunch of times. That Shawn Michaels reckons he's bald because of all the bad stuff he did. Yeah, Montreal Screwjob basically screwed his hairline. Yeah, if he, hadn't done, if he hadn't screwed Brett, he'd have a full head of hair. What? <laughs> I Shawn assume Michael's his, words, not mine. I assume his dad must be walking down the street looking like, I don't know, a lion. <laughs> <laughs> or his granddad looks like a lion. It's this lovely flowing thing. To say something like that, it's just hereditary, Sean. There's not much you can do, is there? <laughs> you, can see, you can see at the moment he's growing it back, but like his patches... I'm just like, just put a hat on. If you need to grow it back, put a hat on. He'd look fine with it shaved. He really did. I know Sam Driver and I had a talk about this on the Classic Nitro Review podcast this week. And like Sam was like, it, it kind of takes away the, the what I believed was Shawn Michaels when he was shaved bald. Like it broke my heart a bit to see that. But I think <laughs> it's fine. Well, he is the heartbreak. It's natural. Kid. It's natural. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I was, yeah, if I, like when it happens to me, it's going straight away because now yeah, thankfully same. I can get the upside down head. Sean Michaels can do that as well because I was fearing my life before I knew I could grow a beard. Mm. But now it takes Look a bit like of pressure Snitsky. off, doesn't it? I know, yeah. <laughs> it takes pressure off. You know when Snitsky came back with his yellow teeth and no hair at all? Yeah, and like it's a new guy. You're like, no, no. It's... That was going to be me before the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, watch some of those things there, like the high bit rate in the peacock. He's clearly like not used to doing it. It's like got blood and stuff like that. His, his face is just cut to pieces. It's like, oh, I'm used to shaving my beard. Like, oh, sorry. Bless him. Yeah. Baby killer. So uh, <laughs> Alba Fire invites Mandy Rose to a haunted house. 
So she heads there with the rest of Toxic Attraction. I'm very worried then because I thought they were going to have like a match like normal people have. Um, and I was like, oh no, why, they, why is this the, yeah. why is this the trajectory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the fact that Alba Fire, Alba Fire commandeered one of those like uh, haunted maze things that you see popping up. Oh, we saw last year, I believe. Like, uh, was it, uh, what was it, what's it called, the one around here? It's like the one that Kieran maze Trippier maze. did. You see the video of Kieran Trippier going around? And all the people are going like, oh, Kieran Trippier has been to Sunderland for the first time. It's all him going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, funny times. Um, psychopath, that was what it was called. It's like oh. a big sort of what ah, they did here. Ah, like a Halloween horror yeah, and night. they've got actors like playing spooky people, giving you little jump scares and whatnot. We see Alba take out Chasey Jane and Gigi Dolan before attacking Mandy and driving her back to the arena. This is the man. So first and foremost, oh. fantastic Bray Wyatt reference from Gigi Dolan as they pulled up and she went, we're here. Oh, that was nice. Good that, good that. I like, Gigi, like, I like Gigi Dolan covered in blood on Twitter. I thought it was going to be what we're going Whoa, to see. Oh, ding dong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that happened on this bloody episode. <laughs> um, Do we I, like Alba Fire doing a Thunder Rosa reference? What was that? The half skeleton makeup? Oh! Oh, I thought that was Linda. That could be a bunch of stuff there, Tom. Well done. <laughs> well done. Did she sandbags up? No. <laughs> oh, no. But I thought Toxic Attraction, right, and their role as professional wrestling heels, they look pathetic in this, 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 this first part. Yeah. Because they were doing one of these, as I said, ha- Halloween scare maze things, and they were legitimately scared. But it was nice to see Slapjack at Chucky's Tea Party. Did you see him there in the corner? Slapjack? Look like Slapjack from Retribution. Oh, that's Slapjack. Yeah, that's Slapjack. I'm in the uh, the thing they'd use as a weapon in WCW. <laughs> <laughs> that, to me, looked like a sock. But also, was, I was told it was a Slapjack. An underrated moment is when Mandy Rose just is getting scared by this actor, just going like, Aah! in her face. She goes, put some respect on my name. <laughs> she can't not be a wrestler at any point in time. It's fantastic. And I thought it wasn't really fair that Alba had this advantage. <laughs> <laughs> All of her friends being actors and whatnot, oh, no. scaring toxic attraction. She's read the Sun Tzu Art of War, the haunted house attack. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, this did nothing for me, uh, but I knew you'd like it, so I was kind of happy. It was, it was, you know, it's Halloween, isn't it? Spooky bollocks. Spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> do you want to do the second half of it now? Get out of the way, since you don't like it at all? Since you hate it with a passion. Thank you for reading my mind. Because uh, <laughs> I was going to say... Fire arrives at the arena this bit, with Mandy Rose for the title match. But Toxic Attraction also arrive and help Mandy get the win. Teasing. Cruelly <sighs> teasing. It's like, you know what? I would have been all right with the haunted house. Eating them or taking them forever like Jack Nicholson The Shining. Except they're able to overcome the odds of the paid actors to escape and come back. You're like, ah, oh, really? I actually thought this was the time Mandy Rose was going to lose the title. But Gigi Dolan is a magician. That woman was locked. Also, in, she was locked in a fridge, and she somehow got back to the arena in time. How did she get out the fridge? It's her and the and the the servant from Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> Last Matthew, that's please. Twice. That's twice or one. It got mentioned on Epic Rap Battles this week as well. There's did it? New Epic well, Rap Battles came out who, this week. Who's it between? Uh, Indiana one. Jones and Lara Croft. Ah, oh, right. Well, and they, they make a lovely on. little reference to uh, locking the butler in the three. So weird that everyone did that at one point. Yeah. It's a good rap, actually. Oh, like, oh, yeah. I need you. Thank you, Paul. Can I clear something up, though? Was okay. it in the rules that the match had to end in the ring? Because if it wasn't, why did Alba drive her back? She had the advantage. I assume it was, but they just never mentioned it. I know, it man. Was... In, the, in the promo at the start of the show, Manny was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, that, and the other, and I'm going to make sure to drive her back so I can take her on one-on-one. That makes yeah. sense. But for Alba to do it of her own volition... That's, that leaves me a little bit wanting. I assume right? it was like the boiler room brawl, where the, the first boiler room ah, brawl was you had to get into the ring that's right. and take the urn off Paul Bearer. Yeah, nice, Tom. Good save for a, a thing that they probably didn't think about. <laughs> but, then, but then didn't Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton do the same thing when they had the House of Fun match? Oh, <laughs> where they drove back. Oh, more happy memories. That's it. <sighs> that's it. The rule is now, if you're having a fun match out of field, you've got to bring them back to the arena. At least 30 it. miles. And, yes. <laughs> and everybody in that bloody arena was messaging people going, you know, it's like light. <laughs> at this place now it's, it's actually but, but sunny what's, but what's nice is you can now add a haunted house to your NXT land map <laughs> <laughs> thank you which is beginning to look like the, like the level set up for Super Mario Land 2 Six <laughs> Golden Coins it is god I mean the car park the surfer bay we'll have to do a video like Taking a tour around NXT. I said this. I said this yeah. to Jack. I said, you've got to do a tour of NXT land. Whoever submitted the app, the map of the island, please add the haunted house wherever you want to. And yes. we'll we'll, uh, yeah. we'll do a video soon. Doing something to it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'll have to put right next to a haunted house, of course, a uh, casket. Uh, the wheel decides that Apollo Crews and Grayson Waller will have one of them right now. Waller puts Crews through the lid of the casket. So then druids arrive and there's like the lights go blah, 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 blah. 
uh, with a new one and seem to be helping Apollo. And Grayson's like, this is bollocks, this. Uh, Cruz eventually <laughs> wins. And the Druid bit isn't really explained and wasn't mentioned no, on the next is. bit of NXT. It is. Go on. Apollo Cruz. Apollo Cruz. You know, Apollo Cruz, you can see it in the future. Hang on. Yeah. He is also the Undertaker. <laughs> the spirit of the Undertaker now lives within Apollo Cruz. Oh, no. Because he summoned the... He put the guy through... He put Grayson Waller through the lid of the casket. He did. And then he summoned the Druids. Somehow, he teleported from the, the, the ring to the, the being next to the Druids. The spirit of the Undertaker lives within Apollo Cruz. When did... I thought he lived through Jeff Hardy. He gave it back. <laughs> They're taken off of him because of recent events, and now Apollo Cruz has got it. And they did the SummerSlam spot. Uh, the Lesnar take a SummerSlam spot with the laughing. But what oh, was, they who did. Was, who oh, was, no, you're right. Who no. was playing Undertaker? No, they did do that. Who was playing Undertaker, which meant it didn't land at all because you looked dead behind the eyes. That was Apollo Cruz. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they did actually do that as well. Oh. When did, wow, like when did, su- theory, when did Survive the Undertaker come out on Netflix? Was it 20? That was last year, I think it was, yeah. Or was it? So the new day. I didn't know whether I was just trying to think how this could have happened because I didn't know whether it was before Big E feuded with Apollo Crews and whether <laughs> he'd imbued oh. the spirit during that feud and just kept it safe until now. We'll just pretend that's true. <laughs> it makes complete sense. Why hasn't Triple H hired us for long term creative? I don't know. You know what I nearly we'll stitch this together. I've seen your likes on <laughs> I I saw Denise Salcedo. I'm a big fan of Denise Salcedo. We get on like a house on fire. But seeing her on that NXT post show and not me. That made me bitter. <laughs> oh, you should have been a shoe in, mate. If no I lived in a, the brand it's like just you. Your Dolph Ziggler moment. This is, should have been me. God. Exactly. <laughs> or me and Denise. Get Sam Roberts off there. Who cares about Sam Roberts? He's a nice guy, Sam Roberts. I'm just digging He's a hole not. here, like the Undertaker. Uh yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Ross oh, for NXT. Hashtag Post Denise. show. Denise sucks. <laughs> no, no, she's a very nice lady who oh, was sorry. talented as well. Denise is a nice lady. Yes. Hashtag. Hashtag Ross for NXT post show. Instead of Sam Roberts. Instead of hashtag. Sam Roberts. If you need a white male. If you need a white male. <laughs> Easy no, not for them to talk about wrestling. Uh, at Chase U. Oh, here we go. Here we are. Andre gives a lecture about the history of Halloween Havoc. Bodie Haywood is outclassed by a new student. Chew Cudson. The oh, gimmick is, he is that Chew Cudson's a really good student who's paying attention and is really trustworthy. Of course, he's nice. the boring bastard. And. Bo- <laughs> And Bodie Haywood is like, wow, I'm threatened by this man's level of knowledge of Halloween Havoc. Bodie is like a really possessive dog. Because anyone new who tries to infiltrate, in his opinion, Chase you, yeah. he's immediately got an issue with. Even if, like Dull Hudson, they're no threat at the moment that we know of. They're just being a nice model student. So he's done it. He's done it with Charlie Regal or Charlie Dempsey, and now he's done the same with them. Um, <laughs> he's done the he same. He knew. He was like, "Nah, I yeah. can't." Where's Charlie? He's on my class, do you? Yeah, Bodie's just seeing off all these. He's just a, a jealous bitch, is what I'm saying. He's looking at the map, going, "Hang on, left of the haunted house, right of the club." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny as they were fading out. They were talking in class about the Montreal screw job. <laughs> so that was <laughs> quite a fun little bit. Obviously, we've talked about it many times on WWE television, but. Funny to see it incorporated into NXT yeah. nonsense. Yeah, some of these th- things land and some of these don't. Like, they had like melted, like kind of dropped or whatever, like uh, five stars, like right, whatever. But this, this with actual point, having Duke to do something, I'm like, oh, okay, this could mm. be all right. I'm on board because he's got that smarmy look about money. I think he fits the role of the model I'm student. Nice and friendly. Oh, yeah. I trust. Oh, more not. I'll come. steal your pen. Oh, 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 Stole a oh. pen, didn't he? Uh, but what? I did like as well, Andre Chase calling out the lack of knowledge about Halloween Havoc. Because last week where uh, Bodie here with Tom did not know about the Yeti. Oh. That was scandalous. Scandalous. Furious. Yeah, you've got to know all about the rubbish WWE moments. That's of course it. you do. What's the point calling yourself a wrestler? Right. If you listen to the Cold Solid Classic Nitro review on a Thursday, <laughs> he'd know what the Yeti was. And you can as well. Mm. Roxanne Perez beats Cora Jade in their weapons wild match, <gasps> even after being Russian leg sweeped off the platform. Now, this was a match of two halves to me. Not to sound like a footballer, but the the action itself was all right. They did the weapons well. It's been built up pretty well. It's like this red hot feud, you know. Jack's obviously got weak off because we're covering from seeing the two skater losses down on it. <laughs> but then they did the WWE stuff that they love doing. They were trying to be cinematic and just look a bit naff. Like, as you said, you were never my friend. You were my friend. friend, friend. Yay! Going off together at the same I time. I was your friend or something. Um, the finish was good, but there was just lots of the the way they frame and put these sometimes to make it look like the biggest match of all time. And instead, it looks like the smallest match of all time. 
Yeah. I thought at least the first and foremost, at least the skateboard stayed whole the entire time. We've progressed from that where it hey. broke it broke because of air. <laughs> um, and I thought I know you can't legitimately hurt people, obviously, but I thought Cora she's like the Hulk Hogan of NXT Cora Jade. Because remember when Hulk Hogan did that little like bing chair shot? That's what she was doing in this match, and I thought, oh, she's like Hulk Hogan. Just like just like Hulk Hogan. The great Liv Morgan, yeah. Boop. Um and I thought for me the the spot off the the regal platform. Cora just did it by herself. She went like, shall I punch you? Let's punch you, but also give you a nice little cuddle and fall. Yeah, Yeah. it was a weird, (laughs) weird decision to do. Of all the moves you could do to finish off your opponent from the regal platform, Russian leg sweep. (laughs) Short comes a Moriarty going off. <laughs> yeah, okay. was that kind of what you were going for to have like you're both falling at the same time? I guess maybe, yeah. but, but like, was, if, if maybe they were, if maybe it was a case of they were scrapping, and it was just like and just like as a last ditch thing, Roxanne just grabs Cora's head and go right, we're right. both gone. Boom. Yeah, right, right, yeah. But it was a very deliberate decision. It was like she paused and went up, down, A and start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Down. The, the only thing that was missing that was out of shock clearly because NXT wouldn't make a mistake like this. Oh, thing. no. It was the banana peel that uh, Roxanne stepped on to, to get us <laughs> off in there. <laughs> we should have had a whoop sound effect just to make sure people got the got the message there. Yeah. <laughs> you used to be my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, co-hosts, Shotty Blackheart and Quincy Elliott cut a promo dressed as Beetlejuice and a banana. Before that, though, we learned the tea bars coming. Oh yes, oh, I missed that. T bar, is he? I thought it was mask. after, but yeah. Oh yeah, T bars burned his mask. He's coming back to NXT. It just there's, there's, it was just like the mask burning, but we get oh. we get another uh, promo on the the weekly NXT. Oh, cool. no, no, because they, no, they they show T bars mask burning, and then in the media call afterwards, someone says to Shawn Michaels, "Hey, you know, lots going on." He goes, "Yeah, Dominic Dijakovic. We really like him. <laughs> really glad he's coming back." <laughs> like Shawn, no, I mean. <laughs> Sean, man. What? You all know. <laughs> yeah, we all know, uh, but Sean. What did nah. you think it was, Bane? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. No, Jim Carrey's coming. <laughs> Lash Legend interrupts and says she should be the host, but the good guys say, nah, she should not be the host. Shotzi takes her out and does a little dance with Quincy. Love the end of it where That's she's yeah. screaming, Quincy, you are my scream queen and I love you. But I've got this. I like that from Shotzi Blackheart, who is now Australian. Um... <laughs> Quincy getting described as the sweetest banana he's ever, ever seen. Oh, well, she's ever seen. Sorry, Shotty's ever seen. It's good stuff. Um, it's this strange. felt like the stuff they would play while playing adverts of the American Qu- Peacock. Quincy, Quincy was the pick of the bunch because he was a banana and bananas come in bunches. Um, <laughs> uh, struggling here. Very appealing. <laughs> your very appealing. <laughs> uh, that's what was missing. Look, Take your skin off. Halloween Havoc. <laughs> they, oh, God. Halloween Havoc. Um, I think Sean said, Michael's that is, not like Ross Sapp, but uh, they said that they wanted Halloween Havoc to be more remembered as a WWE thing, or NXT thing, I guess, than a WCW thing. Um, I guess they're doing a good job because right now, the idea and gimmick of Halloween Havoc is overshadowing the wrestlers and the wrestling. Mm. There was way too much like, it's like, you know when they called it Halloween Havoc, they just had like a big old pumpkin demon titantron, titantron set up. And it was mint. Who was it who slashed that last year? The bastard. Oh, it was like an eBay selling, wasn't it? Yeah. They slashed it. Part of their entrance was slashing the pumpkin, wasn't it, last year? I'm sure. Is it candies? Unless I've drunk. Oh, that was a different one. Oh, sorry. I think, like, sorry, it was the thing on eBay that they found, like, the the actual (laughs) WSW Halloween pumpkin. Oh, right. Right, How much? Do you know how much? Uh, I couldn't afford it. So it was too much. Fair. I had to get a mortgage and everything. Um, (laughs) The schism say that their mystery partner, will be, or members should say, will be revealed on Tuesdays. And it, oh, we'll come to that. Yeah, one. four roots, yeah. one tree, come Tuesday, we'll find out. Mm. Which I made me think it was Vaughn or come. That makes sense. Yeah. What mm. we got instead, well, yeah. I'd have loved that. Just, like, just seeing, like, obviously, when we come to the reveal, like, there's clearly a dress and ladies' boots and ladies' legs. <laughs> it's, it's come Tuesday. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> it me. <laughs> come Tuesday. <laughs> And the crowd goes, come! <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the <De> Gacy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Zach Gibson. You look funny. <laughs> Where's your hair gone? And then Booker T. <laughs> like, Real Jack, come. <laughs> Real Jack, come. <laughs> anyway, uh, Julius Creed saves his brother's job by beating Damon Kemp in an ambulance match. Uh, and he does so by barren the poo out of him. <laughs> God, they were slapping each other daft in this oh, one. Oh, it was rough. Did you see his hands on the weekly I, show? I did see them. It was a shoot, brother brothers. Absolutely. Very eager to impress here because I thought 
it, I was actually a bit annoyed because it was like, okay, these two going at it in a wrestling ring, the two proper wrestler wrestling people, that'd be a nice breakup of all the other ball. Oh, it's the ambulance match. I forgot. Right. Okay. So lots of brawling, brawling, brawling. I'm like, I'm sure I've had this already, but they did make up for it. But like I said, just got at it. Mm, I liked it. I, I like, I like that. It, I was intrigued by, cause I dip in and out with some of the, the Creed stuff. I like it sometimes. And sometimes I think ah, I'm not buying it, but I think Julius Creed is a solo guy. I think there's something there, you know? And I th- obviously they do as well because they put him in there with Damon Kemp. He is the more complete creed. He is, isn't he? Out of him and Brutus. Brutai. <laughs> Brutai has <laughs> got longer to go. Um, Bo- booty man creed. <laughs> the promo package beforehand line out the entire history of Diamond yep. Mind. Fantastic storytelling. Julius with his bouncy pumpkins. They were basketballs, weren't they? It was incredible how much they were bouncing. They were fantastic as well. Uh, the wheelchair spot with the stairs sort of hanging over the edge mm. of the ring. Just sort of flying. Was it Damien who was in the chair? I think it was think at the so. time. That was good as well. Um, yeah, Julius, that's why he must have hurt his hands where he was saving the door closing with his actual hands. And it really mm. looked like, I don't know if that was just incredible makeup job on the weekly show, but it really looked like it hurt his hands. He loves his brother, doesn't he? So of course, if uh, if Julius lost, then Brutai would have been sent home. Yep. Well, fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a good match though. Because I was, I was, you know, we're not seeing too much of Martin Kemp, have we? Um, but this was his, his first big, like, you know, I'm here and I'm here to stay yeah. sort of thing. And he, he held up his end of the bargain very well indeed, I thought. He certainly did. And then after the Alba Fire did the thing, the main event, Bron Breaker, the Ilya Dragunov, and JD Mock, don't Google his name, to retain the NXT title. This Mok- is Bron's best match so far. I thought it was uh, Muck Don't, Muck Don't Google Me's best match as well. Oh. Muck Don't Google Me was the... That's going to be hard to say. Yeah, time. Bleach, yeah. Muck Don't Google Me was the star of the show for me. I know Elia was... A, uh, he was involved all the way. He didn't have a single break, did he, Elia? He was involved all the time, yeah. all the way through. But him, Muck Don't Google Me, <laughs> was really good. <laughs> the fact that he was on the outside of the ring while just letting the other two like, do the, all the, the hard work and then rolling in, trying to get a pinfall, rolling back out. Love that part. Love that part. Yeah. Him doing all these fancy moves. Um, what my God, I've got stuff written down here. No, using his massive head was also good. I've got written down here. Who uh, misses? Uh, JD, uh, McDonough, Google me, stopping the referee's count and then the interaction with Elia. Probably the moment of the match for me. I thought it was great. Wonderful. JD is a rubbish character. Yeah. Rubbish, boring, stupid, big head, boring, boring get. But he's a great dance partner for both mm. Elia and Bron Breaker. So... Yeah, um, Bron Briggs at the point now where he can hang with great lads, but he's done things at the level to have a good match with Joe Gacy. Ugh. But uh, and Ilya is Ilya. Yeah. So this was actually a really good mix. It was a really good match. Enjoyed Bron Breaker's long-term story arc of destroying NXT UK. <laughs> yeah, very on the QT. You look at all his pay-per-view victims over the past few <laughs> yeah, months. You're right. All NXT UK guys. <laughs> Bro- he hates the UK. What if Brian's just not doing problems? You know what? I hate the UK. Yeah, that's, I don't that's... think it's a real country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is... Oh, go on. Sorry. So what we're going to say? Nah, someone... Go on, do it, Matthew. Do like, it! Like that YouTuber who thinks that uh, Australia's not real. But I was like, why am I bringing that up? Who's that? It's just some... Oh, yeah. it's a guy who's doing it for a joke. It was, oh. it was a work. But you know when you say something as a joke online and people go, I wish I'd thought, I wish I'd thought of it, to be honest. <laughs> Let's ask Dave Meltzer. Uh, no, there's um, uh, no proof of uh, Australia. Do we think the crowd is slowly <laughs> going off Bron Breaker? Because when he was yeah. posed, uh, I thought there was a few audible little boos here and there. I don't know. The crowds always start off really, really bloody hot in NXT, and then they get paggered. They burn themselves out really quickly. So I don't know if it's that or that the show is still on. There is a weird sort of juxtaposition now with Bron Breaker because he was, he's ostensibly like Vince McMahon's hand-picked superstar for his vision of NXT. And now Triple H has taken over. We're kind of getting back in sort of the work rate era of NXT. And then sort of Bron Breaker is, is physically and sort of metaphorically very much standing out on the horizon because you've got these guys like Break, like JD and uh, Ilya who can put on these incredible matches. And Bron's, Bron's good, mm. but I don't think he's a wrestler like they are. So it does sort of stand out in that mm. sense. I think when he goes to the main roster, I think that will be evened out. But it's it's funny how all of a sudden, Bron, when, when NXT was being repopulated with what Vince saw was the next lot, Bron Breaker fitted in quite well and fitted in like as the leader. But now that's changing... I don't think he's fitting in as well. I think it's going to depend as well. Like, if they bring up the main roster, it's going to, have to be part of a stable. So, he's so going to be on the Batman Brutes, which isn't going to work. So, Brawling Brutes, because he doesn't think uh, UK's a real place. 
or what hit row? Like he's gonna have to go someplace. Get him up. No, I think he'd be fine as a solo guy. I think you. I think you, you have think? him. Yeah, I think you have him sort of mid card to start with solo guy, just mm. running through people. I think you kind of keep his booking fairly to what they're doing with NXT. But I think that'd be more in keeping on Monday Night Raw. I don't think you need to make him as part of a stable. I think have him as his, as his own guy, and just and just give you know Austin Theory. There's a nice little feud to get him started on Monday Night Raw if he goes to Monday Night Raw. Give him his Kavorka back, that's what I say. Because they've stripped it all away from him. It's just like he's the happy NXT champion. I'll fight anyone. Yeah, give him a little bit of... little yeah, bit. Of, give think, the dog a little bit of bite. Right, I think he's <laughs> in this awkward position where, yeah, the NXT UK guys are coming over and there's like, and also Braun. So I think once they've sodded off, they'll have something to do. But right now it's just like, oh, so I am here. Because they did that video package was like the the restaurant viewer on NXT people get, was it a pan phone or was it just them doing it? But they went Braun Break and it went through all his achievements. He was like, he has had a good year. Like, oh, he's had a great yeah. year. Like, there's there's been worse people on top of the tree. But I just think it's funny how he stands. To me, he stands out more now because of this changing mentality in NXT. Yeah, lots of analysis there. Bloody hell! Look uh, at us, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, wrestling. <laughs> Monday Night Raw, you're going to look like Ellsworth. <laughs> Never forget that one. Up the Tamina. The JD opened the show with Dominic saying that Eddie Guerrero was his generation's <laughs> Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> now, look, they mentioned bloody Eddie or in some way either doing the moves every week. I like this, though. Mm. This yeah. is different. And the crowd hated it. AJ Styles and the Good Brothers arrive saying that Dom is more like the James Ellsworth for his generation. And you're like, wasn't expecting him to be mentioned again. But no. They, they mustn't know. Yeah. Is there something to know? Yeah, there is. Yeah. 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 Just to clarify. The wrong one. <laughs> uh, Finn Balor and Carl Anderson have a match. Uh, and what a lovely little match it bloody well was. Yeah, we're going to get to the bit that you guys want to talk about. Got to prove that Carl Anderson is the toughest man in the building. <laughs> and he did. And the crowd were like, yay, we like him. I always like him. <laughs> God, I'd toughest man in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten how much it's like, oh, yeah, he is really good. I can't remember last time I saw the proper singles match because I don't watch New Japan. Uh, but, yeah, like the bits where he's on the rope and then Finn Balor kicks him, he grabs the legs with a punch, 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 we'll still be in the rope. So I'm like, God, he is good. Yeah. He actually does have little bangers. When he's when he's motivated, him and Doc Gallows, when they're motivated. When he's not wrestling great. for New Japan. When he's got the Kizash yeah. brothers. The Kizash. And when the, the lights wrestling. are on brightest and when the, he's got the Kizash. Exactly, yeah. uh, and then Rhea Ripley, while this is happening. Hello, slam. mother. <laughs> Slams Gallows on the outside and low blows Anderson to help Balor win uh, and become the never overweight champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did done it. He's like, I'm going to go black and blue. Sorry, I'll wait these. I won't be the match. I but, tell you, uh, yeah. I, I'm now a believer that Dom's heat's real. This was the week where I, I, it finally clicked for me. Oh, really? Finally, yeah, because I know you've been on the train for a little while. Now, a little, on, I'm on the Dom train. On the Dom train. Um, Stop but it. yeah, <laughs> when he was getting involved, just the audible booze just really loud now and I can't ignore it so yeah Dom's working as in this role with the Judgment Day mm. uh, obviously Rhea slamming and all the stuff in the periphery I thought all the nice little moments with Damien Priest and whatnot. it didn't take away from what was happening in the ring because what was happening in the ring was great it was just a, a nice opening to roll yeah, it was yeah. A great match uh, the, what I enjoyed more though was the promos with Gallows and Anderson backstage the return of Sour Boy, everybody's favourite yeah everyone's really excited <laughs> <laughs> there's people in this office who legitimately like him Jack Atkins looking at you Aiden Gibbons looking at you they Don't. do like Sal, oh, the stars are here. Yeah, dude, I never got him. Yeah. Body slams are my love language. It was my favorite line from yeah, yeah. Uh, cut from Luke Gallows this week. He's good with the ladies. <laughs> but they do. But this, I think, the promo kind of teases they're going to maybe bring a lady in to mm. to counteract Rhea Ripley. And I'm hoping that it's just Carl Anderson with a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll have to. I mean, the New Japan wrestlers don't know about booking women. <laughs> oh, he did it. <laughs> he did it. The Miz claims that Dexter Loomis has targeted him because he's chose to mentor Champa instead of Loomis. Now he's kidnapped Champa for revenge. Johnny Gargano arrives and says that Champa's just injured. He texted him not long ago. How, that, you, you're talking bollocks. He wants Miz to tell the truth be, about Loomis's motives, but Miz refuses and has no idea what he's talking about. Then our truth arrives. The look, lad. Say his name and he appears. <laughs> I believe in wrong killings. <laughs> 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 wow. That was nice. Thank you. <laughs> he has a match with Miz and wins after a hooded man distraction from the crowd. It's Dexter. Oh, that's Johnny Gargano. <laughs> He's got all the banter, hasn't he? Johnny Gargano these days. Uh, all, will, what, he, are you, what are you groaning no, at? No, 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 no. I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been on the acceptance train this week for one week ticket. <laughs> but there were four or five segments, depending on how you slice it, of Johnny Gargano this week. And he is not at that level yet. Oh! <laughs> Listen, the crowd pops. It's like, oh, he's back. 
Uh, ooh, he's still new. Yeah. We'll That's what there. I mean. It was surprising. Like, you're not, okay, well, you're getting five segments. It's really interesting, though, this. And I'm not saying that Go ironically, on. because tell me what you think you know, Gargano says to me, or Miz says to Gargano. And then Gargano's like, why are you asking that to me if you don't think there's anything to know? That made sense in my head. Yeah. Uh, it's a poker yeah. game. What you got? Ah, you got. Pa -pa poker face, Lady Gaga. Uh -huh. um, I think there's some sort of insurance scam being happening between Dexter and Miz, quite clearly. And we're going to find out Ooh. what that was next week. Because um, it's all about Miz being keeping a secret. He reckons the secret is jealousy because he uh, uh, he picked, this is Miz, picked Loomis and not Gargano. Uh, sorry, not Champa. Yeah, no, pick Champ. Shut go up, on, Ross. Go on, know, one more time, one more time. Know, he picked one guy, not the other guy. That's Who gives a bollocks? Um, yeah. But the, the secret is clearly that Jason Jordan is his son. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we pay this off. <laughs> if in doubt, Jason Jordan is your son. <laughs> so Miz and Kurt Angle, <laughs> they had a good old night. And then Jason <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> the great miracle came up. <laughs> <laughs> Candice LeRae has a sit down interview with Kathy Kelly, which is also what Tom needs after this. <laughs> <laughs> the damage Katal interrupt and beat her down. Hang on, is this AEW? It was a brutal murder. <laughs> Certainly was. It was. That's all I've got to say about yeah, that. Yeah. That's yeah. The, the nothing else to add there, Moving isn't it? Backstage, Elias warns Riddle not to interrupt him again with his bongos. The Alpha Academy confront them. Setting up, setting up a match between Elias and Gable later on. Elias wins the match, but is beaten down afterwards until Riddle bravely makes the save. Right, Elias where is are back. We? Hooray! He's a baby face. Oh no. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I thought that the little promo gave like hints of heelishness to Riddle's baby face, where he's like, if this happens again, uh, I'm not going to be so nice. It's like a. Ooh. I thought he was trying to be the straight <laughs> man because Riddle needs a straight man to his I'm dumb as hell man. And yeah. it's like, we'll have Elias. And you're like, well, that's a great use of his talent. Yeah. This feels like a bit of a drop down the card for Matt Riddle. Yeah. Yes, it does. It yeah. does. Yeah. Elias, Alpha Academy. <laughs> yeah. It's what well, Gable's put down of Blink 180. Shoosh. It's the sort of content I'm here for. Fantastic <laughs> wordplay. Yes. Uh, Gable once again taking the piss in the match with Elias with the map based stuff. The little fakey which caused Elias to go forward, I thought was off. I've never seen that mm. done before like that. Yes. Really oh, good. and um, when he went for the moonsault and got his boot Yeah. Up. Like oh, that. he's so, he's he's still in this role where he's making like other people look better than they are. Yeah. I hope this leads to Gable being used up the card himself because I think he's got everything apart from the size. But I hope that doesn't matter now with Triple H. Yeah. Because he's got a little winky. Um, <laughs> he hasn't really. I, I, don't, I don't know. He might do. Uh, I thought this was Elias' best match as well. <laughs> His bet because I saw a thing on Twitter like it was like from 2017 and Elias is on Raw. He's been on Raw for like f over five years, and I thought this was his best match by a, a long way. Oh no, 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 he had the oh was that pay per view? I think were against Rollins. Maybe, maybe I can't remember. I've got a terrible memory. Apart from that banger, <laughs> it's up there, yeah. Because uh, right now Gable could have a good match with even Puppet Jack. So uh, Seth Rollins cost Mustafa Ali a match against Austin Theory. Uh, after Seth Rollins is starting feuds with Dana Brooke, I guess. Seth beats Ali down afterwards and throws him in the crowd, but Ali fights back and stands tall. This was like Undertaker versus Sid <laughs> with Shawn Michaels on oh, commentary. Oh, was that Shawn Michaels? WrestleMania 12. 12, yeah. Went, yeah, yeah, yeah. went blind there for a second. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, 13. 13. Was it 13? Yeah, yeah, 13. God, went, yeah, yeah. Well, I was mixing too it's much It's been a together. long podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just because Rollins going, <laughs> for 10 minutes while the wrestling was going on yeah. was really quite distracting, I thought. Um, it took away from a nice match. Ali's brought the house, uh, the live event gear to Raw. Yep. Looks fantastic. And it's like a Pumas kit from Amer uh, Mexico, oh. Dan, that mm. football club with the Puma thing on their bellies. Um, and yeah, they're trying to get as much sympathy on Ali as possible at the moment. Is it working? I'm not too sure. Find out next week. It's a slow start, I think, you know. But the thing they're building up by having it against people like Rollins and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you're right. I think if Rollins showed up midway through the match, I'd have a lot more impact. Yeah. But Theory is just dead in the water. So it was nice that they called back to the lockdown because Rollins was like, hi, I used to be, used to be my little boy. Because <laughs> um, obviously they were the, 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 the disciples during the lockdown bit, yeah. weren't they? Sorry, everybody, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was all right. I just thought Rollins distracted a bit too much. Yeah. Backstage, Gargano is rushing to check on Candice, but is interrupted by JBL and Baron Corbin. JBL tells Gargano to show him respect, because if this was the Attitude Era, he'd be carrying his bags. <laughs> uh, it's JBL's whole stick. Remember the Attitude Era? Yeah. 
Yeah. Where Hornswoggle was. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said last week. Yeah. I did enjoy yeah, the banter here, right? Calling them MC Hammerpants. Gargano calling JBL MC Hammerpants. Top tier. MC Hammer. Older than the attitude. <laughs> the old man stuff he was referencing was more hip and up to date than what Gagano was saying. And then he's, he's going to Baron Corbin saying, hey, oh, what's your name this week? Is it Happy? Is it Baron? Is it Constable? Is it other one? I don't know. what King, that's the one. Yeah, good bar, good, 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 good bars from Johnny Gargano. It was okay. Call him Johnny Bar 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 but Johnny did Gargano Dances. get to Candice in the end? Because he was nah. rushing to check on his wife and go, oh, actually, I, my wife's just been beaten up, but I'll just take the mick out of you two for a bit. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm actually F fine. What was it? I'm a bit <laughs> like that sometimes. I walk, in, I, walk into the, I walk into the living room and I'll start, I need to unload the dishwasher. And then I'll start petting the cat. And then I'll then I'll send a text and I'll go, leave the living room. I'll go, dishwasher. The, the cat... I feel like Gargano has that effect. And the cat goes in the dishwasher. Yes. It's already <laughs> happened twice. <laughs> They're fine, by the way, when you put them in the dishwasher. Johnny dances with JBL's hat on during the match. Uh, so more J- banter, more <laughs> banter, Gargano. Such a bit of a banter, was... Brie. Johnny Gargano. You're we'll be... just a prisoner of banter ban. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that one. oh, for good reason. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where are you going on your holidays, banter by Jean? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like one of them temperature checks that you put on people. With a I think some people are yeah, cold. I think I think some people are right in what they say. I am a bit of a speed bump on this podcast, aren't I? <laughs> You're a lovely speed bump. Uh, JBL trips him on the apron, possibly after hearing all the bloody things you two have been saying. <laughs> uh, into a Corbin victory, yay! I guess whatever. I like the finish. That's all I liked about this match because after last week's really long match against Dolph Ziggler where this new Baron Corbin showed that he has nothing new apart from a fallaway slam. That's the only new thing. He he had another long match here <laughs> and once again showed the only difference is a fallaway slam. Yeah. See, if this was truly I, like the what? return of the Attitude Era, like these would be like two or three minute matches yeah. just full of nonsense. Yeah. When, when the highlight, when the crowd's highest reaction is one, Jimmy goes, it's great to be here. Yay! In the stinking city. Ah! <laughs> You got us. That's it. And then everyone sits down. The actual other highlight that the, the home crowd couldn't hear was uh, Kevin Patrick annoying Graves deeply by yelling, ring around the roses. <laughs> yeah. Have you hit the deep six? He's oh. like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> Nothing says modern wrestling. Shut like Shamrock. Like a song Jimmy about the plague. <laughs> I felt like that's it. the attitude era. Song about the yeah, yeah, the, from the, yeah, the, the attitude era, home of the plague. Well, JBL's the boogeyman. Enough, JBL's old enough to remember that when the plague was a thing. So. <laughs> but uh, even if these matches, you know, because that's two in a row now. If they were just even five minutes shorter, I think it would do Corbin a lot more benefit than what it's doing at the. Because people, mm-hmm. like, you can audibly hear the crowd going, "Oh, still on, isn't it's it?" It's the long beat down, and then it just yeah. sort of just does what we've seen for the last. Can JBL talk again? The last eight years? Yeah. Six, yeah. seven years? Whatever well, there's it's a been. guest commentator. Can you skip the bit where something happens with him? Cheers. Cool. Do you remember when Corbin was in NXT all those years ago? Oh. And it was him and Bull Dempsey. And the story oh. was that, they, that Corbin so had come good. down, so beat a guy dead quick. And as he was heading to the back, Bull Dempsey would come up <laughs> for his match and try and beat him and doing it quicker. With the crowd going, one, yeah, second, the crowd would two, count. Yeah. Threes. That's great. I love that. That was so good. What a great use of Corbin. Yeah. Do that more, but don't count. But like have just quick, <laughs> short matches. And Corbin, what does it improve? Corbin beat Bull a few times. And then he just had, again, the greatest promo to actually go nowhere. So it's just like, I've won a Golden Gloves uh, t- title, champ, whatever. Uh, I've played in the NFL. I've done all this. Blah, 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 blah. Dot, dot, dot. I don't care about these indie guys. <laughs> don't care about Ring Who of Honor. Who was it he shouted out? He's like, go back to, to Ring, Ring of Honor. Honor. Apollo Crews, I think. It, he hadn't even been to Ring he of Honor. He one, <laughs> one or two matches, but he wasn't the Ring of Honor dude, like, by any means. But it was like, yeah, whatever. Go back to the indie leagues. It's like, that's what a great character. Yeah. And they never did anything with it because they were like, you could come on the main roster and just be a biker wolf man, <laughs> I guess. Then he used to talk crap about Undertaker on Talking Smack. That, when that show was amazing, it was like, well, how do you scare the Undertaker? Well, it's like, well, I'll, I'll beat him. Why do you beat him? Because the world needs ditch diggers. <laughs> oh. 
I hate these indie guys. <laughs> yeah, <it's> indie, uh, <laughs> the indie taker. <laughs> anyway, backstage, Miz gives Gargano a get well soon card for Candice. He wants to make up with Johnny and tells things, sorry, talk things through like men. Johnny just tells him to tell the truth about Loomis. Ooh. Yeah, what's been going on? We don't know. MVP cuts a pre-match promo on four enhancement boys before almost beats them in a handicap match. And yeah, again, like Kevin Patrick. My God, this is the biggest thing ever. Like, the war of the world. <laughs> it's all new for Kev, though, so I get it. I love the fact... Godfather Part 2. I, like, right, I love the fact that we were trying to show how big Omos was when he did the thing with the hand on the guy's head. Oh, it, then he moved his hand closer to the camera so the guy's head was further uh, away. Uh, <laughs> What's bigger, the thing that's closer, the thing that's further yeah, away? He's like, hey, you think this guy's big? Yeah, we get it. Well, let me tell you, his hand is this, his other thing is real big. You know what I'm <laughs> oh, we get it, we get it, we get it. Anyway, I tell you, Omos is definitely getting better, though. I think he moves yeah. around the ring a lot better than he did even at WrestleMania. Think about that Bobby Lashley match, because he was rotten there, I thought. <laughs> Bless him. No, I agree. It can't be, it can't be easy to be in that size and doing the wrestling, but he's definitely getting a lot more. Because your feet's too big. <laughs> <laughs> just accentuate the positives. Just, like, keep yeah, his dead. Out. His... <laughs> just to go back to what you were saying there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told to accentuate the positives. <laughs> Live in Saudi Arabia, Crown Jewel. He will get his knob out. <laughs> Forget the match. Just the promise of Omos. Come, on, come on, we want to see it. Come on. Match graphic that just has him, uh, eggplant emojis all around. After, Omos gets his knob out. After he does it, all he hears, Will! <laughs> <laughs> the big show's <laughs> returned. <laughs> We're going to have a knob off. <laughs> Make sure you turn your phone like that. <laughs> <take> it all <laughs> in. Ah, swing it. He calls out this knob, swing it in the wind. <laughs> Wait, oh, sorry. Uh, Rhea Ripley has stopped following Paul Holmes. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, Rhea, your knob is definitely bigger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we could add to that. In Saudi Arabia, Rhea Ripley comes out and just chops both the knobs off. <laughs> yes! Use them as, like, battering rams to hit Dom with. <laughs> JBL's going, it's a knob off, Michael. <laughs> just like the other two oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of the attitude here. If you heard any of this bit, it's because the editor fell asleep. <laughs> it's fine. Leave it all in. Dobbs it all. In the main event, Bailey beats Bianca Belair in a non title match thanks to interference from Nikki Cross. Yeah. What, what are, are you doing, doing here? here? No energy after all that. Nob I'm stuff. the brightest star in the galaxy. I don't know why I've put that voice on for that. <laughs> that was a gimmick before she went there. She was, it was good. At the bell, <laughs> Nikki comes back to the ring and beats Bailey down as well, just because. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bailey and Michael Belair, for having a wonderful little match on a very underwhelming episode of Raw. Thank you. Appreciate your hard work. Um, Nikki Cross, yes. finally not doing the ASH gimmick anymore. Hallelujah. It's more like A-R-S-E, if you ask me. Oh, oh. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Will I breathe? I like I like Nikki Cross getting rid of the ASH stuff and just being Nikki Cross again. I think I think Wild Eyed Nick has got a secret is still my favorite Nikki Cross mm. of all. I like uh, that, that for me. I I got back to a promo with Alistair Black on NXT when uh, when Alistair Black got beaten up and he was trying to find out who did it. But Nikki's like I know, oh. and they're doing the thing in the ring. And it's, is she? I think she, I seem to remember that she slaps him. Or something like that. Like she's just wild, and I like that Nikki Cross. Yeah. If we can channel a bit of that energy into this one, uh, let's not go down the route that Ross and I talked about on Monday. The Southern Belle, <laughs> Nikki Cross, oh, just a on. Southern girl oh. from Scotland. When she had that weird yeah, entrance yeah. theme for no reason. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. The, the the superhero stuff just wasn't landing. It was a nice idea, and we know we heard obviously it was her idea, and she worked with uh, Rob. Rob Man, uh, Rob, uh, Rob, the, Rob Downey. Rob Downey. Got there eventually to, to put Excellent together the artwork. Excellent artist is Rob Downey. Mm. If his commissions are open normally, I, I don't think he's opening them this Christmas, but uh, the last couple of years, he's <laughs> made me some really lovely Christmas cards, says Rob Downey. Like personalized Christmas cards. He's keeping those commissions closed, eh? I don't know. He might, I don't know. For the last time I heard he was keeping his commissions closed, but when he had them <laughs> open, uh, I lined his pockets with silver and he did me some wonderful personalized Christmas cards. He's excellent. Gone! Uh, <laughs> all over. Oh, no. But no, so uh, thank you, Rob. You're excellent. Yeah. yeah. Where was it going with that? But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, she's trying something different as well. She's going to be more like a human. Because Nikki, you know, back in the day wasn't a human. It was a vessel of a human, but it was more like a... Be careful here, Ross. <sighs> Sanity and Nikki, what was she more like? Yeah. A Madden. A Madden. We'll go with Wild. That. Wild. A wild we thing. Wild thing. E, this podcast is wild. long. 
Nick the match between Bianca Pat and Bailey, though, I thought was good. It was. Good pop and snap, and all those words Triple H would say back in the day. The Bailey belly off the apron was, uh, sorry, the middle rope was lovely. Mm. Uh, I like the, the bit at the start where Bianca's doing all these perfect flips, and then Bailey just goes right in her face, all for that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, the re-deb- I like the way the re-debut was done as well. Like, she did the dive off the top, and you couldn't see who it was. Yep. The commentators are losing their bananas. <laughs> Kevin Patrick's nearly having a crisis at ringside. <laughs> it was, oh, 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 what was it? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and then Corey's like, it's her, you idiot. Bless him. <laughs> so like that one, the really old priest from Father Ted. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Father, crazy bastard, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's a shame because I remember they, she changed her attire. So instead of being blue and yellow, it was black and yellow. And I thought, oh, they're going to go with like the dark Nikki. Yeah. It, it returns, begins, whatever, and stuff. Instead, all she did was argue with a do drop and then yeah. that was it. Where's she at? Get her back. Get over well. the loss. It's like, yeah. where's Nikki? Oh, there she is. Well, she <laughs> pretend now, won't she? NXT Citizen Script. <laughs> <laughs> In the opening match, Nikita Leons and Zoe Stark beat the Cowie but, uh, girls to become the new tag team champions. But the referees restart the match due to a mixed tag. Due to a mixed tag. Missed tag, I guess. Missed, yeah. And the Cowie girls retain. I was pleasantly surprised by this. Because uh, yet the right in the start they do that thing you see in lots of matches now where they oh feeling each other out blah 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 and then uh, what's the name did a flip Leon's did a front flip and she, she turned around and I thought it was going to be like you know uh, Osprey or Ricochet and they go ha ha and instead Chance just went <laughs> I'm like yes I always love it when they go I'm not going to pose yeah and just hit her with her arm K- Caden Carter was one of the most improved wrestlers in the. I'll say. She was really, really good in this match here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Cowie Girls did almost like a silly string, the private party too, but a bit different. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it was different, but it was. That was sensational. I thought Zoe Stark showed she was a level above everybody else in the match. She yeah, was really she's good. Phenomenal. But I'm it, it might just be me, but I'm just not a fan of these finishes where the referee comes out because if you're gonna, dusty finish, isn't it? If you're gonna do it for one one of these matches, you need to do it for all of them. Like when mm. a heel cheats to win, why is the referee not out there from the back? Because it just but gives they you... see those legal tags. They'll spot them from a mile yeah, away. It just gives and, them... uh, I don't know if this is a deliberate thing or just because of the commentary. You know, you have to think with two minds in these things. They went, well, we're restarting it because unlike the NFL, we get it right. And you're like, mm. it's wrestling. Wait, no, they you send out concussed people as well, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, yeah, but then like the only get the two count from the Spanish fly and the 450 neck breaker. It's like, God, these. This was actually a really good match. Yeah. And it also helps, like I said before, on the NXT Halloween Havoc, the crowd starts off NXT really hot. They burn themselves out, the silly billies, but <laughs> they always are like, Aah! you know, if they had almost doing his uh, crown jewel thing here, I don't think we would hear, <laughs> being like, like, you have to put your hands over your ears. Uh, Ooh, that feels a little mind, mind you, even though I didn't like the, the bit with the referees, it did give the match a good boot up the arse. And yeah. it, didn't, it didn't really need a boot up the arse, but it gave it one. It was... I'd actually say that the other booking helped it, yeah. this case, because the crowd were already going banana. Mm. And, uh, that's what that guy from Mick Foley Books used to say, isn't it? Pat Patterson. Was it Pat Pat- yeah, it was Pat Patterson. Yeah, that's right. Was the crowd, went, the crowd, crowd went banana. <laughs> yeah, one. One banana. <laughs> <Not two>. <laughs> <laughs> it's Quincy, Big Quincy, isn't it, from Halloween Havoc? Oh, they, yeah, that, there is a crowd, yeah. and there's the banana. We see a vignette where a mysterious figure, Lajakovic, burns the T-bar mask and says, he's not coming for retribution, he's coming for justice. Is it justice? Just us? <laughs> oh, what do we do? Yeah, got a private viewing by the looks of us, if he's coming just for us. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that was, yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Wesley cuts a babyface promo, celebrating his North American title win. Grayson Waller interrupts and complains about losing to Apollo Crews. But they're both interrupted by our truth. Do it again. Say his name and he appears. I believe in Ron Killings <laughs> and Joe Hendry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who owns that gimmick and the song? And it's wonderful. Who was on North <laughs> Wrestling on IWTV. He was. Uh, he thinks Halloween Havoc is today, which you almost can't blame him for because it is closer to Halloween. Than Halloween <laughs> Havoc. Yeah. Just, just, just saying, lads. <laughs> uh, Waller tries to attack Truth, but Truth and Lee team up to send him out the ring. Uh, Truth shows up It's happy Halloween He likes Waller's British accent Yeah And Waller says I'm Australian And the crowd chant No he isn't <laughs> The bunch you get Love you uh, And then we're getting Truth and Waller next week Oh it's a prove it match It's big Which is quite exciting So have they just remembered That Truth's on the contract there Yeah Because yeah. yeah. making a prove <laughs> wrong and... it's, it's been an interesting Few weeks for Truth So they they Internally They formed a tag team Between our Truth And Shelton Benjamin 
They had a match on main event. Shelton Benjamin sold the company. Yeah. They had a match on main event where they did like a backstage promo on main event where Shelton Benjamin said like, you know, I've been around for ages and, you know, I've had all this achievement and I'm just going to be forgotten as like this comedy foil and, you know, we need to think about changing that. And Artrude looked very serious. And I thought, oh, maybe they're going to do like a new serious thing with like these veteran ta- this veteran tag team who's out for like one last roll yeah. of the dice. And then Artrude came out on Raw and was like, I'm Truth, yeah, yeah, yeah. macaroni and cheese, and then he's a Halloween <laughs> hammer going, It's Halloween. Yeah. Oh, so I guess that's been forgotten about. Oh, I didn't even see that promo because I saw people talk about main not event. Not many people like, did. Uh, Unfortunately, it's main events, and not a lot of people see main event. It's like when like Ryback Baxel split up and had that really surprisingly good promo where they're like, Maybe it's just time to go our separate ways. We don't need to hate each other. Well, let's go respectfully and we'll move on and think about these happy days together. And you're like, this is on main event. Yeah. Oh, it was main event. Superstars, maybe. They, one of the it, was, shows. it was one of those. They they do drop the odd bit of interesting storyline on those Every shows. 10 years, there's yeah. a really good promo. That birthed my favorite right back, that did. The show, the pre-show stopper when he had his little black trunks on like Stone Cold and yeah. the big white belts. He was like pre, yeah. pre-show stopper on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he had that. It's like, right, you know what? I'm going out soon. Uh, I was our bangers with Kalisto. Yeah. What a weird little time that was. Anyway. I'll tell you what, I was thinking initially here with Grace and Wall. I was like, you've lost the match, but you're in the title picture. But then we obviously we learn later on about Apollo Crews and that. So it makes sense now. But then he's, I think he's a fantastic basic heel. I mean this with the utmost respect. Grace and Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's that. sitting there. I was like, how in your right mind can you say to Wesley, all you did was climb that bloody ladder, you flaming galah, when he died off one, didn't he? He failed to win that I match. I still can't believe he <laughs> wasn't injured for that crazy move. Do you oh, remember that, Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, jeez. It's, it's basic, but it works. And I was like, if I was a granny at NXT 2.0, I'd be swinging my yeah. handbag for Grayson while I was no tomorrow. Plus, wait, wait. Hey, what is it like? If our truth came out and did that promo, like, I just want to be a serious wrestler and not be less comedic. And Grayson Waller's like, I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> I'm trying to put on this wacky accent. <laughs> <laughs> no good days left for you, crikey pal, whatever, stone of crows. Mind you, I think this is the most conclusive evidence yet that there are plants in the NXT crowd. Because the chance of uh, he lost, he lost, he. I thought I was watching like 50 50 or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Something like It just felt like a, a children's TV audience to me. <laughs> You tapped out will always work better than he lost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bloody hell, we saw the return of You Can't Wrestle on Raw for Baron Corbin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of returns, that's just our truth. For... Down your drinks. Uh, so, yeah, and also Apollo Crews, no more mysterious stuff. The druids came and he unleashed the substance of Undertaker out of him. <laughs> He's used all that up. The substance of Undertaker. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it's huge oh. imagination. Oh. Yeah, come. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, his bloody eyes stopped bleeding and he's back to being normal. It's one's an XT title shot now. But in the promo you just referenced there, he gave away spoilers because he can still see into the future. This is still a gimmick for Apollo Crews. He said that Bron Breaker's coming back next week and he can see it, he says. He's had a vision. He's going to win the NXT title. So like in, in terms of these segments now, between uh... between now and when Bron Breaker and Apollo Crews have their match, we might as well not watch because he's given us the spoiler there. Apollo Crews can see in the future, remember. So wait... I... <laughs> Can we honestly say that? No, he's actually going to like win the title he next said, week. Because, yeah, see, because he's got the clear point gimmick. I can see it. I've had a vision. I'm winning the title. It's happening. He's Apollo Crews wrong. is your next champion. What happens if he doesn't win? And he's just like, <laughs> well, what was that? Oh, that was... He should have said, I have a vision of me holding up the NXT title. Because <laughs> then you could have had some... You could have been a bit more creative with that and have him in the match hold up the title before he hits Bron Breaker with it. Yeah. Like, you could have yeah. done it that way if you wanted to. Anyway, it's for nothing because Bron Breaker's going to walk back next week. And they go, have you heard about this challenge from Apollo Crews? <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard about Apollo Crews. Wait, is that Oliver Carter from NXT UK? <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what if it's like, does he change his name to hide from him? <laughs> right. <laughs> NXT UK Hunter. If it's like, uh, Disney's Hercules, it goes, you will be NXT champion. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Unless. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> if you see a man named Come, you <laughs> must run. <laughs> What happens? What happens? Come back. <laughs> what? Well, is something good happen? <laughs> well, I'll stop the chance, I guess. Sorry about that, Tom. You're always spitting. Tom. <laughs> it's quite all right. <laughs> right, sorry, try. Uh, with Quincy Elliott in her corner, Shotty Blackheart beats Lash Legend. Uh, both both oh. walked away unharmed, and we must see that as a positive. Quincy's got a director's chair he's taken yet another thing from Goldust we're just like gold paint away now and a wig (laughs) and Fujini 
Booker, Booker T got some grief, a little bit of grief online after this because Booker T on commentary has just been, I don't get Quincy Elliott. I don't get it. <laughs> I was just, it's, I don't, this ain't clicking with me, lads. And he even went like, I had a mate called Goldust, liked him, not getting this. So everybody's gone, oh, Booker T's a homophobe then. And Booker T's got to go on the Hall of Fame podcast and go, no, I'm not, I just don't like that character. And uh, I'll do a story with him, but not to appease anybody, but just to help things along. And, and fair, like, I think, you know, I'm not in a position to really make a decision on whether he was being homophobic or not, but it certainly just sounds like Booker's just gone, I don't get the character. The issue I have with that isn't so much like whether you get the character or not. On commentary, you're kind of there to sell the products. You're kind of there to sell what people are seeing. And I don't know if it goes against a bit when when you've got this guy, called, you've got Booker T, who's like, oh yeah, that's great. Oh, that's great. Oh, shucky ducky quack quack. That's great. That's great. That's great. Oh, he's a bit crap. <laughs> like, I think that sort of detracts somewhat. So I th- I've not got an issue whether or not he likes... You know, like, he's a, I, I think as a commentator, your job is to get characters over. I think. Is that maybe yeah. I'm wrong? I'm just going, going oh, I'm getting this. But Booker, like any respected wrestler who's known a lot, does have a bit of an ego about him. Not saying it's a bad thing. Bret Hart for life. Um, <laughs> you're supposed to have a bit of an ego. So if you, you think you should start to say stuff and go, well, yeah, I'm a wrestler. Okay. Show me. Mm. Let, let's see Quincy Elliott do something. Mm. He's at rings that hasn't done much the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I'd say that. I, I think. It's a bit. There's a way you can say that without it sounding like. Yeah, it's to just like judge him. Went, why don't you like? Why don't you like him? Because he's a big gay. Okay, then it's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Just the judge of being over folks who doesn't like him because he hasn't he's done so at all. It's like, all right. There's a way uh, you I say it. Get, it's a weird thing. He's getting more criticism for that than he is for calling Grayson Waller Nathan Waller and Halloween <laughs> Havoc. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you hate Australians? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, Booker T. <laughs> at least didn't call him Rick Waller. <laughs> <laughs> What's Rick up to these days? I'm not too sure. Last time I saw him, he was singing I'll Always Love You in front of a fireplace. 20 years ago. Oh, jeez. Oh, he had a big strop, <laughs> did he, on Celebrity Fat Club? Did he? He kicked off on that. Yeah, it was around the same time. God, I was trying to think, like, who the hell is Rick? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pop, Pop, got him. Pop right, Idol. Right. Yeah, he won, yeah, won. His gimmick was he was the big... Was he the one who was he kept on winning because people who didn't like the show kept on nominating for him because they wanted this there's big, been a few, big useless dude. There's been Am a I few like right? that. It's been a while he since was all right. Like no, you're, no, I mean, I mean, Wagner, not not no, not, no, not, not, like, not no, come. No. Oh my god, um, the star of Rise Wrestling. Yeah, that, that's but, uh, him. Yeah, that's no, him. no, no. I, I swear, Rick Waller. The whole thing was because I wasn't paying that much attention to it even back then. Was that? People who didn't like the show went, if you've seen the state of this guy, yeah, we want him on. And then Prince was like, no, no. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I can't. Do you remember that, Dan? I, yeah, I remember. I remember Do you remember what we're talking about? Yeah, the guy from Popeye. Yeah, was that the thing with him? Celebrity factor. Right? Yeah, but then they're not, they're not, the other people like vote for him to stay on the show because they didn't I like the show. I can't remember they voted out of spite. They did, yes. Dan remembers what I'm talking about. Mm. Dan's always been the best dude. <laughs> <laughs> Another pick. Don't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can't remember where they voted. Oh, I'm sure he thought he's dead or worse. I mean, oh no, he's not dead. What, Richard, what Rick Waller. happened to Gillingham singer Rick Waller? Someone main event in the I mean, there was. Um, are, you, are you bringing a picture of of? Um, there he is, there with the Rick purple Waller. hair. There he is. He forges a new career as an exam invigilator. Oh, after man. losing his singing voice. Oh, bless him. What a career to have, walking up and down the aisles, just going. The children. <laughs> That's what ours did. It was really distracting. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> stealing pens like you. <laughs> I remember uh. taking a really noisy pencil sharpener into an exam because I'm old enough to have had to do an exam with a flipping pencil. And it's one of those like ones where you grind on it. So obviously when it's really not not in the young person's way, grind <laughs> on it. <laughs> Just, not, a, yeah. not a weed way. So sharpen my yeah, all that way. <laughs> it's a weird way to sharpen your pencil, that. It sounds like um, Conan doing his opening promo. <laughs> so you stick it, you put it in the little hole and then you turn the handle and <laughs> it's great in an empty hall of exam people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How'd you end all of them? Do you nick it from a classroom? I got it from I bought it from partners, the stationers. Again, I'm really too old. old for me. That <laughs> too old. Partners, I'm just I'm not partners, one. the station. I was a teen G. What was it? Guy, Concord Stationery in Worcester. <laughs> in my big shop at Concord Stationery in Worcester. I doubt it's there anymore. <sighs> it's ne- it's near a part. It's near it's near a street in Worcester that is called No Word of a Lie, the Shambles. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in Worcester, like Tramps Nightclub, it's just oh that's fine. That's just what it's called. It's a nightclub called Tramps and a street called <laughs> the Shambles. Like, f- oh, it's fine. No one says it as a problem. Go for a pint in the shambles. All right. <laughs> it's true. 
fun little tour around Worcester. And every year, <laughs> the statue of Edward Elgar has a uh, traffic cone put on his head at Christmas. Oh. That's how Glasgow Christmas, loves that. That's how I got introduced to ICW was the, the one in the guy on the horse in Glasgow. Yeah. Having a cone put on his head by the ICW people in that documentary. As is tradition. Yeah. Mm. Well, the council kind of are like, no, we don't like this. And we're like, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> Brutus Creed, Matthew. Oh, yes. Uh, Creed, <laughs> thank you, Phil. Back to uh, the wrestling. The Creed brothers arrive at a Brute match with Damon Kemp because prior to this dip, he says if he beat him in the ambulance match, he drove all the way to the hospital, I guess, or wherever ambulances go home when they need to sleep. Um, then he would come back on NXT the following week and he would have five minutes. However, Damon Kemp, the Lion Get, appears on the Tron and reveals that he isn't cleared to wrestle. But don't worry, lads. Still got you your five minutes of pain. The Creed clearly haven't watched much wrestling because they were like, oh, he lied to us. He completely ignoring that last bit and we started talking and went, well, let me tell you something, brother. And then, oh, bump, out of nowhere, Sanga and Veer attack the Creed from behind and beat them down with Sanga looking a bit conflicted to begin with as he holds him open for Via to just kick the poo out of him. And he went, ah, sod it. And then started beating the <laughs> hell out of both of them. And then because they're both wearing the biggest suit you've ever seen, they beat the hell out of them and do what you always have to do after a Bond film. And that's adjust the suit afterwards. Like two badasses. They look the dog's bollocks, they I thought. They really do. Yeah. I like them. It's a, shame. it's a shame for Sanger because I love this gimmick of being that nice guy backstage. But now Via is, I guess, like the Chavo Guerrero of the family. He's just like, oh, I have to, <laughs> I have to misbehave with him around. Like, but And then Ivy and I showed up and went, Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> like an alarm clock. I like to tell they were both a little bit like trepidatious of Ivy Nile. That's the effect. <laughs> of, oh, I oh, don't want to mess with you. Um, but I thought Brutus, as I said earlier, he's the creed with uh, more to go. I thought the promo was a bit like, I don't think the people were with him. It's a bit like when he, he brought it home with his little closing line. I forget what the closing line was. The crowd didn't go, way. The one just went, like, there was a, a few um, seconds of silence and then they yeah. went, oh, he's finished. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're still, you know, they're just showing passion, not like not like LA Knight style hitting the catchphrases that were still like, yeah, we're, the, we're really good and this and that. Blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, you're right, you are. Well mm. Has wrestling really yeah. uh, twisted my brain so much that I saw this go down and then he appeared on the screen? I thought, Brutus is just going to batter Julius. I kind of, which I thought would that, make sense according to history. Yeah, I thought, yeah, there you go. Sorry, I said every week. It too. It's going to happen. I thought that's what was going to happen there. They go, hey, I'm not here, but don't worry. You got yourself a match. Bang! Oh, the creeds have exploded. I thought that was what that was going to happen. Wait, do you think when they do it, he's going to turn around and go, et tu, Brute? <laughs> they, they better do. It better be a Halloween toga party. <laughs> to be fair, would it make sense now that... <laughs> they are just like WrestleMania 9. Yes. <laughs> Wait I, to WrestleMania 9 to do it. I wasn't clever enough to do... <laughs> I wasn't clever enough to do Latin. Is it Latin? Jewish and Brutus and all that sort of stuff? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Latin. Well, you did Latin. You did, I wasn't clever enough. You did it in English as well. Yeah, I didn't do it in English either. English. We read of mice and men and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, but, like, neither, but what Sense, old. Would it make sense I now did. that Julius has saved Brutus? Sorry, things. Did you actually do Latin? Yeah. No. I did Latin. <laughs> Jack Jack did as well. What? Yeah. I thought that was just something that we got rid of. We, like, we, 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 I could have in GCSE, but I was like, I don't want really? none of that jelly now. A mower master man. A very useful thing. A mower master man. Like... man. I, I, uh, I, I know, you know, he, she knows, we know, they know. They Vinny, Vinny, know. Vinci. Vinny, <laughs> Vinny. Yeah. I came yeah, on the yeah, store, so I returned to the main roster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, did, it, I did Latin. As would, it sense, would, would it, would it make sense in that law now that Julius has saved Brutus for Brutus to turn on Judas? Uh, Judas, Julius. Uh, Julius has saved Brutus, now Brutus would turn on Julius. Does that make sense in that sort yeah, of Yeah, Brutus to attack Julius, yeah. 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 So there you go, they've set yeah. that up now. But that actually would be funny. You say you fought for my life, you idiot. Yeah. It's all right, I've got my new partner now after Judas turned on me. Uh, Judas! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> To keep on going along with, gimmick, that. with famous traders. So he shows up with uh, Andy Cole <laughs> next week. <laughs> Never let it down. And then the match ends when Vesuvius Bastard. erupts. <laughs> <laughs> and they all get What's frozen. That? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> hey, lads, uh, I'm not there tonight, but don't worry. I'll leave you petrified. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we've really lost the audience. So let's carry on. Uh, where the hell are we at? Pretty Deadly. Oh, thank you. Pretty Deadly beat Malik Blade and Edison on our fate to yes, obtain but... their tag team <laughs> titles. The lads Sorry, are Dan. sad. <laughs> Every time I do oh, some questions, I even go, oh, sugar. It's like the F1 commentator. Oh, extraordinary. <laughs> and the lads are sad afterwards in the car park, but Odyssey Jones arrives they pick up truck full of lovely ladies. Yeah. They get in with them and NXT. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Great return for Odyssey Jones. He goes, he goes well, when in Rome, and then suddenly... <laughs> He's got, uh, he's got da Damien Priest still the NXT gimmick because he was the, the ladies' he's man in the, right now, in the so. hot tubs and whatnot in New York City. Um, but yeah, I love the match itself. The, oh, yeah. Malik, I thought Malik Blade was like, this was his first like 
I'm here and I'm a wrestler sort of match, like like Damon Kemp's was at the, at the pay-per-view. Well said. Um, uh, pretty deadly are bumping fiends, I've written down here, because they made all of the the their opponents' uh, moves look very, very good indeed. Um, the quick finish at the start, I liked it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the plants were sat on their hands for it, though, which was a bit of a shame. <laughs> um, and a they, great... Like I said, they burned themselves out that first match. Yeah. And just the, the, the tag team tandem maneuvers by, especially, like, uh, what if they got a collective name? Malik Blade and Edris and Ofe. Or they just yeah, Malik and Edris. Nah, they don't have a name. They're just yeah. like... The, the Shoguns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Their tag, team, they, uh, ta- their tag team tandem offense was really good throughout. I don't know. There was too many to write down. Really I good. agree. I like this uh, dive over the turnbuckle. Take out PD. Um, and often lean him down. And then spill milk and broken up with a roll-up. That was a good fill, uh, false finish. Uh, another highlight that wasn't a match. Uh, back to Booker T. Vic said something about Pretty Deadly not using their brains, and Booker yelled, you think you could be tag team champions and not smart? And you could tell if it was Wade Barrett saying this, Vic would have said something cheeky, but realized Booker would kill him. (laughs) So I said, yeah, I guess you're right, Booker. (laughs) (laughs) There has been a few occasions. like, Well, you think we could win a a championship about a title? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Booker, good point. Yes, yes, you can, yes. So, any other thoughts there? Enjoy that. I, 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 I like Malik Blade and Edris Inofe. Me too. Bags of potential there. Bags and, of potential. And well done to Malik for presumably losing his virginity um, in uh, Odyssey's car. Oh, I forgot they did those bits. Because oh. he, he's like the nerdy guy in his little woolly jump. He's like, oh, hello there, I'm Malik. Oh, Welcome to you. about them. Yeah. And then Edris is like the bad boy and he'd lead them down a, a, a naughty path. <laughs> I like how he awkwardly jumped in through the window. <laughs> Just lay there going, I didn't think it was there. <laughs> God. Uh, the schism. Here we go. Reveal that their mystery member, after all this time, the little girl with the red little hood on. Uh, his is little red white riding hood. I butchered that right. one. <laughs> oh, is Ava Rain. Ava Rain. Ava Rain. She says that the schism are her family and have completed her. As soon as the reveal was done, everyone went, oh, that's uh, the rock star." There was a right? Rocky chant. Was Rocky. the first thing she there got. There was that. She started talking, and the crowd went quiet. Because what else? I she didn't her? think she was like I've I've heard mixed things. I thought it was fine. It's a first promo on the, TV. You know, like, how what we're expecting. The rest it's, that we're going to have worst, one of the worst gimmicks on TV. Yeah. Currently. All right, I'm going to defend this. Well, her fault. I'm going to defend this to the hilt. Right now, the, defend now, what? The the, the whole oh, the thing. Right. Okay. Now you can't defend the schism. I can leave Tom. Um, for Ava Rain, I think this is a, this is a good thing all around, right? Because now there's going to be eyes on this because the Rock's daughter. No, there won't be. Whether, whether, you know, I know we don't. I know we're trying to avoid. I know we're trying to avoid like referring to her as the Rock's daughter. So I got wrong for this on Twitter. Like we can't really know because she's got to be her own person. You can't compare and contrast because that's that's how we got die Rocky die chance in 1996. So let her do her own thing. I, but it will, regardless of it, it will have more eyes on that gimmick on that group that's a terrible and, thing and no and come on right <laughs> Ava Rain is there with grizzled young veterans who are uh, excellent wrestlers yeah, yeah. regardless of the gimmick okay you could tell at least one of them's livid about it excellent would that wrestlers. be James Drake it might be James Drake <laughs> excellent wrestlers so who better for Ava Rain to knock about with than two like excellent wrestlers Joe Gacy's a good mic guy in my opinion I like him on the mic so who else to travel around with in that roster than, than two excellent wrestlers and a good mic guy to kind of, you know, find your sea legs on the main roster. It's going to put more eyes on that. I, I I like it. I really like it. I'm up for it. And you know what? I might be all alone and that's all good. But how, like, people people say, like, how else are you going to bring Ava Rain in? Like, how is there, is there, I don't feel like it's, you know, if she comes in as a solo competitor, I think she's going to be, it's going to be too much too soon. Expect too much too soon. I think this is a nice way to do it. You both completely disagree with me. Oh, yeah. Tell me why. Well, what you've said, I mate. I don't like Mondays. I, I like... Well, well, um, <laughs> I agree with everything you've said, but I still... I'm just going to shrug my shoulders and go, no, because schism are rubbish. Yeah. So, but what, again, so you are right, but I don't care. You are right, Tom. Sense. They are fantastic wrestlers. Love Joe is The can, grass is always greener on the other side. He can cut I'll a... Never fan, leave you. He can cut yeah. a fantastic promo, yeah. but as Matthew said... The schism are terrible and by far and away the worst thing on NXT 2.0. Well, don't you say NXT. So that's good because everyone's going to skip the segment so she can learn whilst no having no uh, negative impact on her career. They had this the long... Band, there you go. There you go. She's learning and no one's watching. What if she led the schism eventually? Like her... Like, like, wow, like, that would really change... I wouldn't care. 
To be fair, I like the fact that she did mention like she uh, she's over the moon to be with this new family because it's uh, it means that any preconceived notions of what she's supposed to be have have gone. I like that. It's yeah. like stripping away what you think. Oh, she's gonna be the pebble. No, I'm not. I'm in schism. Unlike <laughs> unlike <laughs> un- unlike how like we all went for God's sake, call him Bron Steiner. Yeah. For God's sake. I'm glad they're not calling her Simone Johnson mm. or, for God's sake, the pebble. Mm. Really. Unless she does. Some people said the pebble and genuinely meant it. I mean, I Idiot. was joking. No, no you did. You were joking. Just to clarify. You were okay, joking. This is one of these but I've seen people online genuinely go, the pe- are you for real? Come on, grow we up. We said this before and about like, what, what it takes is three people to make one joke on Twitter and suddenly everyone's like, oh, well, people are wanting their pe-. No, mm. obviously, if she's going to be the brains behind these things, she's going to call herself, I'm um, the brain Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> just all <saw> that <laughs> nice I don't mind Brain Johnson yeah on this occasion DC I don't mind brain. her being removed yeah. from her her, her her electrifying generational thing for the time and being it, it makes sense let, let her find her feet as Ava Rain and, and then you can kind of go with two ways like if she becomes a natural we go the rock's daughter if she's rubbish we go Chris Eubank Jr <laughs> David Flair. Uh, <laughs> no, but to be fair, it does make sense that she would want a new family as well because her bloody dad's never home. Yeah, he's always at premieres. He takes a gym on the road with him, which means he can't come up to go to the gym. Yeah. Um, but the scary thing is, Matthew, is that Joe Gacy in his little promo at the start, he was like, there's three of them there of many more to come. Tuesday. I. <laughs> the schism's going to grow. One, one, what does it keep saying? One tree, four roots. How many roots can you have in a tree? Two worlds, one family. (laughs) (laughs) It's a Tarzan. I am am the speed bump of this podcast this week. I was laughing. I liked it. I'm just thinking about the schism, so I'm just sad. Yeah, the schism are really bad. You guys are doing great. What could what could they do to fix the schism? Just pin it it on board again. It was a joke, guys. It was a joke. (laughs) Honestly, right? Go back to what they were originally before they were spooky, magical bollocks. Crappy Bray Wyatt ripoff men, and B oh, that commentary. Wokey, woke, yeah, woke, 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 woke. what me and him thought it was, and week one, then we got proven at week two that we were wrong, <laughs> and it was you Vince. Ma- snowflake. And it was Vince McMahon oh. just having a go at people who, you know, are the snowflake. Yeah, that's. Tr- I did enjoy that. But again, he's just so smiling. I'm like, wait, is he supposed to be a lefty or a right? It's just badly written, so you couldn't tell what the hell he was supposed to be. It was ironic or not? And then he banded it and went, "Woo, I'm." The Undertaker, the office worker. <laughs> like, be like, they, like, come into our ring, it's a safe space. We're all inclusive. Bosh. Like that sort of thing. I thought, okay, here, like I said at the time, the idea of having a gimmick where a guy is, a wrestler is pretending to be open, and I'm not going to use the woke tones, it's obviously been completely misunderstood. But like, like I love all the people, yeah. And as soon as he's like, oh, whatever. Yeah. But, um, mm. I thought that's such a really good, quick, again, satirical take on a lot of wrestlers um, doing it for the grift. But uh, <laughs> so I thought that was a really hilarious thing. I was like, wow, this could be great. And then, of course, for like three weeks, it was like, wokey, wokey, snowflake, snowflake. Yeah. And then, you know, just come join me, cult, please. Mm. Please. And then they get, oh, cry. Then they got magic powers, didn't they? And then he had that few with Bron Breaker. Was like, well, he sent me to meet up here on the scaffold. Then, <laughs> <laughs> got your oh, dad. The highlights of Joe Gage. I mean, please move on. Kidnapped move on. his dad. A mysterious voicemail is left at the performance center receptionist desk. Reception desk, led by a receptionist. It's from a figure called Scripts who threatens to tear NXT apart. And you might not know this character because uh, there's actually an old reference. I tried to not do it without smiling. <laughs> um, but it's actually good to see, like, he remembers the classics because obviously the Attitude Era and his profile, that was their 80s heyday. Uh, well, obviously all those wrestlers are dead, so instead we're just getting uh, Soundwave from the Transformers. Right. <laughs> that was not worth it, I know. <laughs> I, I, I know. No, it was worth it for Tom. The f- okay, now the fun thing Sorry. is, the fun thing is, because time is a construct of human perception, before this, <laughs> Matthew and I recorded the Cold Tonic Classic Smackdown review where he said that, and it caught me off guard, and I died laughing. <laughs> but, but then I had to say it, and I knew but, I wouldn't get the but, same reaction. But, because, uh, but this goes out before the SmackDown review, so my reaction is tepid compared to the reaction that you will hear tomorrow. Because <laughs> <laughs> time is a constant of human perception. Uh, but I like the sound wave thing. A few people in, in the 25 minutes between finishing the SmackDown review and coming in here, <laughs> I've seen a few people say that it's Dominic Dijakovic. But then he's, no, already, he's doing his separate yeah. promos, isn't he? I think it's two separate. I think this is a completely new character. This feels like a sort of, I said this to, to Andrew, I think it was Andrew or Jack. I think it was Andrew. Or was it Jack? But it feels very much like a... <laughs> 
It's scripts. <laughs> oh, scripts, what are you doing here? I've bought a cassette tape. <laughs> yeah. Again, if he ends, that you call David Kovach out. <laughs> Eat my cassette tapes. Um, I, I love this. I think it was with um, Andrew this morning when we recorded the news this morning. It's got an element of sort of like a, a Thanos style yeah. character. That's like because the work. A lot of people come in and go. I'm gonna be everyone. I'm gonna be the best in NXT. This felt like no. Nah, I'm just gonna tear the place to pieces. It felt like something or someone that's just gonna rip through NXT. And I'm excited for that. Well, I, I thought it was Von Wagner because there was, a, <laughs> there was a line halfway through which just appeared on one line on the screen and it said, watch as I come. <laughs> and leave my mark as I plan to rip all of NXT apart sincerely scripts. Um, there's two things to note as well. The giveaway was also when he went, and rip all of NXT. Mom, I'm on the phone! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hold smiley faces and rip her next to your part. <laughs> you were saying so. Uh, the, the way that the, the lady in reception says WWE is Michael Cole from back in the day, because a little bit of peel back the curtain. I used to say WWE like that back in the day at the old place. Mm. And that was because Michael Cole would say it kind of like that, but I made it more annoying because that's what I did back then. Uh, but the way she said it there was very reminiscent of that. WWE. <laughs> the only way Michael Cole can say it. It's incredible. And I think it's Bobby Fish personally. <laughs> he left a voicemail. Who leaves a voicemail? Who's under 40 and leaves a voicemail? <laughs> Unless you're working in the trade. I mean, there is that. I mean, if it was if it was a if it was a Gen Z character coming in, they could please leave a message and you just hear the phone hang up. <laughs> and then a text nah, later. I'll text them. Ah, whatever. Then you hang up. <laughs> I'll send a text. I don't think I've ever left a voicemail. Ever. Oh, I've left loads, yeah. Ooh. I bet they, I'm, I'm the guy who's like, I can't believe this person hasn't responded to my voicemail. I'll check my phone. You have three voicemails. Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> so I'm a big hypocrite. Uh, backstage, Indy Hartwell tells Sol Rooker, the surfer dude, to focus less on doing stupid tricks and more on winning. Then she beats for about a minute, so maybe she should have listened to her. Mm. Uh, Electra Lopez runs in and beats down both women down after the bell. This is very AEW. Yeah, lots Lopez. of stuff happening. This was the most unexpected squash match in professional wrestling history, as far as I'm concerned. I did not see this coming at all. This is, by the way, to give her a full name, Sol, almost as good as Tri Tiffy Strats Rooker, by the way. <laughs> because she is almost as good as Tiffy Strats, and she's been sacrificed just to the return of Electra Lopez, who did look good, by the way. Like, coming back and just beating up fools and mm. whatnot. Um, but yeah, didn't see... Because especially the run Indy's been on, she's not exactly been like Goldberg recently, has she? No. Bret Hart. No, she hasn't, because I like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Goldberg but... should be in the Hall of Shame, if you ask me. <laughs> that was a great quote from Brett this week. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, lads, but Brett Hart doesn't like Goldberg very much. I, I wonder why. Like Goldberg. I wonder why. WWE headquarters, could even get... Yeah, it's Brett. <laughs> 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 oh, hi, Brett. Uh, I don't like Goldberg. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that voicemail, you know, you know, like, imagine the guys... Guys, hello, this is WWE headquarters. Leave a message. And he's like, oh, I'm going to uh, look with your eyes, eat with your teeth. I'm coming a bit. Hello? Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the vignette. <laughs> Do you think anyone would answer? <laughs> he's just shy. <laughs> <laughs> Scripps is shy. <laughs> like, we, we think we saw Scripps in a promo the following week. He's just peeking behind the camera. <laughs> 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 There's, there's a wrestler that's shy, talks a big game, but is too frightened to approach anybody. And now joining us is Scripps. He walks on. So Scripps, you cut this promo last week. How are you feeling about your matchup against Come Tuesday? I'm all right, thank you very much. Sorry, Scripps, can you come a bit closer to the camera? Please? Over here, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all right, thank you very much. I like, I like him. He's all right. Can I go now? <laughs> Vic and Booker, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> No, Scripps, script, that's a cupboard. So right, I'll Scripps, stay no, the, so right, I'll stay here. <laughs> oh, <sighs> Bodie Haywood does not show up for a lecture. Hmm. Duke Hudson does and says he hasn't seen him anywhere before giving Andre Chase an apple. What a nice man. He beat him up, didn't he? And not, not, why would he you tied say that? him up somewhere. There's nothing to suggest he would do that. Thea mm. Hale's pen breaks, so Duke gives her his, claiming he'll just take notes in his head because he's so clever. This infuriates Andre, but... Uh, Thea Hale's like, no, I'll take responsibility. Duke goes, no, muffle. Sorry about that. And he calms down and she's like, thanks. Uh, Duke then steals another person's student's pen. 
It's really yeah. good. <laughs> well, I think he's a nice guy. I, I, it's a shame Bodie Haywood couldn't be there. It's a shame he's uh, slacking off late. That's what we're getting next week. And he, Bodie's going to come back with a black eye, maybe some tape on his wrist or something. I just insinuate he was tied up. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't believe you. Duke wouldn't do that. Yeah. That's too imaginative for, for Dull Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like this. These little skits, yeah, they're, they're nice and silly, like the good old NXT we like. But it's it's a shame that Andre, since let's remember, pinning Carmelo Hayes clean has done bugger all. Really, he must be hurt or something. Yeah, because right? I think they looked and go, wait, we can either put you in this la- dodgy ladder, ma- <laughs> dodgy ladder, <laughs> dodgy ladder, and ladder. <laughs> You can dive off and hurt yourself and hit a fan of a ladder, mm. or you can do skits with Duke Hudson. He's like, I'm alright with Duke. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, that's why he's a smart man. Big head, and it's, it's a teachable moment. Uh, in the main event, JD McDonald Google's name wins by referee stoppage after choking out Ilya Dragunov. He keeps the hold applied after the bell, and Ilya does a big old stretcher job. And he is bleeding because Ilya has to do it hard, so to speak, mm. and take it hard. Again, exact same thing I said on the Halloween Havoc thing. His gimmick outside the the, the ring when he's just like, I sometimes exercise before my match. It's like, whoa, what a gimmick. <laughs> uh, is just whatever. Can't get your teeth into that at all. But JD, Merck, don't ask Jeeves me. Uh, and especially with Ilya, does have great chemistry and is still yeah. having these bangers. Um, so, yeah, well done, mate. I don't know if it's you're just hoping to get out the main roster, but one would think he was going to stay and Ilya was going to go to the main roster. Now that JD's got that big win, that helps NXT, and then he can go to the main roster and slap Gunther in the face. Oh, <laughs> do, you do, you they would, do you reckon they would do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, bet, I bet look at this going, are we doing this again? I go, progress, VXV, NXT UK. Actually, now, I, like, I know how this works. I know how this works, because I've what, having <gasps> absorbed this podcast for so long, right? And knowing this is on Friday night, Right. <laughs> He's not turning up on <laughs> SmackDown. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov's not turning up on SmackDown. Let's hope the podcast cast doesn't strike. Oh, we'd hate that. Oh, we'd hate it. Oh, no. Oh, he def- no, it's not that we, it's not our opinion. We know he definitely won't. He oh, definitely one th- won't. One thing to predict then is he goes, uh, oh, I just saw this. Ray gets ready to go. All right, yay. Gives the little drop toe hold. Gunther goes. He goes, Boyaka, Boyaka, 6 1. <laughs> and it comes up, 9! <laughs> <laughs> Chops his entire oh. body with his meaty hand. And then out of the hole, which has been created by oh. uh, Gunter's yeah, hand, he looks comes through. Ilya Dragunov. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks through, he's like, oh, and there's the, the title. <laughs> Ilya! <laughs> Move on the way, Jim. <laughs> oh. Just fighting around Ray's <laughs> emptied body. I tell you what, though, <laughs> that won't happen. That's not going no, to happen. No, no, no. This curse the podcast. Right yeah, again. that's never going to happen. Ian Dragunov's never debuted on SmackDown. This is why Triple H, H-, H-, H- hates fantasy booking. Yeah, <laughs> just get what, you, get what you're given. I love the reversal for the for the finish in this match yeah, for the very submission. Well done. Um, yeah, a tale as old as time. I've written a tale as old as time. Oh, Heal your and don't book Google me. <laughs> 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 Injured ribs. Heel picks them apart. But the breathless stuff they did in between was amazing. A bit of irony at the start there with Muck don't Google me nearly breaking his neck off a German because he, you know, he likes body parts and that doesn't he and bones oh, you got a lot of calcium in your bones there something like that I can't remember what it was but a really good match he's had no, a no, good Grayson while it was earlier <laughs> <laughs> he's, had a, he's had a very good few days as uh, Muck don't Google me yeah. Oh, yeah I'm trying to think of other search engines what was uh, that like us Yahoo Muck don't like us yeah, thank you Muck, what like Muck don't like us mate. like us yeah with a dog little white dog no early noise like us. McDonald Mc- escaped me. Like, JD McDonald. Bing. JD McDonald oh, binged oh, me. Don't be silly. Who's binging? <laughs> That's more likely to do in a voicemail. That's, do you know what? You've just Bing. created Microsoft's new ad campaign there. Who's binging? <laughs> We're binging. <laughs> They're, bing- <laughs> They're binging in Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> We're binging Chris Grills versus Cage Tyler. <laughs> now in its 20th year. One more Speaking show. Speaking of 20th go. year, this podcast, AW Dynamite. Men who used to hold Ring of Honor. There's no wacky title here. Um, what, should we, what, should, what should we go with? Um, for this Boom, one. Boom, there it isn't. <laughs> men who used to hold Ring of Honor titles beat the men who took those Ring of Honor titles off of them. As Claudio and his nephew, the great Yuda. <laughs> the great Yuda. Who wrote this? Me. The, <laughs> the, 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 the Ocho. The Ocho, which means eight in wrestler speak. Chris Jericho and his nephew, Dan Garcia, with a plum. 
<laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you can't use a plum. It's an illegal weapon. <laughs> Uh, Regal st- straight away stealing the, the everyone's oh. hearts on commentary calling Excalibur a creme brulee. I'd love to crack you open. <laughs> it's a good job this place after the watershed on yeah. ITV, right? Bloody hell. I thought the match hummed along in third gear for the longest time, and then the great Utah got a hot tag, and well, he proved he was the great Utah. Certainly, but I think all the attention was on Claudio uh, for getting that hot run on all of JAS. Yeah. Bing, the bang, the boom, the bong, and then but- just did the. The, the giants and he, he's so funny though because if you watch the rest of the first time and like Jericho's down and Claudio just looks down at him with his big crotch his legs and he's like oh you're like oh no oh oh no I watched an interview with Jericho I, might, I might, died sorry might be McKenny, but he says the secret to taking the swing because he was on about doing the swing on the top of the cage he said he was fine initially for the first couple of swings and he was just like no put me down it's too scary because um, obviously he was yeah, gonna, might fly off the side the secret is just to look at Claudio in the eyes and that's how you stop yourself from getting really dizzy and I can't ah. imagine I can't imagine that working. But it must do. But what if you look him in the eyes and Claudio's going, I'm gonna drop you? That's Claudio's doing a rib just going, ooh, ooh. <laughs> doing twizzly eyes. He's going, I love you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Elephant that was poo. that was nice because Claudio, sometimes some of these finishes go on forever. It felt like a nice clean finish after like bing yeah. bang bong, you're all taken out. I'm gonna hit you with this move neutralizer. He jumped off the top rope and then gave you a peanut butter cut, which I thought, okay, fine. And then he did that. I was like, oh, great. And that came after yeah. when Jericho, like, he went for another, it was early in the match, obviously, he went for another up, uh, flying European uppercut and he reversed it with a, a code breaker. Yeah. A lovely maneuver. I'm surprised how clean the win was for Claudio. It was just sort of happened, didn't it? Just like, well, he's done it. I think they need to break it up because obviously JS rules dominant, ha ha ha. But then he gets his little wins here to remind you, no, no, Claudio's good. Also, yeah. the great Uda. He's got that thing with Brian Danielson. So, up oh, the great Uda. Up oh, oh, the great Uda. Uh... Returning to New Japan. <laughs> Uh, Rene Paquette, who appeared in the music video for Behind These Hazel... What? Where's this going? Behind the, These Hazel Eyes by Kenny Clarkson, didn't you know? No, I, I didn't know I that, actually. that this week. Yeah, 19 oh. years of age. It was on uh, Hey! EW with uh, RJ City. I love that bit at the start. Where it's like, you know, this is my gig, just so you know. <laughs> She's like, it's fine, I hate you. Have you seen the one with him and Taz? Yes. yes. <laughs> the Regal one's the best one for me. <laughs> Oh, I'm the William Reed. Oh, oh my God. Coronation Street gets involved. Saying, yeah, RJ loads City's... of. They, do, they reenact a Coronation Street scene. That's RJ City is. His references are like all the 70s. He's got the, the taste of an old man. So I love him. <laughs> um, so him and Regal's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. It's like doing the duck soup, I guess. There's a great line in it where, where like they're talking about stuff and Regal just deadpan just goes, I remember being in a hotel and wanting to order some food and I rang down and asked for a thin and crispy supreme and they sent me Diana Ross. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I knew what it was going to be as soon as Supreme came out. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah. And it's just like the silence is, is deafening afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's regally spicy. You can get away with it. I'm an eccentric Englishman. I can get away with anything. <laughs> Bloody hell. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, and they talks. do Ken and Deirdre scenes as well from Corey. Of course they do. It's phenomenal. It's the best. He talks to the man with the BCC, Brian Danielson. The man with the BCC, Brian Danielson. Yes, that's right. It's a big winky reference, (laughs) but not really. Oh, Yeah, that that, that didn't land. Sorry, I'm a big pun. Danielson says he is frustrated for a myriad of reasons. Is it bad and wrestling whenever someone comes out and goes, they're frustrated? I hear in my head, frustrated. (laughs) Frustrated (laughs) is a goddamn word for it. (laughs) This is BS. Danielson says he's frustrated for a myriad of reasons, but for once, not, sorry, what on there? But not once does he mention the inclement weather hampering the growth of his new composition. <laughs> <laughs> the Good writing God. has changed somewhat in <laughs> wow. this recap. The great Yuda appears out of nowhere and says he's glad his hairy uncle is finally mad and claims that he, the Yuda, is a grown ass man. Claudio then gets involved and suggests the two stop bickering and they sit down and discuss things like adults. Exhilarating. Cheers, Claudio. I'd rather see them scrap. I would. I would rather see them scrap. But if they are going to have a sit-down conversation like two grown adults would, I hope that Dr. Shelby gets involved. And we go back to counselling with Brian Danielson because that's what everyone wants with the great Uta. Yeah, and Scorpio Sky's there. And he's like, wait, hang on. (laughs) To be fair, he's not been seen for a while. Hmm. Where's he at? That's the the thing of... uh... Of AEW last few weeks, it's like, all right, yeah, it, the the numbers are proven, TV ratings and everything that you don't need necessarily the elite too much or punk. Uh, but uh, where's Hobbs and Starks and Luchasaurus and Boy and uh, yeah, Scorpio Sky, all these people that you were pushing, whatever. 
Uh, they show this promo package with the elite disappearing from several key moments in AW history, like the regagal of vampires, <laughs> and the sun has just come out to eviscerate them. Nice. That's what I Pretty thought. Funny, mm, yeah. It kind of felt like being snapped out of existence. Yeah. I think I think that's what it was, but mm. he's not. He doesn't watch those films, so. No. I like that. For someone who doesn't watch those films, and good on you, you shouldn't watch them all. There's too many of them. Uh, that was very good. They were backstage uh, on Dynamite. Were they? The Elite Wars. First time since were the, the, the brawl out, all out, all out. Uh, no, no dogs were harmed in their backstage good. shenanigans. Well, they're good to know. That's nice. Yeah, so their, their return is on the cards. Interesting way to do it. They did make a point, actually. The thing I just said was as a very WWE-ish when they're saying, well, in fairness, you know, CM Punk didn't make that the impact we thought he would long-term on the ratings. Mm. And you're like, yeah, but we didn't get like the mega mega matches on him from TV that we thought we would. Obviously, there were some big yeah. matches cut across. I'm not saying underselling like Kingston and MGF; those things were magnificently well done. But we also get randomly a Bobby Fish match. I was about to say like, Ooh, oh, I, oh, Betty, are you really upset that CM Punk and Bobby Fish didn't draw record right. numbers? Like, come on now, <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't it? With it's the like, greatest respect to both participants, yeah, I don't get it; it's not working. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, the promo ends of Kenny Omega heard saying. We need to push this thing forward before the AW logo also disappears like it's a vampire in the sun. Uh, is Kenny at the scene of human child? We need to push, push forward. Thing forward. Yeah. Uh, has he happened upon a car that has inconveniently stopped on an active train crossing? <laughs> we need to push it forward. Are he and his little friends coming back to AW to push the company forward? Are they all vampires? Do we give a hairy bollocks at this point in time? <laughs> Find out soon, somewhere soon. I wonder why there was 10 page of notes. <laughs> and I think we just discovered. But yeah, it, it's, ooh, tease. Everyone talk about this, please. I'm like, okay, Ali. Because I tell you what, when I first saw it, I was like, if, if they've, they've just written them out of history. They've taken them out the big reveal with the phones at the very yep. start of the company. Mm. You know, Kenny with his titles. So does that leave without... Um... <laughs> Wait, without him or Cody or the elite, that leaves what? Jimmy Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt like to me, oh, they're just wiping them from history, but they're showing us like doing that rather than doing it like the WWE. We're just going like, oh, we'll just not mention them. But they can kind of come in and be, and kind of play on the fact that they've been absent. We're reborn again. Reborn Christians. <laughs> oh, I, kind of, I kind of like the idea of maybe this is <laughs> Shawn Michaels. <laughs> they they sound that. weird. This it's me, Kenny O'Meara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kenny Alpha now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like, yeah, that'd be brilliant. I like the idea of them maybe coming in and, and playing off the fact that, hang on, you literally writ us out of existence for about a month. Like you, like no reference on TV. You took our belts off us for what? Because we kicked a dog. Whatever. In yeah, that case, on, yeah. Thank you, Dan. For loving. Yeah, good point. Out. Did you kick a dog? <laughs> they did kick a did dog. If you kick a dog, then Punk is innocent. Yes. Yeah. Innocent, I tell thee. Yes. Quit. Yes. If the Punk didn't sit, you must have quit. So you know we're not going to hear it from them. You're going to talk about everything else but the kick in the dog incident. Mm. There'll, there'll be a chant. <laughs> there'll be signs, won't there, lads? Hopefully. Did you threaten to kick the dog? <laughs> Did you threaten to kick the dog? But I like the idea Sorry, of them, going, reference th then, them coming back and be like, no, you wrote us out of existence, so now we're just going to just burn AW to the ground with bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they, let's just own what's going on. We're going to make awful business decisions and bring this company yeah. down one strongly worded email at a time. <laughs> it would be great to be the first time Tony can't come out and just sound like a normal human being. Goes, no, I suspended you because you got to a fight <laughs> backstage. <laughs> Joke's on you. We've hired 12 more wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got Bruno Shafir in uh, stacks now. Like, what are you for? <laughs> Chris Jericho shouts at Big Dick Tony S. Daddy Magic. No, no. Oh, that's a full stop. Oh, right. I thought his name was Tony S. Daddy Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, look, Tony S. Don. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Daddy Magic shouts at Big Dick Tony S. Dan Garcia calls the BCC the Blackpool Cheetah Club because he's a lyrical master. And ooh, Matthew, shake your hand like one of those rapper fellows. You've just jammed in the car door. Ooh. <laughs> he needs a plaster. Ooh. He's a lyrical master. Ooh, he needs ooh. a plaster. I Come see. on, get with us. Sorry, lyrics, I mean, I've been reading these stage directions again. I apologize. Uh, Chris Jericho shouts and claims he can't believe Claudio would accept the win. Uh, when there was an active baseball bat in the ring, don't call you to that. <laughs> Jericho then shouts that he's going to see the JAS win all the Ring of Honor titles before challenging any former Ring of Honor champion, and it's definitely going to be CM Punk, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? then sadly exists and says he's going to beat Brian Danielson again while wearing distracting little pink panties. <laughs> he looks like a flump. <laughs> Flump. Thank you for translating this because it came out on TV like, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Let me tell you. Let 
the, the pandies. <laughs> what, what, what? So there was a few, about to go, yeah, sorry about that. There was a few audio issues in this <laughs> segment. But yes, uh, Jericho has basically called out all the former Ring of Honor champions. So we'll get a new debut, I guess, next week. Who Tom, hasn't been there yet? Is Soundwave a former Ring of Honor champion? <laughs> <laughs> he is in my heart. <laughs> yeah. So who could that be? Seth Rollins. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm a so I've gone CM Punk. Punk. You've gone Seth Rollins. Seth who's Rollins. Who's it going to be? Kevin Owens. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Low key. Be ready. No oh, way. Oof. Can mm. he come in and retinal? No. <laughs> <laughs> I already heard this idea. Who else could it be? Let's have a genuine little think on this. Is it Low key? Austin Harris. Xavier's passed no! away. No! For a one for a one shot deal. <laughs> <laughs> that that yell was amazing, by the way. <laughs> Has he not wrestled since the Morrison match? I don't know. Oh, he's still walking hell? away from the ring. Samoa Joe is technically an ex. Uh, oh, champ. yeah. There you go. I'd say Joe. Samoa Joe is a good yeah, shout. Yeah, Samoa Joe. Uh, come on, Wikipedia. Uh, oh, what Morishima would be great. No. Uh, McGuinness? James Gibson? Oh, that's uh, Jamie Noble. Jamie Noble. Yeah, yeah, he's a Homicide? Homicide's not yeah, a bad he, shout. He, he Nigel McGuinness. Yeah, I was going to say, Nigel McGuinness, he's, he could do something. He's free? He just got released, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, he could do oh. something. Eddie Edwards, Davey Richards. Eddie's a... Uh, Adam Cole? Maybe. Is he, uh, is he okay? We haven't... Like, that's what I said about, like, last week we had the horrible thing with Hangman Page, and he said he's out of concussion. That's okay. Adam Cole, the last we heard from him was that he suffered a concussion during the four-way... God, a forbidden door. That was yeah. bloody ages ago. Mm. And we haven't heard anything about him since, apart from Bobby Fish not returning his calls. Um, so I don't know what the hell's happening with him. We've been very quiet about that, but... That's the rest of the Kyle O'Reilly, I don't know. I know he's like getting some sort of surgery or something at the yeah, moment, he? isn't he? Uh, Michael Elg. <laughs> Next. Um, Cody. Jay Lethal, Matt Taven. Roosh. Oh, Lethal. I've PCO. There's a, there's a fun angle. Yes. PCO. Yeah, Taven. I think PCO's I like PCO. just signed a long term deal with Impact Wrestling for all that. Ah, but they, I don't know. There's not much crossover. No, no, there is crossover. I'm talking about. I'm talking about there, there is, I, I, I think Kazarian come over and win the. Um, the X division title, which is then yeah. cashed in to have a shot at the world title. So That's I think maybe maybe swapping a little trade off for PCO, PCO yeah. and Jericho. That'd be fun. Be a fun little match. That would be a big dumb match. stupid big Canadian. dumb stupid fun match. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. There we go, Mother Teresa. Ah, so that's something to think about. Swerve in our glory. Take on the tag team who are so fat. P H A T. They need three belts to hold up their trousers. Oh. FDR and a number one contenders matchup with the acclaimed scissoring each other with chairs on the ramp with, and the ass boys in the front row I think the ass boys are supposed to be dressed up as FDR because Halloween and comedy question mark I didn't even talk about Halloween I thought it was just being dicks <laughs> but in my opinion they look more like Charles Bronson and Steve Irwin R.I.P <laughs> which Charles Bronson? D. Charles Bronson. Oh, okay. The one who did the, the game who, shut up and jam. The one who's in the prisons with the mustache. And no, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> I'm asked. Anyway. <laughs> At the end of a ding-dong battle, hello, then the more, and with Crash Wheeler trapped in a Venus ass trap at ringside, Swerve low blows Dax out of the sight of both Keith and the referee, allowing Keith to make a big bang for the win. Keith and Sneaky Swerve are going to have a tag team title match against the acclaimed. FTR were the number one contenders from like April, I swear. What the hell, AEW? I assume that when Keith sees the replay, his being will be brimmed with immeasurable amounts of sorrow with a hint of disappointment. Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> Beautifully put. So yeah, when right. Keith sees the replay, I don't think he's yeah. going to be happy because he missed the low blow which led to the well, finish. What's he going to do? Is he, I suppose he's like, all right, what are you going to do? Do you want to hand it back? Indubitably. Oh, oh you didn't like it, do you? <laughs> you didn't like it. Are you going to... Go on then. Do something. Put it back. Okay. Sorry, Tony. I'll be back. We'll not have a tag talk show. There you go, Tony. And I'll be the real tech. <laughs> you know what? I Thank you very much. Keith Lee would be like, hmm, well, maybe I'll think about it. They make my decision after we win the tag titles. <laughs> yeah. So, that'd be, that'd be, you know what? It'd be nice that, rather than these two feud, have Keith Lee go, I think I will be a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the most devious bastard in all of AEW. Indubitably. Yeah, it'd just be Matt Berry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought all four men were really impressive in this match. Absolutely. Dax Harwood was very choppy and it was very nice to see. The slingshot power bomb where he yeah. was dirty dancing with Swerve, I've <laughs> put it. And he just does this slingshot power bomb was amazing. Yeah. Um, I thought they were on, oh no, they worked like a well old machine did Swerve in our glory despite the little teasers. With yeah, I, I was expecting a few more little teasers of like them two falling apart, but they kind of, they've pulled that back a little bit. 
Are they still playing the long game, do we think? I think they are, yeah. Yeah. Especially when Keith sees this replay. I mean, how is he going to react? Mm. My God. I love the the the, the FTR suplex and then splash plot. Splash plot. Splash plot. Splash <laughs> That's what it should be called. Splash That's plot a, for the win. The, the powerplex. Yes. From um, um, Hercules and Paul Roma. Yes. Um, but Keith obviously didn't know what was coming, so he sort of lifted up, and I thought, add it to the spot. A bit of realism there. It was lovely. Yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? What? And they did this on the in a uh, Nitro in 1996. Uh, the Cold Dollar Classic Nitro. We've been talking about this. Sting and Lex Luger did this whole thing for months. Oh, I love this so much. Yeah. Oh, guys, a complicated mess to untangle on it's week so to week. Great. Luger was a wrongen who was uh, Jimmy Hart oh, as a manager on the sly. Um, and what ended up happening was like every so often Luger would cheat, but Sting wouldn't see it. And, and then would stand, Sting would even watch the replays, though. So I'm hoping that Keith is going to be smarter than Sting <laughs> and was, go, hang on a minute, I watched this. They had this great dynamic in like six because Luga is just a dick to everybody, apart from his best friend Sting. And Sting's obviously the baby face of all baby faces back then. So yeah, Luke's just been a fanny and be like, <laughs> yay! So like, they're going down the aisle. And you probably noticed this in the reviews. And it's like, uh, Sting's like, yeah, hey, kids, high five, high five. And then Luke is just like, whatever, don't touch me. And Sting's around, hey, high five. Sting turns around, and, yeah, whatever, I'm high fiving you. It's just Sting. So great. It's Sting looking like an idiot again, though. He was like, because there's Hogan and Savage and the Road Warriors all saying, look, Luke is a bugger. Like, he's, a, <laughs> he's a wronger. He's a bad bloke. He's a bad guy. Yeah, what are you talking about? And he's like, he's my friend. It's fine. And then he'll never speak again. He just yeah. loved him, okay? Look, Sting was dumb. It's just one character flaw. He's yeah. great. That's why we all love him. He had that big character flaw. He was too trusting. He was too trusting. When Darby him. turns on him, everyone's going, oh, you idiot. Yeah. And then Darby I can't, can't, believe, can't and believe it's happened again. And then oh. Darby can join the trust busters because he trusted, trusted Sting. Oh! Uh, yeah. oh that, yeah, no, yeah, no, you got it. You got it. Oh. He's done it with the double meaning. Ah, bloody lovely. Renee is back with her girl with Soraya. What? Yeah. They call each other beautiful and both seem to forget they're on the air, judging by the conversation they're having. Rini says Soraya is the Joan Jett to her blondie because hair. <laughs> okay. Britt Baker, who must have some sort of tracking device to make sure she can erupt all of the female interviews that aren't her own. She he I decided yeah. watching this, she hears the red light go off. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm on my way. It's a dog whistle to her. That's uh, <laughs> right, I have a shouting match. Renee says, if they're going to do this, they're going to do this properly. So Soraya and Britt will be appearing on the next episode of Parky. <laughs> Parky. As he knows how to interview people, as Ross hopes he hasn't been cancelled for a reason he isn't aware of. No. <laughs> <laughs> Parky's I'm fine. I'm going to cancel you for that older reference. <laughs> He appeared on Look North last year. I think as uh, the Look North presenter was leaving. Oh. And, oh, he looks really old. It was, was like, it was just like 20 years ago. I know ago. it was, but like you showed him and, and, and I was looking at the camera and then, he, and then he said, oh, it was great working with you. I was like, oh, it's Parky on, no! He must be in his 90s Time now. Is yeah. cruel. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> cruel. But yeah, because he, he was doing life insurance adverts like 20 years he ago. Get free so now, he's like, now he's there going, I hope I've still got that. I'm glad he did. <laughs> he, he must be firmly in his 90s at this point, Parky. Yeah, he's, sure. up, he's up there as Parky, but one so, of the best. One of the best to ever, to ever lace up an interview. So yeah. The lace up an interview, yes. Renee is a busy bee this week, pesky bee, as next up she's joined by MGF, who proclaims the devil has arrived in Virginia before asking if there are any devil worshippers in the house today. And the crowd goes, yeah. MGF does a cracking Moxley impression. He said, yeah, puppet Moxley arrives. He has those snake hips and shoulder balls. What? Shoulder ball and socket joints too. Yes, yeah. he does. MGF calls Moxley, that word beginning with M, ooh, mid, overcoming his devastating stutter in doing so. M -m 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 mid That's right. You're well just, done, MGF. Can't go over that word. MGF mentions William Regal and claims that the disgusting, flea-infested, elderly rat insinuated that he couldn't beat Moxie without the use of his dynamite diamond ring. MGF promises to not use the ring in the match at full gear, which means Willie Regal will kiss the ring at the top of the ramp after he's turned on Moxie and aligned with MJF, who just used that thing to win the match. Stokely, it's going to happen. Yeah. He said, he said his match will be mostly clean. Well, you know, mostly. <laughs> Stokely Hathaway appears and implies that the firm will get their hands on Mox, which MGF shoots down and says, no, he's my BF, not your BF. You don't get to touch him. He's mine, <laughs> mine, mine. If you touch him, you're not in my club anymore and you can't come round to mine for tea. The use of my <laughs> Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me some. Yeah, I knew you were going to read that today, so yeah, you go. There's a, there's a present oh, from me to you. That's yeah, lovely. Beautiful summary there. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and so it's like, MGF, oh, we probably know where he's coming from now. Yeah, I'm going to be addicted to press William Regal. Is that okay with you guys? Crowd, yeah. Mm. Yeah, now we get where you're coming from. We're going to cheer you. Mm. Okay. I like it. Like the firm going, hey, look, we'll help you. And he's like, no, no, no. If you touch him, you're all fired. I don't want to work with you anymore. Yeah, it all okay. stems from last week. We're really uh, Regal going like, you take shortcuts and I don't like them. So now he's not going to actively take the shortcuts in the build up to the pay-per-view. Out of spite. Where he'll take the ultimate shortcut in the line with William Regal. That's what I'm predicting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that Regal leaving the Blackpool combat? Group? Yeah, buddy. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even thought of that. That's amazing. Mm. Those two dastardly bastards together. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hmm. Always been a villain. Yeah. I've always been a villain. <laughs> Have you? No, no, that's what Regal can say. <laughs> but then then will we stop will he stop making lewd comments to Excalibur when he's a when he's oh, a bad just he's flamboyant Englishman he can do what no, he wants. No, uh, he'll be a heel and he goes. Hello, Excalibur. I don't want to have sex with you. <laughs> Crowd's like, no. <laughs> You're a... not scrummy, scrummy, scrummy. Oh. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> There's a promo package about the kingdom and Wardlow. Meh. Apparently, the kingdom were signed to AW contracts this week. Good for them and bad for the show. They'll be ROH, talking. though. They'll be ROH. Yeah, but terrible. Ring of Honor is AEW. Uh, for now, yeah. Once, the, uh, once they get it going. Mess. Once well, all the ROH lads are gone, there's going to be so much room for activities on AEW. Good. It's going to be so I'm looking good. forward to it, yeah. yeah. Sammy G takes on Brian D in a fight, Teehee. After another ding-dong battle, hello, Danielson makes Sammy pass out. Sammy looks good in defeat. He dominated for ages and didn't tap out in the end. In many ways, this is like the 05 FIFA Cup final. The FA Cup final in 2005. <laughs> Manchester United, Sammy, really did deserve to beat Arsenal, Danielson, on the day. But in the penalty shootout, submission hold at the end of the match, that followed 120 minutes of scintillating action, the Gunners, Danielson, held their nerve but really mattered. <laughs> You're kicking ass this week. It's really, it makes sense to me. Well, whatever drugs you're on, do more of them. It's uh, cocaine. <laughs> it's not really. Um, it's just coffee. Caffeine. Shut up, Ross. But it makes... He dominated for a long time, but Can when... I it appreciate... I want to appreciate, before we going further, that you have made notes on your notes. Yes, I have. Which is amazing. I think that's a commitment to the cause. I, yeah. I appreciate that. I, I had two documents at the He's same made time. notes on his own notes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Those notes read, Matthew, I like the big start with Sammy hitting the big old knee like Danielson would. That was good. Taz really likes Sammy. Do you notice this? I think he fancies Sammy. He was going on about his, uh, his lovely hair, his lovely smile, his lovely body. This might have been during commercial breaks, but Taz was... Oh, that sounds like a commercial Taz break. Taz was like. waxing lyrical about Sammy Guevara and the way oh. he looked and smiled and whatnot. But hey, I thought... You know what? I think he was anticipating the Pink Panties. <laughs> the which, Flump. Which is, a good film, which is a good film with Peter Sellers. <laughs> um, yeah, so... It was another really good match. And it was like... It was like Brian was like going back to WWE with his comeback. And then he remembered he's now in the BCC. So he just choked a bitch out. Yep. Yes. Yep. So, yes. I'm surprised actually earlier on they didn't have Utah win the tag match. So we're getting that Yuda Danielson. Oh, yeah. You think you're good, do you? You think you're special? You do. You're you do. You're do. You're do. We're going to defend the good tag times. No, no, I'm going to sing this. Sorry. <laughs> Renee, back with Ray Fenix and Alex. Alex? Apprehentice. Who the bleep like, is Alex? Yeah. Ray cuts the promo of the year, saying his brother is going to be the double double champ after his match with Box. The cheek, the nerve, the gall, the audacity, and the gumption of saying that to Mox's wife. Alex then says that Ray should think about becoming a double double champion himself by winning the All Atlantic title. Christian and his dino heel appear. <laughs> and Christian says that because of things that happened in the wrestling ring, Luchasaurus should be the one to challenge the AA title. AA champion OC appears and basically books another triple threat between the trio because he is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the appeal. He's sting. <laughs> But yes, uh, some lovely talks here about now we've got to be titles and I'll talk about being double champs. Double, about, double champions. Double, double champions. And of course, because Sam Wave's being signed to WWE, they responded, <laughs> they responded by signing uh, Grimlock. So, Transformers. <laughs> these, I'm sorry. These, 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 these brand wars, eh? Uh, Rio takes on Jamie Hayter with Hayter's pals Hayton and Rio at ringside. Uh. Yeah. Britt Baker grabs Rio by the ankle in full sight of the referee, but the referee does nothing. Shock? Of course not. It's Rick Knox, and he is the worst referee since either Graham... <laughs> since either Graham Paul or Slick jo A Graham Paul referee. Yeah. You Three are going whole hog. Three yellow cards in the World Cup, uh, unbelievable. I know. Because <laughs> uh, you get hate beats, beats down real for ages. 
Rio mounts an impressive comeback, but eventually a rainmaker is enough for Hater to get the job done. Jamie Hater, can she win it? Jamie Hater, yes she can. <laughs> Tony Storm appears at the top of the ramp. To send a message by standing still and smiling. Looks like we're finally getting Hater versus Storm soon for the interim question mark title. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yes. Give it to Hater, you cowards. Yeah. Go on. Give, give it to Hater. hater. Commentators made a big hoo-ha about the six-inch and forty-pound difference in size here. I was thinking that's one hell of a subway. <laughs> <laughs> Hater's snap on her jackhammer, fantastic, as was her brain buster and her backbreaker. And then we have Hater, who I always says like wrestles with her entire body, selling yeah. all of Riho's offense with her entire body. Yeah. And when you see Riho do the cross body off the top rope to the floor, that's what I mean, because she jumps into it with her whole body and sells it like it would hurt more than it would normally. Yeah. Fantastic. As with the the cross body reverse, like the suplex by Riho, the Hurricane Rana, the Destroyer, and the Dragon Suplex. Made it look like a million dollars. Maybe two. Which in pound <laughs> sterling right now is a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the match slowed down for like really noticeably during the commercial breaks, which I know why they're doing it. But when you see the rest of the card not doing that, it's a bit weird um, to me at least anyway. And the final flurry was fantastic. Mm. The finish was devastating. Hater finally getting a push. Yeah. It looks like Kazuch Kazuchka Hater. <laughs> Kazuchka Hater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Renee is back. Wow, she's the Johnny Gargano of AEW. She's just loads on Dynamite this week. Yeah. <laughs> this time with Eddie Kingston. Woohoo. Renee mentions Eddie's pals being worried about his behavior lately. Eddie shows off his pearly whites, ooh, to combat Sammy Guevara's pinkies, I guess, <laughs> and his Colgate smile to show how happy he is with the situation. On a completely unrelated note, I know wrestlers who use subtext and what? They're all, They're all cowards. cowards. I'm glad that you know that now. Just through wrestling, though. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Eddie then deflects the conversation to talk about Mox and thinks his good friend Mox will beat his good friend Penta. He then says, everyone leave him alone. And personally, I see trouble in Eddie Kingston's future. He's hiding something there. Maybe it's under his hat. Mm. It could be. Mm, What's he hiding though? There's something not right there with that. He doesn't hide much. Mm. But he is hiding something here. Mm. A He's body. deflecting conversation. <laughs> 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 Who's he killed? Oh, we've narrowed it down Santana? To, He's not been seen to, for a while. Uh, yeah, narrowed it down to about 200 people. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we see a promo package produced by Darby Allen. We know this because it's in black and white and looks terribly gnarly. Darby says he want the crawl into a hole and disappear from the world, but Sting says he couldn't do that because he isn't a mole. <laughs> 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 Sting told Darby Allen that he is indeed a mole. Darby <laughs> Allen. <laughs> Thompson explains that he and Sting are on a break like Ross, Geller, not Twiddell, not me, and Rachel, while he proves himself by himself. And that his biggest weakness is himself in response to Jay Lethal claiming to know an old friend that knows Darb's biggest weakness, the Dexter Loomis. <laughs> Darby says Jay Lethal should bring his old friend to Dynamite next week to dance. Ooh. End scene. What the hell does this mean? Who do we reckon is Darby Allen's old friend? But then Ethan in the Page match graphic, no. it had Jay Lethal versus Darby Allen. So is Jay Lethal bringing back an old gimmick or something? I don't understand here. Yeah, and it's not going to be Sting is what we get from that. Is it going to be Macho Lethal? He's going to bring Macho Lethal to wrestle Jay Lethal. I, re I read it as an old friend for Darby Allen. So did yeah. I. I thought it was going to be a different person, but then it showed the match graphic at the end of the show. It was Jay Lethal versus Darby Allen. But he might have them get involved in yeah. some way. Um, Darby's father. Oh, that is Sting. Maybe he's just commandeered Sting. No, sorry, Sting's his granddad. <laughs> so. I mean, in terms of like teams that he was in, I mean, the only like the only team that he was in, apart from the one with Sting was um, Uncle, Uncle John's Friends <laughs> with A.R. Fox, uh, Dave Chris, former Priscilla Kelly, and Sammy Callahan. Uh, AR, is A.R. Uh, no. Callahan? Callahan popping in and saying I'd like A.R. Fox to be. He's so talented. Not the, mm. the hell he's done to not get a shot of these things. Uh, Callahan, I don't know. He's Impact, but uh, but then there's they're, they're kind of cash back and forth, aren't they, with Impact? Obviously, Gigi Dolin. He's NXT, so it won't be Gigi Delin. Dave Christ. It's bad if he just shows up. I don't think the Chris is going to be there. I wouldn't be bad if he just shows up and he's just like, where's your mate? He goes, oh, I just think about those. <laughs> oh, Did he leave a voicemail? He goes, no. It's very, very, very <laughs> true. Under 40. 
Satnam Singh looks dazzling in a yellow suit. The big old egg, egg custard. Hmm. I messed that up. I can't believe that. Big Come old on, do egg it again. custard. Ooh, the big old egg custard him. Thank you. I'd like to stick my tongue into his soul and remove his filling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Just like William Regal's here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jay Lethal and Sajay Dutt claim Darby is going to get it next week in a singles match between Jay and Darbs. Is Jay bringing back an old gimmick or something here? What's the old friend bit about? Maybe it's a clown. Because it. Ah! ah! I never thought of that. <sighs> Penta and Moxley <laughs> have a very Penta and Moxie match, but without the blood and the unmasking. <laughs> so it's nothing like a Penta and Moxie <laughs> match. It's there. nothing like it, I was going to say. <laughs> Moxie wins with a sick paradigm shift and Death Rider combo, but is then immediately attacked by the firm because Stokely Hathaway is a rebellious teenage boy and he doesn't even care that his father MJ threatened him with the sack earlier in the night. With Moxie getting the smack of down laid upon his sweetie ass, ooh, ooh, ooh. And with those devious bastards in the firm looking for the BCC in the locker room, MGF appears and is conflicted. Does he remain an arsehole or stay true to his word? He eventually gets down to the ring to make the save. This charming man says, I know it's over, and is sent back to the old house by being put through the timekeeper's table by Morrissey because MGF fired Stokely. Despite being a valiant babyface whose mantra is something on the lines of a light that never goes out, <laughs> the show goes off the air with MGF KO'd. Heaven knows he's miserable now. <laughs> Morrissey is an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got nothing to add. Oh, I, it's, it's done. It's dusted. Fantastic, Ross. Thanks for not putting in Hang the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame this no one's initials were DJ. It would have done quite well. I'm yeah. um, sat there singing with that big yellow custard suit. He goes, I've oh, well, just a lot of things to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I liked I know we we on this podcast say why can't a baby face just celebrate a win and not get attacked by a heel who's got to get their heat back but on this instance it made sense because of the promo earlier on it's all part of the story yeah, right. yeah. it's totally going oh I don't want to get involved and he's like oh don't do that um, the BCC being locked in their locker room was a lovely touch because it made the fact that MGF was the only option that's right and also mm. meant that you know uh, locker rooms should not they, they can't be entered anyway because those doors are shut <laughs> yeah Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we should do that when dogs are there. there the penny go. just dropped just for me. And I said it out loud. It's a wild I idea. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof, no, no. From Ross. <laughs> Any of closing thoughts on the lo um, long week of wrestling? I enjoy the MJ I enjoy the fact this is still like the most dastardly MJF heel turn on the horizon. I don't mind that it's on the horizon. A few people speculate, is this a baby face turn? No, of course it's not. This is uh, It is this, for the meantime. It is for the meantime, but this because it's leading to something utterly devious at full gear. Because that's what MJF's all about. Yeah. Playing the long game, playing the long con. And I'm excited to see how it pays off. I've never even considered it being all winky regal. Like <laughs> Going, hey, sod the Blackpool lot. I'm with him now, as it always was meant to be, like we planned all along. Like, I'm excited for how it's going to pay off because they're leaning so much into MJF, like looking after him, of Moxley, knowing that the paper's going to do something horrible. I like that. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff by Edom. Dynamite's back on track. Yes. Feels like it. Yeah. They finally I'm got over that. And you know what? It's okay because the speed hump, known as the elite, is coming uh, soon. <laughs> coming so back. It was good while it lasted, eh? And that's the week in wrestling. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, little look in the mail bag. Yeah, we're gone. Good day, you lovely little scones, you. I was listening to Jack talk about Ted Lasso, one of the most recent podcast episodes, and how all the characters avoid drama by being very emotionally mature. When I was younger, I actually avoided wrestling because I thought it was so absurd that these wrestlers just couldn't figure out their issues by talking to each other. Undead wizards? Totally fine. People fighting over miscommunication? Way over the line for schoolboy me. It wasn't until my college years that I came around to wrestling and realized that the fighting was the point that I've been watching ever since. So, to the question. Which wrestlers' lack of emotional maturity got them in the most trouble? Who was the biggest powder keg that could have benefited from another sensitivity course with HR? My pick would be HBK. Between the screw job, instigating ladder matches NXT, and even kicking Stan the cameraman for no good reason. Maybe the man could have avoided losing his smile if he talked some things out. Love the podcast and all you do. Cheers. That's Joshua from California. 
Thank you very much, pal. What California. Do you think of that Can I get the map out? Ken Shamrock. <laughs> Ken That's Shamrock. One, so. <gasps> the, the, bam, ma- the match. Bam, it was a match bam. with with the British Bulldog, wasn't there? Where he got hit with some dog food, and Shamrock just lost his mind. The, at least on one occasion, Ken Shamrock had a title taken off him because he refused to release the ankle lock. <laughs> Like he lost, that was like, the entire Rocky feud, wasn't it? That was it? the entire Rocky Maivia feud, yeah. I think, yeah, definitely Ken Shamrock, a little bit of counselling. But then we wouldn't get the greatness that is Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. But yeah, <laughs> certainly certainly Ken when he snaps. Heidenreich. <laughs> oh. he's If anything, he's too emotionally sensitive for his own good. And he got himself into a bit of bother with the likes of Undertaker, Michael Cole. Yep. <laughs> and that's where we'll end that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew. Who are you picking? Uh, Vader. Not only because Hopley's emotional maturity could have come through and he not have got to a fight with Paul Orndorff, who was only politely suggesting in his flip-flops, can you hurry up and do these uh, video packages we need to do so we can all leave. Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, in 98, he shouldn't be so hard on himself. Come a fat piece of poo. He did, it's yeah. Like, no, you're not. Was, was, it a- was it after his match with Kane? Yeah. yeah. He got hit with a wrench, didn't he? He hates wrenches. Yeah. He says... <laughs> His famous catchphrase, it's time, it's time, it's time for me to hate wrenches. <laughs> Bless him. Boys, sup. 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 So, so this is the my first, sorry, my second time writing in because my first time was a literal disaster. I think many can relate to this as I did not make it into the podcast, and rightfully so, due to the fact that I was very drunk the first time I wrote to you. Well, this time... I drank more, and I am listening to the <laughs> previous week's podcast as we speak, so we'll see what happens. Here's hoping it works. I don't think we've had a good Aesop's fable here, lads, but anyway. So, well, I have a solid question for you. I was at WrestleMania 23 in Detroit, Michigan. We were close enough. Uh, we got to keep our folding chairs. It was awesome. I got a high five from RBD, and that is one high five. Mm. And we got to feel the heat during Taker's entrance. It was very intense. My wrestling question is, what has been the coolest wrestling entrance that you've gotten to experience live? And that is from Cody Boyle. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Cody Bring Boyle. responsibly. Uh, well, I got, I got to see. Well, we've all seen Take, haven't we? Mm. I'll be interviewed. Sorry, Tom. Uh, no, I haven't. I thought Jack was there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've not had the pleasure. I, we've been lucky enough to be at a couple of WrestleManias, haven't we? And got to see Undertaker's live. That was pretty good at yep. uh, 32 and 33. Um, Try to think, <laughs> cool ones. Not like just for pop factor, just for like the general coolness of the entrance. Mm. Remember Chris Jericho having a massive list at WrestleMania 33. 32s was when New Day came out the big box of cereal. Yep. That was a good one. Drastic Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Um, ooh, Martin Kirby's WCPW was always a highlight oh, with the glow yeah. sticks and whatnot. Mine would be uh, Grado. ICW, <laughs> something else to have all those mad as a hat, a rag, shout. whatever we would call them, Glaswegians singing along. When you call my name, it's like a little... Mm. Oh, man. Spine tingling, honestly. That's quite cool. I like that a lot. Um, I mean, like, I mean, I haven't been to many, like, major WWE events. Like, like Drew's entrance at Clash of the Castle felt special. Mm. when we were there live. Yeah. I missed the best entrance of the night because I was stuck at the bar waiting to get drinks from the slowest bar ever. <laughs> Looking at you, the principality, if that even is your real name. Um, as I'm stood there, as, as 70 thousand people are going, on this day, I see clearly. Mm. I'm like, oh man, time this bar trip really badly. That's, that is probably the best one I've been seen, actually. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for reminding me. That. I, knew, I, knew it would, <laughs> I knew it would be. I knew it would be. Got back in time for the Dominic turn. And that's what threw my voice out. Um, but... I think, yeah, I think Drew's at Clash of the Castle was amazing. Like when they played the Broken Dreams video, like the crowd so was... no pop. No, no, there oh, was. On TV. Uh, on TV, you couldn't hear it. Oh, thing. no, no. On, on, oh, it was, was that? Right. They were singing the song It was like a Bobby, telly. Oh, it was a Bobby, it was a Bobby Lashley. So say goodbye. Oh. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. They were, my they, TV they was were, broken then. Yeah, they were popping for all, but oh. they really popped for that. And then when Drew came out, they were just, oh, oh yeah. electric. I'm just going to say that. There's, I'm pro- pretty sure there's been a few entrances at North that I've been in the ring for happening. I think this is cool. Like a few people, um, recently Joe Hendry faced Scotty mm. Scotty and uh, he had the song for Scotty. It was a crap people's elbow. Can't say the actual words on the podcast. Um, but to be in the ring for that as that was happening was class. And it's funny because the TikTok got shared everywhere. A few people went, 
that Tom from Cultaholic just stood in the ring. I was like, Aww. yeah, just chilling. It's quite nice. So that was nice to be a part of. In fact, being a part of any of Joe Henry's entrances have been pretty you cool. Joe Henry comes on the list. Yeah, he certainly could. Uh, hi, Diddley O, lads. Whilst this is the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast number 248, Matthew decided to pick for his Hall of Fame nomination. Oh, Guide Dogs of the Blind and Lola Pup Day. I myself am legally blind. On the day the podcast was released, I matched with my third guide dog, Pico. Pico is a very special boy who has come all the <laughs> Sorry, way over. Just when P- you said the name Pico, the picture of Dave Meltzer came back on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> There's Pico. Uh, <laughs> Pico is a very special boy who has come all the way over from Finland to be uh, my guide dog after waiting over two years. I just want to say to both you, uh, Matthew and Ross, you know, uh, and Jack, come on, sponsor Puppy. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, Jack. Thank you. Because of your donations, people such as myself who live with visual impairments uh, and someone, and some like myself live alone. Not only does it help us have independence, but also have an animal companion. So again, Matthew and Ross and everybody else who donates to Guide Dogs, thank you from a very grateful blind wrestling fan. By the way, I'm also sponsoring a puppy too. His name is Moose, a black Labrador cross. He's a beautiful Aww. little dog. Aww. Having said that, I see a random question. that rest- uh, What wrestler... Would you want to go for a McDonald's with? All the best, lads. <laughs> Matt Oakley. P.S. Here's a photo of Pico. We start training soon. Look at oh, that dog. Yeah. Look at that build of a dog. dog. A dog, dog is, is amazing. Give, Give him a lick. Mm. He tastes, tastes just, just like, like raisins. raisins. Here comes the young bucks. Kick it in oh, the head. Oh, no. Oh, young oh. bucks. You've ruined it, young, young bucks. bucks. You've ruined it again, young bucks. See, young bucks did nothing wrong. See, What's that song from? Uh, Weebles. Is it, we- is it we? Yeah, it's from uh, mm. Weebles stuff. And you tug on his wing. Nah, yeah. No, no, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I have a liability. That yeah, makes me think of Roy Keane, that does. Does it? Because we all know the Roy, Roy Keane. Yeah. Well, Keen tug on his wing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's about dogs and then tug on his wing. Keen. <laughs> Keno. He wanks his dogs. Keno. <laughs> he wanks his dogs. <laughs> Keno. <laughs> <laughs> English football, wow, eh? Oh, there's anybody else who does that in wrestling. Anyway, um, wow. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. A lovely, lovely question. There I'm is a look that... Terry Funk told the tale of the guy who did it. Or was he an actor? We're moving on from the subject. <laughs> Matt Opie, thank you very much for your beautiful letter. Uh, really appreciate you letting us know the ethics. I'm not doing all the hard work. The bloody um, guide dog people are. And obviously the dogs themselves. Woof, woof, moo, moo to you. And Pico. All the best, pal. Up the Pico. Up the Pico. Uh... Which restaurant to go for McDonald's with? The British Bulldog. Because I no, he's a Burger King lad. I know that's the, partly because oh, he's a Burger you? King lad. There's a great, there's a great Shocking. advert from back in the day uh, with the British the Bulldog. Tomorrow in the Daily Mirror, spelled M I R R U H. Daily Mirror, my life, get it, because it's really big. Just, <laughs> get a free he burger. When you buy the Daily Mirror tomorrow. I forgot how amazing Bulldog delivery was until I rewind that. <laughs> just shouted. Are you yeah. hungry? I think just Excuse for the comedy me. of taking him to a Burger King and also to say sorry for all the fun we've had at his expense. <laughs> well, if you on the classic that... Smackdown review, on the classic Raw review. <laughs> and he'll be on the Nitro review in a few years as well. Yeah, like the yeah. We, we go again. We go again. Bulldog angry? is the divine constant of the classic review series. What if he gets angry and throws a Happy Meal box at <laughs> your head and you get amnesia? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping he'll throw a bin at me. <laughs> is that what I- that would hurt with a McDonald's bin as well. They're the most impressive bin lid in the world. That's right, yeah. McDonald's Ooh. bin. But there's a swing on it. The purchase you get is sensational. That's right. Dan nods, Dan knows. Uh, <laughs> so who are you taking to uh, to admire the, the purchase of the bin I lid? I would love to take the giant Gonzalez for a Happy Meal. <laughs> <laughs> Just that visual of being sat in one of the little booths, if he could fit, <laughs> with a, t- a teeny tiny Happy Meal in front of him would be a lovely visual for me. That's I could idea. die with that visual. I love that. How about you, man? Uh, R-Troop. So you can go, hey, can I get a Whopper? <laughs> uh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, got nothing there. Uh, Good that. What's your go-to for Mackie D's? I have the breakfast if I have anything. You and Aiden have a nice date, don't you, every we Monday? We have a little Monday date, me and Aiden. He'll go, do you want anything from McDonald's? And I'll say, yes, here is some money into your PayPal. Get me these. And then we'll sit and we'll just, before the day proper, I'll, I'll have been in the office for a little bit or I'll have been working from home for a little bit. And then Aiden comes in. It's a nice little break water before the, the real the real day begins. And uh, we'll have a little chat and chew the fat about stuff. And then <laughs> off we go. It's nice. Nice little mon- nice ease into Monday. What do you I get? get? My boy Aiden. I'll get a sausage and egg McMuffin, a hash brown, and a caramel latte. Oh! It's my little Monday treat. Ding dong. Hello. Little, little Monday treat, I'll get that your is. body pumping. Bloody hell. Yeah, it does. It doesn't get every good certain airlines with body pumping because I think I react badly to the cheese. Well, I've rea- I mean, I rea- in recent years... McDonald's bungs me up. <laughs> Noticeably so. I don't what know do if you, this what do you have? I have a McChicken sandwich meal. 
Uh-huh. Sometimes I get a cheeseburger on the side. Sometimes I get a, a, a three, just three chicken selects uh-huh. on the side. Oh, lovely. And it bungs me up good and proper. And I always know a day or two later when I'm having the McDonald's boo. It's noticeably drier, uh-huh. noticeably harder to force out. Do you mm. maybe follow up with a chaser of Dyrolite? <laughs> Probably should do now. Should do. Or a, a, a original curry pot noodle. That was <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. Goodness me. You? Uh, just chicken McNuggets, all the chicken selects. Mm. Dip them, and that's it. That's a sophisticated Smoky barbecue? Garlic mayo, I forgot it. <sighs> or sweet chili. 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 Be back back ribs. The one thing I, I miss when I used to do uh, live commentary for Rise in Leeds. Uh, I'd normally get in a car back with normally it'd be H.C. Drake, be Gia Adams. Uh, sometimes it would be Screwface. Sometimes it might be Lou Nixon. Sometimes it might be Rory Coyle. The last true sick boy. Any the devil her, of North. Any of her wrestlers you want to shout out? Um, I think that's all of them. Okay. Um, and we would, if we come back from Leeds, it would be the excitement of getting to Washington Service Station yep. where we'd have McDonald's. <laughs> like, we'd all just be buzzing. And they're like, what a lovely day we've had. It's like two in the morning at this point. We're like, what's a lovely time we've all had together. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I think I came up with a name for one of H.T. Uh, Drake's moves in that Washington service station, <laughs> which I think was the 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 coast to coast that he does. I'm sure I've started, the wishy-washy. The time crossing. Oh. oh. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those lovely questions. If you have any lovely questions, thoughts, queries, or just want to yell at us, please, please, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Recess, pieces, recess, pieces, recess. Uh, wrist piss. <laughs> good afternoon. I'll just give it up, calling it wrist pieces now. Uh, good afternoon, lads. Lids, it actually says here. Big pardon. Good afternoon, Lids. Lids. We are Donald's been Lids. Firstly, I'd like to say thanks to all of you Ross, Matthew, Jad, Jobber, as well as Tom, Fraser, Sam, Adam, and everyone else that gets involved in content and fills in on the pod from time to time. That means you, Dan. I've been off work for about two months with a serious brain injury, and I've been listening to every single video, and it really gets me through the days when I feel particularly pooey. The dedication the weekly pods alongside the classics is crazy and the quality is so good. I always feel up to date with wrestling shows that I don't always watch and I feel like I'm involved in a random coffee shop chat with you all. Easily listening, ah, easily listening for sure. I hope that you're all aware of the impact, no pun intended, that you have on the listeners and we really appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you, pal. Uh, I'll get well soon, pal, all right? Yeah. For my question, I'd like to know how you would book certain future Hall of Fame wrestlers against their final... I guess they're going to wrestle in their final match if they had the chance. We've seen so many not get that opportunity to go out in the right way, whether those that go back on their word, Sean, Ric Flair, or wherever there's going to be, it's going out too late or against the wrong opponents, Undertaker, Kurt Angle. So who would you book the following against if it was to be their final match? Oh, I like be like, uh, fastest thought first, so Tom Ross, me. Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes. Riddle. John Cena. Again? <laughs> They've only had 97. One <laughs> last time. John Cena. Oh. Um, Austin Theory. Ah! Und- Und- Undertaker. No, no, that's stupid, no. Ross. I can't say Undertaker. Jesus. Uh, it's not first, though. No. Yeah, Austin Theory. There you go. I've just nicked his. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll say Black Adam. So he's the leading oh, wrestler turned superhero. Ah, nice. Seamus. Drew McIntyre. Gunter. I'll say Wade Barrett, because they're just three <laughs> together. Nice. Uh, it won't be good, but, you know. Rey Mysterio. Oh, bloody hell. Dominic Mysterio. R- Dominic Mysterio. I can't say anything else, can he? <laughs> Hooven too, <dude. laughs> <laughs> Bring the juice back. Oh, as I've told beforehand, uh, still get reminded that I used to call it because it looks like, his line looked like Juventus. So I call him Juventus Guerrero. <laughs> uh, Kobe Kingston. Big E. I was going to see Big E as well. I can, I can imagine him being a proper poo house heel if he ever went that way. Mm. Brock Lesnar. And he loses. Ooh. And if you could go back, who would you have booked for? Batista. Uh, so, like, from that era. If you could yeah, go back, because be Batista's final match was against Triple H. If you could have the decision, who would have his final match? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um... If you could have had it, Eddie Guerrero, but I guess that's not really an option, is it? Yeah. Rey Mysterio. There you go. You're supposed to be my friend. 
I, I like Triple H. I, I'm not going to change that one. I'm all right with Triple H's, yeah. If it's going to be against someone, it should be Evolution, lads. So, uh, Triple H. Who was his final match? Oh, it was like a random tag match. Was that the one in Saudi Arabia? No, it was like an untelevised one. Ah. If I remember right. I don't know why I thought. Ah. Yeah. Triple H. Dan's checking because I can't type in. Uh, Randy Orton was classed as his last. Oh, and Raw. They had like a non-match, didn't yeah. they, sort of oh, thing. Yeah. Um, oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, because that, oh, right, okay. Seth Rollins. Yeah, yeah, Roll I, yeah, yeah Rollins. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Kurt Angle. Oh, um, we had this down pat, didn't we? John Cena. Cena, yeah. Cena Gable. Oh, that's oh, even better. Gable. That's even better. Then tell Shoes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Undertaker. I've been done. What, what was his last match? He should have gone out with Roman Reigns. The Boneyard. AJ. Oh, there we go. No. Um, he rode away listening to that hip hop and happening band, Met 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 Metallica. <laughs> and then Mid. <laughs> it should have been Roman Reigns. He left his hat in the ring and everything. That yeah. should have been it. That should have been the last time. Oh, we saw there was tears flowing in that building. Whoa. Yeah. Goodness me. Uh, yeah, I'd go. Five minute boo session, bro. Imagine how different yeah. the wrestling world would have been if that had been A, Undertaker's last match, and B, the following night, we leaned into Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. Oh. No, we did the following night. No, we did. No, it but... was the week afterwards. He was yeah. like, hey, it's that... me, Roman. That's it. Please cheer me. It's my art now. Sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> it was Ace, 12 minutes Bloody of booing. Useless. And then, this is my art. And now. I was there in that crowd booing him. And then it's like, next week, hi, guys, high five. Idiot. Phenomenal. Kane. Wyatt for me. Yeah. Of the day. Good, Not the good fiend, day. like OG yeah. Bray Wyatt. Nice. I'll go with that as well. Uh, thank you, pedos, it says here. Much love from... <laughs> that really translates, doesn't it? Uh, much love from former Spurs legend Roman... Oh, here we go. Pavliachenko. Thank you very much. P.S. Chucky Muffin. Yay! <laughs> Good. Thank, Thank you for you. the Chucky Muffin, the lovely question. Not sure sure about being called a pedophile, but whatever. <laughs> it's Cultaholics. The Question. <sighs> oh, baby. It's been a lovely, long, smashing podcast. Would you, say, would you say it's been girthy? Oh, yeah. This one has, yeah. This has been pretty mm. girthy. It's been, it's been like Ross after McDonald's. It's going to take me days to recover <sighs> after this one. Uh, to be fair, the, the This Week in Wrestling segment, that is the McDonald's poo. And now we're in the sort of, the dam's been broken and now we're slipping out the arse. <laughs> the, they're walking around feeling lighter than usual. Yeah. Aspect, yes. Uh, the producers, thank you very much, lads, to the following. Jacob Castle. Castle! Chris Ruth. R Routh. It's... Routh, beg your pardon, sorry. How dare you, everyone. Sorry, I've only said your name like 900 times. Uh, Buddy. Buddy! Reno 2200. That's right. Nick Rabi. Rabi. And, and now uh, it pays off, Tom. Now okay. it pays off. It feels it. Like, yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> Noah Anderson. Anderson. Ah, Yay. Isn't it great? Beautiful. <laughs> and the big question this week is, because that one video package we saw on AW Dynamite, how would you bring back the Elite? Oh. I mean, must hashtag AW Dynamite. After, hashtag CM Punk. After, hashtag Tony After Khan. kicking a dog's teeth out. I wouldn't. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, we must say, we'll caveat this by saying we came up with this big question about 10 seconds ago. <laughs> so no thought has been put into this. No, it's been planned. We um, talked about Ross. Uh, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. Um, so I'll let Tom go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, just as well, I've got an idea. Oh, of course So, yes. yeah, so they obviously we had the promo on Dynamite with all the, with the, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega being sort of dipped out of existence. Like, just like dissolve, like a Thanos snap. They were backstage on Dynamite, as we said already. I really like the idea, and I might have sort of briefly mentioned this earlier on, of having them come back, uh, have them announce they're coming back for full gear and have them win back the trio's titles, get back there. But then from there, their real modus operandi is revealed because they were so upset that they were basically just written out of history for a month in AEW. Like, they were forgotten about. They didn't do anything wrong. We got, we got attacked, we defended ourselves, and then we got rid out of history. So you know what? AEW wouldn't even be here without us. So now, for, therefore, we're going to bring across the timeline where AEW isn't here. We're just going to bring this place down. And now you could do it in multiple ways because, they are, because they've got stake in the company. They can go, right, we're going to challenge for that belt. We're going to challenge for that belt. We're going to call this show Young Bucks of Mania. We're just going to... You kind of do a sort of NWO takeover, but it's already a hostile takeover because they're already behind the scenes on it. And... 
where it ends, I don't quite know. But I just like the idea of maybe leaning into the fact that a lot of people don't like them because they kind of put themselves over, lean into it and have them literally putting themselves over at the behest of the company until somebody comes along and just shuts them up. That's my thinking. Tom, I love that. It's good in it. You just own the I fact. I would actually enjoy them being the egotistical bastards yeah. that they are. <laughs> uh, by them playing those roles, those soup, those, uh, as well, you heard everyone saying the same thing. The best gimmicks are those things that are just someone's personality multiplied. Mm. Lex Luger was a bit of a prick. That's why he was great night six with Sting. So, so I love that. You have Moxie go, I want to fight this guy. And then they come out and go, no, you can't. Because tonight you're defending against Kenny Omega. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you're not in the elite, Moxley. Oh. Yeah. Come back to CCW, Moxley. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe DJ Hyde can help you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can see that being, that being great. Wow. My idea was to have them go out the complete opposite and go, look, we're really sorry. Let's just go around the camera. We're really sorry. Things got out of hand. Maybe we've, got, we've lost ourselves. And they start from the bottom. And you go, look, we'll just start wrestling. You know, we'll be on AW Dark. The first few weeks, he goes, no, and in the corner, oh, already in the ring, in the corner of my left, Kenny Omega. You know, just Ooh, like, no, I like that too. Thought, let's prove ourselves because a lot of people have come along, the kingdom or whatever, and they think they deserve to be on the show. Well, let's find out. Let's we'll start the same level as them, see who gets the finishing line first. Eh? I like that too. The idea of, in, you know, starting from the very bottom again. Because mm. he's making those big, that have the matches special because it's just, wow, well, yeah, we're going to be here every week until we. Do we back earn our place back yeah. in your hearts and in this it's company? It's like when some footballers have been punished to try to send them like the, the juniors. <laughs> the reserve team. Yeah, reserve <laughs> No, no, the one below the reserve, the reserve team is one, but it's not the, oh, which footballer was that? It's, it's more than one that's like... It's, ha it's happened to a few players yeah. like, down the years. Like, yeah, but we even got an elevation. You say like the juniors team, I like the idea of like a grown footballer going to play like Sunday. Like Ronaldo, Ronaldo recently has been sent to train with the under 21s. Is that the sort of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that type of thing. So, yeah, we'll, we'll willingly do it just to get back the trust and faith that we have that we used to have That's a long nice. time ago. That's nice. Because we have to be loved by everybody. Um, I want to see one of two things happen. Go on. I'll play enough Tom's. You've tried to write us out a history with that promo package. Well, we've commandeered the entire Ring of Honor video library and all of the Ring of Honor contracts, oh. and we're going to burn them. <laughs> oh. And they, they burn them. And all of the Ring of Honor leaves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's just what you want to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's what we want to oh, happen. But they go, no, we're not. We're now Ring of Honors. Uh, row, elite, row, <laughs> row, elite. Oh. Row, row, yeah, yeah, row. Yeah, they're doing the row, row, <laughs> row <laughs> elite. <laughs> or that work. we have a, a little thing where right, CM Punk comes back. And somehow... This idea is already BS. <laughs> somehow, some way, right, Tony Khan gets an on-screen promo and he's in his dressing room, the lights are around the thing, all the bells and whistles and whatnot, and the, the shot with the mirror, and he just starts he's speaking to himself because he does things that makes him speak to himself for some reason. Just imagine Tony Khan speaking to himself, can't you? And he's like, I'm going to inject this oh, okay, company here we go, with a lethal dose of poison. And it turns around, it's the Elite's logo on the back of his seat. Oh! And they take down Kenny Omega. Uh, sorry, they take down CM Punk, but crucially, yeah. Larry the Dog gets to bite all of them one by one <laughs> in the face, drawing blood. <laughs> the mixed tag match. If that bit's true, of course, if the kicking of the door open is true. But to be honest with you, having sat here and thought about this for about 35 seconds, I couldn't come up with anything better than Tom's. I quite, I quite <laughs> like, we can mark, with the powers combined, I like the fact that they go, we okay, AEW have written us out of out of existence. We're gonna do that. We now own Ring of Honor. And we're gonna lead Ring of Honor into yes. this is where we do we an invasion signed, angle. Yeah, we haven't signed uh, with AEW, we're signed with Ring of Honor. Sign with Ring of Honor. So an invasion angle. Yeah. There you go. Ring of Honor AEW. Let's do it. Let's do an invasion until March. Yeah. T Tom's is like I could see it working better, but I like the idea of them just burning Ring of Honor tape. Just, so, yeah. I mean, next to a big Ooh. fire, all of them going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. ah, who cares? Kenny Omega, yeah. Tyler who? Did <laughs> they on Wikipedia deleting Ring of Honor never existed? <laughs> there was never any chance. You go really deep in it. Like you ring the guy who runs Cage Match and go, yeah. get it off. <laughs> get it off. Matt and Nick Jackson have got a phone while they're stood next to the big pile of fire. That little promo where CM Punk's going, I'm really happy that Ring of Honor's tape library is now in safe hands <laughs> with Tony Khan. <laughs> <laughs> and your little dog too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't throw Larry on the fire. <laughs> 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 Just, we didn't do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Some I like, like, like Tom's dead better, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, them coming back is bad news for AEW. <laughs> I think that's the overall message we have there. It is indeed. Oh, but what do you think is going to happen with the Elite? Are they already back by the time this podcast comes back? Who knows? Well, 
But what we do know <laughs> is that this has been a lovely, long, girthy, here we go, podcast uh, per requirement. I'm bound to say that. Tom, what have you got on tap for us next time you make your appearance here? Well, well, I don't know about next time I'm here. Yeah, so I'm not booked to do anything. But uh, coming <laughs> I'm up, not then, booked. I'm not booked. I'm not the booked. Terrence Stamp on the trampoline. <laughs> the Terrence Stamp of the podcast. Um, uh, two episodes of Desert Island Graps this weekend. Uh, chatting to Leon Slater on Sunday. Uh, Stand out from the British wrestling scene. He's about to take over the world. He started wrestling when he was ten. Ten. I know, right? And he's off to America next month. So I thought I'd get him before he gets on the plane. Uh, we were meant to have this chat the other day. We had to reschedule it, but by now we've had it and you're hearing it on the Sunday. And then on Wednesday, keeping with the theme of Slaters, Heath Slater is on Desert Island Graps with me. The new Impact Tag Team Champion, one half of them. Uh, he's going to be chatting about his three favorite wrestling matches that he would watch while stranded on a desert island and hopefully a lot of other stuff as well. Um, also, while you're on the podcast feed, do check out my chat uh, with the lovely Rich from Voices of Wrestling. We, we dissect the Carl Anderson situation uh, for 20 minutes. Talk about uh, what it means, what's happening, and what is going to happen. That's on the podcast feed exclusively right now. It's not what they want to happen. It's, it's what's going, going to happen. happen. I was going to say, after the, dealing with the elite and Carl Anderson, I think New Japan's like, tonight we're booking any Americans <laughs> yeah. or Canadians. No more again. Americans. <laughs> Anyway. That's, so that's me, anyway. Uh, by the time next podcast comes out, now and again, I've been working on more voiceovers and stuff, so they're more long, longer producing things. But I'll have news next week or something that I'll be able to talk about. So apart from that, no. Yeah, now, hey, all yeah. building somebody. Like, like people getting attacked after big matches, it's all leading to something. Yes. Yeah. There is a purpose. Exactly. Go like I'm really putting out the, those great long-form videos at the minute. So. I'm on the rise and falls at the moment. Yeah, so no pressure. Maybe about the Ultimate Warrior. Maybe about FMW. Maybe about the Von Erics. Oh, I have to get in there before Zac Efron, the crew. Oh, ding dong, by the way. Hello. That's Ted Bundy, that apparently. What? That made sense in my head. Not so much coming out the mouth. <laughs> ding dong, that's Ted Bundy. <laughs> that's a good thing to say after a podcast. <laughs> ah, and I've got, uh, what have I got? Twitch streaming. Yay. Sunday evenings, Thursday evenings, playing games, talking crap. Nice. No, quite a, I should go first on these things, really, when Tom and Ross want to move. Now I think about it. But you know what? We're spent. It's been such a lovely few hours talking about wrestling in this boiling hot room, even with the bloody things on. So I just want to remind you all that mailbag at colic.com for your setting of needs and also patreon.com forward slash called the holic to vote in the Hall of Fame. This has been Tom. This has been Ross. This has been Puppet Jack, who's been useless as always. And now we're going to point at the screen and try and think of something that isn't just yelling come. Um, <laughs> you could do row your vote. Like the, the elite will. Yeah. Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, three. Row, 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 row your boat. Row, Say his row, name. Row, 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 I believe you're wrong, row, row. <laughs>